Welcome to the course. As an Android developer, learning to build games can be a fun and engaging way to improve your development skills. So in this course, you are going to build two popular games that you can build on top of Android technology that are Pong and Piano Game. Pong is a classic 2D game that involves two paddles and a ball, while Piano Game challenges player to hit the correct notes in time with the music. By building these games, you will learn important concepts like game physics, touch input and UI design. Plus, you will have a fun game to show off to your friends and potential employers. So are you ready to join me on this amazing journey to develop your very first game with Android technology? Welcome everybody. Thank you for enrolling my course. So in this video, I will be showing you what will be the final product that we are going to build in this course. So let's get started with this video. So you can see I have already run my application in a landscape mode inside my virtual emulator. So let's start playing this game. So when I click on this particular part of the screen, so you can see it's actually start playing. So you can see I now actually moving the racket. So the yellow one is actually my racket and the blue one is actually an AI that play automatically with the use of AI code. So you can see here, I have already won three Pong games. So you can see here, I again won inside this particular application. So when I click on this back button, you can see this is the main screen of the application. I know that the UI is not very attractive, but you will learn a lot of new concepts like how to plan your application using some game loops and painting the things inside the screen by using the Java code. So we are not going to use any third party library. We are going to build this entire application from the scratch with the use of the existing part of the code. So you can see inside my build.cradle, I have not added anything. So if I go to the Android package and if I just expand my Gradle scripts inside the module, you can see I have added nothing. These are all default dependencies that actually comes with the Android Studio when you actually create a blank activity project. Means an empty activity project, not a blank activity. So that's all about this video. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video. In this video, we are going to create a new project inside our Android Studio. Currently, I am using Android Studio version 3.5. So click on this first option in order to create a new project inside Android Studio. So I will be selecting an empty activity for this project. Now simply hit next. Now here you can specify the name of your application. So I'm going to specify the name of my application as Pong 2D Game. And then I need to browse the directory. So I'm going to leave it as in my info with VJ channel directory. And this is now my package name. And now, and I will be using a Java language for the development of this project. Now simply hit finish. Just leaving all of these things as it is. And I am selecting the minimum API level 25. Now Android Studio will create the project for you. So I will be continuing the video again once the project creation process is completed. Now you can see our project is created successfully. And also I am here using my physical device for the testing purpose of the application. You can also use the emulator if you want. But it's better to use the physical device because we are actually developing a game application. And we need to physically interact with the objects that we are using inside the development of this application because I am using an on-touch method along with gestures to work with properly on these things we need to use the physical device so that we can get a accurate results while testing the application. Now minimize all of these things. First thing I want to just refactor all of this activity to like a game activity because I forgot it when I created the project but there is no such a problem. We can refactor it easily. Now you can see our activity gets refactored. Also I want to change the name of the layout. Now here I will specify a activity game. Then hit a refactor again. Now in this application, I'm not going to use any external dependencies to enhance the quality of the application. But if we want, then I can use it as per the requirements of the students. Now our next step is to actually go to the values directory and here we need to create a new file. So I'm going to create a values resource file and I will be name this file as address, which is in which I will be specifying some dimensions of the racket and also I will be creating some custom code. So here I will be using a tag which is a declare styleable tag and then I will be specifying some content then I will be here specifying a name which is a custom name you can name it as it is or you can name it whatever you want it's totally up to you so I'm creating here a custom button theme we will be using this code inside the android activities now here I will be specifying a attr tag first we need to open the tag then the attr tag and then we need to specify the name of the attribute that we are actually want to do so here I will be specifying a button and then I will be specifying a button 
bar style and after that you need to specify here a format so i will be using a format is reference and then i will be closing this tag after that i need to do the same thing again so i'm going to pressing the control d at the end of this line of code it will duplicates a uh, the code means create a new copy of this same code and here i need to specify a button so this code will allow us to actually target all the smaller screen as well like if you are having a very small screen like 4.5 device screen or maybe a 5.0 screen device then your application will run properly with the calling of this code that is the reason i am specifying here a code this is a new concept maybe when the less developers are using it now here again i will be specifying a pong table right now we are just using here a pong table now in our upcoming videos i am also going to create a pong table class in which we are going to use this particular code now here i will be closing the declare stylable tag and instead of this i need to again specify some headers so the first header that will be specifying for the racket height so i will be specifying here a racket height and then after that i need to specify a format and then specify here a integer then i need to close the tag so i can use a self closing tag instead of closing the full close tag then i will create a duplicate two times and here i will be specifying a racket width and then here i will be specifying a ball radius because in our table we also have a ball along with rackets so rackets can interact with the ball or you can say that the ball can interact with the rackets now all the code is done inside our address.xml file also in this video i am going to specify some colors inside our colors.xml file so the first color that i will be specifying here a color of the table so i will be specifying here a table color so you can use drawables resources but it's better to use the color so for the testing purpose because it will make our application to run faster so here we will be using a table color then i need to specify the ending of this particular tag and here i need to specify the code the quickest way to specify the color code is by specifying 3 times 0 along with the hashtag then here click on this square icon and then from there you can select the appropriate color that you want so i will be using a dark gray color now i'm going to create a duplicate of this particular line of code and then here i will be specifying a player color and then again i will be create another duplicate and here i will be specifying a opponent color and then i need to change the color so i will be using a light color for our player so i'm using a yellow and then for opponent color i also using this particular color which is little bit of light because our background is dark that is the reason we need to use this color light because this is actually our racket color also i want to create another color for our ball so here i will be specifying a ball color then ball color i will be using a pure white color so this is the ball color that i will be using now we also need to create a new activity so just right click on this app level directory go to new and then from there select the activity and create a another empty activity and here you need to specify the name of your activity so i'm going to specify here a pong activity and then simply click on finish So it will create some another activity for us. Now you can see the activity is created. Now at the latest Android Studio version, which is Android Studio 3.5, is very fast. That is the reason it creates the activity more quickly. Now I will do the designing in our upcoming videos. Right now, we our main motive is to actually focus on the logic part of the code. Now we also need to make changes inside our manifest file so that our application can run on the landscape mode. So that we don't need to explicitly rotate our device every time when our application launches. So that's it for this video. In the next video, I'm going to specify the code inside our style.xml file. Along with that, I will be making some changes inside the manifest file. So thank you for watching. See you in the next video. In this video, we are going to implement the logical part of our application. Now, if you not watched the previous video, then I highly recommend you to watch the previous videos. Then come back to this video so that you can get a complete idea of this Pong 2D game application. Now coming back to the package, just right click on this package and go to new, and from there select a new Java class. And inside of the Java class, type the name of your class. So I'm going to type the name of my class as player, and simply hit the enter key. Now I'm going to click on this project tab so that you can get a more wider area to see. Now here, first I will be specifying a members. So uh, the member that I want means our player is actually a racket. So a racket should have a width and height, and also we need to give a score so that our player could should have a score and to paint on the surface means we are going to use a surface view class which is actually a part of the android graphics so we can actually paint on the our screen on a basis of the 60 frame per second so to paint on the screen we need to use a paint class object so that is the reason we need to use a paint object as well so we are going to define all of this method inside of this player class so first i will be specifying here a private and then we need to create an integer because the height and width is actually in a form of integer Then I will be specifying the name of my first data member, or you can say as a member variable. 
because we are inside the object oriented programming language. So I just specify my first member as racket width, which will hold the width value of my layer, which will ultimately define the racket. Then I will specify another variable of a private integer type, and here I will be specifying again a racket, and this is actually going to be a height. And then I need to specify another variable, but at this point of time, it is actually a integer public variable, which is actually a score, because we are going to update this score from different classes as well. Then we need to create another variable which is of type private which is of type class paint which is a part of the android graphics package and we need to create an object of this paint class so that we can paint on the screen so that we can paint according to the height and width of our racket on the surface view which is our pong table class and we are going to call this racket width and height inside our pong table class in our upcoming videos also here i need to create another variable which will help us to detect the collision detection so here i will be using a rect f which is also a part of the android graphics package and then we need to create the object of this and i will be specifying here a bounce so this bounce will help us to detect the collision between our racket and a player and also the boundaries of our arena means the game environment so what i want to say so right now you can see this is my physical device suppose here we have our racket which is our player one and here our opponent racket and this is the boundary of our application now this bounce which is a part of the RecTF class will help us to detect the collision between our ball and racket and also when our ball gets hit by this upper wall and also with the bottom wall or like left and right then it will help us to detect the collision so we are going to write the collision detection cone in our upcoming videos because right now if i will specify all these things in a one video it will become a very long video and it will become very difficult to understand now coming to the coding part again inside our player class first right click there and go to generate and here you need to specify a constructor. The select this integer variables which is of type private, not select the public one. Now this rectf is also of type public. I actually forgot to specify here a public. I am going to correct it just after I specify the code for the constructors. So select the paint also and then simply hit OK. Now first I need to make a changes. So first here I will specify here a and then I need to initialize this score variable and also this bounce variable inside the constructor but not as a parameterized constructor. So here I will be specifying a score value to default value which is of type 0 and then I will be specifying the bounce object to a memory. So with the help of new operator I can specify the bound to the rect f class because it is actually a type of rect because we are not inside the Kotlin because if we are inside the Kotlin we can simply delete this stuff it's automatically understood by the compiler that we are actually allocating the object. But we are actually in a java so we need to use a new operator here and after that we need to terminate that but we also need to specify here some parameter so first i will be specifying a zero then again the second parameter i also specify a zero then the third parameter i will be specify a racket width or you can specify the racket height but i will be specifying the racket width then i will be specifying the fourth parameter which is of type racket height after initializing all of these values we need to create a getters method for these two variables because i already told you we are going to use these two data members inside our pong table class so just right click there and go to generate and then select this getter and then select these two variables which is width and height and hit ok now i already told you we are going to draw the things with the help of this paint class object on a 60 frame per second basis so to draw the things we need to use our draw method so here i will be specifying a draw method which is of type public which will draw our racket on the pong table class means our game environment so this is a draw method and inside of this we need to specify the code so this draw method will accept a one parameter a canvas type class object so i specify the canvas now with the help of this canvas object i'm going to call a method which is a draw round rectangle and then here we need to specify the bounds and then also we need to specify here a five values now why i'm just using here five because i have actually developed this application with by hand so that is the reason i know the, the exact values so i can't experiment with these values because i did already so much experiment with these values so that is the reason i know all these values properly because i developed already this application now the next thing and the last thing inside of this class we need to do is actually we need to create a helper function which will help us to debug some things so that we need to create a method so i will be here just simply click on the generate and select here a two string method and then select only a single parameter so i will be here selecting a score and hit ok but right now we are not going to return in this form we are going to make it little bit more simple because we need to return all the object values so here i'll be specifying a width then a equal to and then we need to specify the value so i'm going to click on here plus then the racket width i will be specifying like this is a second one and then again we need to specify the plus then the again we need to specify here uh, inverted commas 
double inverted commas and then the height and then equal to sign and then again here we need to specify the plus then racket height again just specify the plus then we need to specify the string values which is uh, taken as a string then score is equal to and then you know very well that what I am actually doing so I am going to quickly type this code. Now you can see I have typed the whole code which is actually a width which will return the racket width. So this is just a function which will help us to debug some things. If anything goes wrong we can use this method to actually convert the values in a string and we can display those values inside our log cat if we need it. So that is the reason I created so that we don't need to create it while we are get face some issues. So that's it for this video guys. In the next video we are going to create the ball class and then we need to create some pong table class then we need to create a game thread class so there is a lot of things we need to create. Then we will run our application and then we if we face some issues we are going to solve those issues one by one. So thank you for watching see you in the next video. In this video we are going to implement the logical part of our application. Now if you not watched the previous video then I highly recommend you to watch the previous videos then come back to this video so that you can get a complete idea of this Pong 2D game application. Now coming back to the package just right click on this package and go to new and from there select a new java class. And inside of the java class type the name of your class. So I am going to type the name of my class as player and simply hit the enter key. Now I am going to click on this project tab so that you can get a more wider area to see. Now here first I will be specifying a members. So uh, the member that I want means our player is actually a racket. So a racket should have a width and height and also we need to give a score so that our player should have a score and to paint on the surface means we are going to use a surface view class which is actually a part of the android graphics. So we can actually paint on the our screen on a basis of the 60 frame per second. So to paint on the screen we need to use a paint class object. So that is the reason we need to use a paint object as well. So we are going to define all of this method inside of this player class. So first I will be specifying here a private and then we need to create an integer because the height and width is actually in a form of integer. Then I will be specifying the name of my first data member or you can say it as a member variable because we are inside the object oriented programming language. So I just specify my first member as racket width which will hold the width value of my player which will ultimately define the racket. Then I will be specifying another variable of a private integer type and here I will be specifying again a racket and this is actually going to be a height. And then I need to specify another variable but at this point of time it is actually a integer public variable which is actually a score because we are going to update this score from different classes as well. Then we need to create another variable which is of type private which is of type class paint which is a part of the android graphics package and we need to create an object of this paint class so that we can paint on the screen so that we can paint according to the height and width of our racket on the surface view which is our pong table class and we are going to call this racket width and height inside our pong table class in our upcoming videos. Also here I need to create another variable which will help us to detect the collision detection. So here I will be using a rect f which is also a part of the android graphics package and then we need to create the object of this and I will be specifying here a bounce. So this bounce will help us to detect the collision between our racket and a player and also the boundaries of our arena means the game environment. So what I want to say so right now you can see this is my physical device suppose here we have our racket which is our player 1 and here our opponent racket and this is the boundary of our application. Now this bounce which is a part of the rect f class will help us to detect the collision between our ball and racket and also when our ball gets hit by this upper ball and also with the bottom ball or like left and right then it will help us to detect the collision. So we are going to write the collision detection cone in our upcoming videos because right now if I will specify all these things in a one video it will become a very long video and it will become very difficult to understand. Now coming to the coding part again inside our player class first right click there and go to generate and here you need to specify a constructor. Just select this integer variables which is of type private not select the public one. Now this rect f is also of type public. I actually forgot to specify here a public. I am going to correct it just after I specify the code for the constructors. So select the paint also and then simply hit ok. Now first I need to make a changes. So first here I will specify here a and then I need to initialize this score variable and also this bounce variable inside the constructor but not as a parameterized constructor. So here I will be specifying a score value to default value which is of type 0 and then I will be specifying the bounce object to a memory. So with the help of new operator I can specify the bound to the rect f class because it is actually a type of rept because we are not inside the Kotlin because if we are inside the Kotlin 
you can simply delete this stuff. It's automatically understood by the compiler that we are actually allocating the object. But we are actually in a Java, so we need to use a new operator here. And after that, we need to terminate that. But we also need to specify here some parameter. So first, I will be specifying a zero. Then again, the second parameter I also specify a zero. Then the third parameter I will be specifying a racket width. Or you can specify the racket height, but I will be specifying the racket width. Then I will be specifying the fourth parameter, which is of type racket height. After initializing all of these values, we need to create a getters method for these two variables because I already told you we are going to use these two data members inside our pong table class. So just right click there and go to generate and then select this getter and then select these two variables which is width and height and hit OK. Now I already told you we are going to draw the things with the help of this paint class object on a 60 frame per second basis. So to draw the things we need to use our draw method. So here I will be specifying a draw method which is of type public which will draw our racket on the pong table class means our game environment. So this is our draw method and instead of this we need to specify the code. So this draw method will accept a one parameter a canvas type class object. So I specify the canvas. Now with the help of this canvas object I am going to call a method which is a draw round rectangle. And then here we need to specify the bounds. And then I also need to specify here a 5 values. Now why I am just using here 5 because I have actually developed this application with by hand. So that is the reason I know the, the exact values. So I can't experiment with these values because I did already so much experiment with these values. So that is the reason I know all these values properly because I developed already this application. Now the next thing and the last thing inside of this class we need to do is actually we need to create a helper function which will help us to debug some things. So that we need to create a method. So I will be here just simply click on the generate. And select here a two string method and then select only a single parameter. So I will be here selecting a score and hit OK. But right now we are not going to return in this form. We are going to make it little bit more simple because we need to return all the object values. So here I will be specifying a width then a equal to and then we need to specify the value. So I am going to click on here plus then the racket width I will be specifying like this is a second one and then again we need to specify the plus then the again we need to specify here an uh, inverted commas double inverted commas and then the height and then equal to sign and then again here we need to specify the plus then racket height again just specify the plus then we need to specify the string values which is a uh, taken as a string then score is equal to and then you know very well that's what I am actually doing so I am going to quickly type this code. Now you can see I have typed the whole code which is actually a width which will return the racket width. So this is just a function which will help us to debug some things. If anything goes wrong we can use this method to actually convert the values in a string and we can display those values inside our log cat if we need it. So that is the reason I created it so that we don't need to create it while we are get face some issues. So that's it for this video guys. In the next video we are going to create the ball class and then we need to create some pong table class and we need to create a game thread class. So there is a lot of things we need to create. Then we will run our application and then we if we face some issues we are going to solve those issues one by one. So thank you for watching, see you in the next video. Welcome back to this video. So in this video we are going to create the ball class inside our Pong 2D game. So let's get started with this video. So simply click on this project tab and from there expand your package and here we need to create a new class. Just click on new and select the Java class. And here inside of that just place your class name. So I will be specifying a ball and hit OK. Also I need another class so I am going to create a new class again. And here I will be specifying the class name as Pong table. Then simply press OK. Now inside of this Pong table class, I am going to specify two constants. So I am going to close all the other classes. Now I have closed all the classes. Just I need to work on these two classes, which is ball dot Java and Pong table dot Java. Now inside of that, I need to specify some constants. Means I need to specify the two constants, which is actually denotes the speed of our racket and also the speed of our ball. So these are the constants are of type public static, so that we can access it inside the our ball class. So public static. And then we need to specify here a float because this is actually going to hold a floating point values because we are inside the game development and every possible value will make the difference because if there is a very small change then we will actually get a very massive difference. Then I will be specifying the name of my variable is physics racket speed. So I just make the physics to short as speed. Then here we need to initialize the value. So I am going to initialize the 15.0 f. Then it's time to duplicate it. So here actually it's going to 15 point and here I need to specify the 0 f. Then I need to duplicate it and instead of racket speed I want to change the name of my variable to like ball. Now it's time to specify the code inside our ball.java. So here inside of that first I need to create some variables. 
So I'm going to create some public variables. So it is of type public because we are going to access the outside the other classes as well. That is reason. So the first, our ball needs a coordinates, but which is actually a x coordinate, and also we need a y coordinate so that we can draw the ball inside our screen, which is our pong table. Because right now we are going to use this ball and our player inside the pong table in our upcoming videos. Also, we need to use the velocity because if we want to move the ball, we need to change the velocity in the x direction, also in the y direction. So I name my variable as velocity. Then I need to specify the x, which you know the velocity for x. Then again, I'm going to duplicate that again. And here I will be specifying the y, but denote the velocity of y. To draw a ball, we need a radius. So I'm going to create a new variable, which is of type radius. Now, in order to paint the ball inside our pong table, we need a paint class object. So again, I'm here specifying the private, then paint, and then I need to specify the paint. Next, time to specify the constructor. So right click on your class and then go to generate. And here select the constructor and select all the parameters except this radius and paint and then select ok now i'm going to remove this parameter list and here i will be specifying a parameter list which is a int radius because when we call our ball inside the pong table class we need to specify only a radius and also the paint object which you will get to know about it when in our upcoming videos came out so now the ball is actually done now it's time to specify a draw method just like we did in our Player class, so it will be going to a public, then void, and after that, I'm going to specify the name of our method, so it is going to a draw method. And then here we need to specify the parameter which is of type canvas because it is going to draw the things on the canvas. So here we need to use the object of canvas, then canvas, and now we need to use this canvas object dot and we need to draw a circle just like we did in our player class where we draw a round rectangle. So we need to draw a circle. So it requires four parameters. The first is the coordinate from x, then coordinate from y. So I already create a member variable for that. And then here you can see it's actually a cy. So it's actually here I specify a dot instead of comma. Now the error is gone. And here we need to specify the radius. And then we need to specify the paint object, which will paint the our ball inside the pong table class, which is actually a pong table canvas. Now where we need to define another method which will actually use to move the ball and it is called by the game thread every time whenever we need to move the ball. So it is also type public then specify here avoid because this method is not going to return anything then move ball and then again we need to start the body of the method. Instead of that we need to move the ball so we need a canvas object because in canvas we need to move our ball. So it is also using a canvas then here we need to use the coordinate x first we need to increase the velocity. I already told you in order to move the ball we need to increase the velocity. So here I will be specifying the velocity value and also similarly we need to do that for the value for our cy. So I am going to duplicate it so that it will make little bit more quicker. Then here I need to change the value names. Now the values are initialized. Then we need to make a comparison. So here I will be using a comparison if cy which is a coordinate y if it is smaller than radius then we need to use the condition. We need to initialize the cy value to our radius. And after that, if this is true, then we need to specify the else condition also if it is not true. So if it is else if condition, so here we need to specify the cy plus the value of our radius. Then we need to increase the value if it is greater than or equal to our canvas height. So we need to make use of a small object because this is a canvas. So canvas object we need. So here we need to use the canvas dot get height. If it is that the case, then we need to execute that block of code which is actually equal to cy is equal to canvas dot get height. And then we need to minus the radius value along with the minus 1. So that particular code will help us to move our ball inside the pong table game. Now we also need to create a get radius method which is a getter method. So I am going to right click it again and go to generate and here I am going to select the getter and from there I will be selecting only the radius and click ok because this method is used in a game thread class. Now here we need to create another two string method which is a helper function which is used to debug the code. So I am going to click on this project tab open my player class and from there I am going to copy this two string method and returning back to the ball class and here I will be pasting the code again and then I will be changing the parameters list so that because here we are going to return the cx value which is a coordinate x value so cx value which will denote the coordinate x and then we need to plus this value which is cx and then again we need to increase and then specify the value which is cy then plus then we need to specify here a cy then plus again the values so here i will be using val x which is the velocity x variable is going to equal to then here we need to plus the value which is our 
velocity x and then again I need to do the same for our velocity y equals to and then again and then we need to plus the value then velocity y. So that's all for the coding for our ball.java class which will help us to create the ball inside our pong table and also this particular method will allow us to move the ball inside our game. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Welcome back to this video. In this video we are going to start the coding inside our pong table class. In previous video we have specified the code inside our ball.java class where we write the code for our drawing the ball and also for the code to move our ball. So let's get started with this video. Now open your pong table class and here at the top of them I we need to create some variables. And I am going to explain all the variables. So this part is actually going to be just for the creation of the variables. So just I am going to type here private and also I will specify here a player and then I am player which is the object of our player class. Then again I need to specify here a private variable which is also type player and here I will be specifying the I'm opponent variable which is almost same because we need to draw a racket for our opponent as well. Then we need to create an object for our ball. We already created the ball class. So here we need to specify the ball then I'm and then we specify here a ball. Then we need to create an object for our paint which will allow us to paint the net on the screen. So I am using a paint and net paint. I will create the object net paint. And after that I need to create another variable which is actually for the paint of also type paint and this is going to our table paint object means table bounce paint which will allow us to paint the bound. So what I mean if I open the activity file like activity dot bound activity so it is actually asking for the refractor. So what I mean if I just make it into landscape. So this is actually right now you can see this white border. This is actually our bound but right now this is actually the Android studio bounds of the activity. So we also need to draw this bound inside the code so that we can when our ball gets hit by this particular ball which is our bottom ball and also the top ball. Then we want to reflect back to the ball again to the in the direction of the racket. So here again I am specify some variables which is of type private and it is type of integer and this is actually going to be like m table width. So if this is m table width then again I am specifying the private integer variable and then m table is going to like m table and this is going to be our height. And then we need to create some variable for our surface holder. So here I will be using a surface holder and then I will create a, a holder as an object which will help us to hold the surface that in which we are going to define our all the classes. Now these all the variables we already created. So we just want to make it at the bottom so that format the code. Then here we need to create a variable for our AI which is actually used to control our opponent racket. So it's of type private and also of type float. And here I am going to name this as an AI which is a move probability. Then I am going to just simply terminate that variable. Then we are going to create a variable for the boolean variable which is actually a moving variable which will tell us whether the ball is moving or not. Then the last variable which we need to create is actually a float variable and it's actually an last touch. So finally we have declared all the variables which are necessary for our pong table. Now this pong table class is actually going to extend a surface view. So it's actually a surface view. So now it's actually complaining that there is something we need to override. So we need to actually override the constructor. So we need these two constructor then simply hit ok. Also we need to create a one method which is of type integer and this is method is going to type of public because this method is used inside our game loop when we create our game thread class. So it is type in it. And then here we need to specify the init pong table. The name of our method I am going to specify like. Then this method is going to accept a parameter of type context. So here also I need to specify the void because this method is not going to return anything. And then here we need to specify the context. And then we need to specify here as ctx the context variable. And also we need to use here a attribute set. And I will specify like atoms. So instead of that we need to write the code means we, whatever variables we have defined at the top means whatever data member we have defined here we need to initialize all this value inside this init pong table. So it is actually init not int. It's actually an init pong table. Also this surface view means this pong table class is going to implement the interface of surface view holder. So I'm going to type here a surface view holder dot callback. And then we need to override some methods. So by pressing alt enter then again press the enter then you need to override all of these three methods. So we are going to code all of these three methods in our upcoming videos. So these are the main things of our application because whenever surface change we need to make some changes here. So all of these methods are actually maintained by the game thread class which we are going to create in our upcoming videos. Now that's it for this video guys in the next video we are going to specify the code inside this init pong table method. So thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video. Now in previous video we initialized all of our data member inside this init pong table method. Now in this video we are going to specify the code inside our draw method and along with that on this constructor we are going to call our init pong table method. So let's get started with this video. 
So first I am inside this pong table method means which is a constructor. So here I need to call the init pong table. So this is a init pong table. I need to pass the context and then I need to pass the address as a parameter. Similarly copy this again the whole statement and then here I am again paste it. Now it's time to specify the code inside this draw method. So let us start it first. Here we need to use the object of canvas dot and then we need to call the draw color method. So draw color and then after that we need to specify the context compact because we are inside the latest android version which is android minimum because here I am using the context compact that is because my build with gradle file if I open it you will see here I have the maximum SDK version is 29 and then the min SDK version is 25. Now if your min SDK version is 22 or maybe smaller than 23 then this particular line of code will give you an error. So make sure you specify the minimum SDK version is 25 at least now got. Then it will work well. Now again I am closing the gradle file and inside this so here we need to call the get color method get color and then we need to specify the m context which is a member variable of the pong table class and then again here we need to specify the path of the color so color and we are actually using a color of table so table color we are actually here calling then again we need to specify the another object canvas and then here we need to call the draw rect method this is our draw rect method and then here we need to specify the left, right and then we need to specify the m table width add the width and then we need to specify the m table height and then comma and after that we need to specify here a m table bounds paint so this will actually draw our bounds of the rectangle and then we need to call here a init middle to draw the middle lines because inside of a draw method we will draw the things because we are actually setting all the things inside the init table method. Now it's time to draw the things by using the draw method. That is the reason we actually override this method. Now to draw the now to draw the middle lines, we need to half the width. Means we need to divide the width by two, which will give the half portion of the table. And then we need to call the canvas object draw line. So here we are calling the draw line method. And then we need to pass the middle, which is the starting point of the line to draw and then we need to specify the y position so which is going to be 1 and then we need to specify some float value so here again I will be passing a middle and again I need to specify comma and m table height and then specify the comma which is actually m net paint then here we need to also specify a minus 1 ok so that's actually draw the color a table color rectangle and the line now next thing we need to draw our opponents and player and our ball. So let us start it. So first here I will be calling the object of M player which will allow us to call M player draw method and here we will specify the canvas as a parameter. Now this method we are calling here so that we can draw the player inside our pong table. Similarly we need to draw the M opponent. It is also based on the player class. Almost similar but the things are actually a little bit different. The object name is different and we are actually controlling the opponent by using the method called AI. And then here we need to specify the m ball, m ball dot draw method, and then we need to specify here a canvas. Now this is a draw method. We are actually using it here. Now one thing here notice, I have actually not initialized the radius and paint inside this constructor. So we need to make changes inside this code. Otherwise we will get some error when we run our application. So first we need to make changes inside our ball dot java class. So here I made a mistake. So first this is not the valid code because this will give an error. Instead I will be using here a this dot and we need to initialize our paint so paint is equal to is going to be equal to paint and then we are again using a this and it's m time to radius and this is actually equal to radius then we need to initialize the velocity so this dot velocity x is actually equals to pong table so we actually created a constant which is actually a ball speed we need to call it here and again we need to specify the this dot velocity y which is equal to again pong table dot physics ball speed and then we to again terminate that now this will be the valid code it will not going to give us an error if we don't specify this code this draw method actually calling inside the pong table so when we run our application we will get in trouble because this radius and this paint is not initialized also this cx and cy value are null that is the reason 
Now again coming to the pong table class and it's time to specify the code inside all of this particular method. So first I'm going to change the parameter list of this surface created method because right now it's actually showing i, i and i2 which is not a meaningful. So first I will be here specifying the int format and then this one is actually going to be our int width. So here we are specifying the width and this one is actually our height. You guys get right it's actually our height. Now again instead of that I will be initializing two values. The first is actually I will be initializing the height and table width. So m table width width not a width is time for the m table height. Now this two lines of code actually I specified inside the surface change method. Now the next thing we want to also do we in our upcoming video we also need to initialize the game thread object here. But we are right now just leaving it as it is because we are going to code inside of these methods in our upcoming videos. Now instead of this video I am going to also create some more method. The first is actually I want to override the onTouch method. So this is our onTouch event method which will be used to move the racket. And then I am also going to create another private move boolean method. So it's type of private and a boolean method is actually is touch on racket. So I will be creating this method is touch on racket. And if this will take in object of the motion event and I will be specifying here event. And then it's also taking the object of a player class because our racket is actually a player and player. And then we just start the body of this method. Now this will actually expect an return statement. So I will be specifying the return statement. So it will going to return the m player bounds, m player dot bounds, and then we will specify here a contains, and then we will specify here event dot get x, and then specify the comma event dot get y. Then we need to terminate that whole statement. After that, we also need to specify some more method. So I am going to here specify a move player method. So it is also going to like private, it is actually a public method because we are going to call this method inside our game thread class. That is the reason I am going to specify this method as public. Then move player, and after that, here we need to specify some parameters. So this is like player, then player, comma, then float, and then we need to specify here a left value. And comma a float and then we need to specify a top value. Then we need to start the body of this method. So this is our move player method and also I need to create another method at the top of this particular method which is our public and this is our method which is a move player. This method is also going to accept some parameters. So the first parameter is actually going to accept is of type float. So I will be here specifying the float which is actually a dy and then I will be specifying here a player and player. And also I need to specify one more method which is actually our do AI method. Means our AI which will use to control the opponent racket. So here I will specify the void then do and AI. And after that I need to specify the body of this method. So we are going to code all of these three methods in our next video. So that's it for this video. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video. In this video we are going to initialize all the member variables that we have created in our previous video inside of this init pong table method. So let's get started with this video. So first I am going to initialize the mcontext. So I just forgot to, to actually creating the mcontext variable I think. I forgot it to create the mcontext but don't worry we are going to create it here. Private and then the context variable. And then it is actually a mcontext. Now it is time to initialize it inside it here. So first I am going to specify the mcontext. It is going to the value of ctx which is a context variable. Then we need to initialize the object which is our holder. So that we can hold our surface. So I think this is the mholder. I name my holder object like a holder so I am going to here specify m holder because that is going to be a member holder variable so that we can differentiate easily whenever we share a source code to someone else. Then get holder and then simply hit a terminator. Then again m holder dot and then we need to specify here a add callback and here we need to specify the this. Now remember we get this get holder easily because of we have actually implemented the surface holder callback. Now after initializing all of these things, it's time to here writing a one comment. Now here you can see I have specified a line of code which will allow us to actually initialize the game thread. So here we need to create the object at the top and then we need to initialize the game thread object in this particular line after the initialization and adding the callback to our m holder object. Now it's time to specify more code so I'm going to here use a type array and then I'm going to create the object which is of array and then here to specify the ctx dot and then obtain 
style attributes. Specify the attributes and then we need to specify the R dot styleable, which is a styleable in which we have created some dimensions for our racket and pong table so that we can target the smaller device skin as well. And pong table. Now here I am going to create another variable which will actually initialize the racket dimension. So first I am going to initialize the racket. So first I am going to initialize the racket height which is a get integer value and then I need to provide the path which is just else styleable and then pong table. So it's actually a pong table and this is the racket height. Then I need to specify the default value which is going to be 340 and then duplicate it into two more times because we also need to initialize the width. So I will be specifying the width. And this is actually going to be like a ball radius. And after that, here we need to change the corresponding values like pong table. And this is going to be racket width. So here I use a white. It's actually not a properly pronunciated. So I have actually make here a typo. Then I need to copy this and again go to our pong table and then paste it here. So actually I need to copy the whole. It's actually pong table dot. So I need to remove that again. Dot and then again I need to specify pong table racket width. And then I need to specify here a default value which is going to be like 100. Then similarly we need to here initialize a pong table ball radius. And then you need to specify the radius default value which is 25. Now it's time to set our player so that we can paint the player inside the pong table class. So this is initialize method in which we need to initialize our player as well as our opponent as well as our ball. Or along with that we need to draw the walls and also the bounds. So we are going to use the paint class object. So here we need to use the paint class. And then clear here uh, and then we need to name the object as player paint. Which will allow us to paint the player on the surface view. So I am going to initialize the object. And after that with the use of a player paint object I am going to call a method which is a set anti alias method. And here I need to set the value true. Then I need to create another method which is a player paint dot set color. Then we need to specify the path color, but first we need to call here a get context means get text compact. And after that we need to call a method get color, which is because we are inside the latest Android Studio versions. If you actually open my build.gradle file, you will see here that we are actually working in the minimum SDK 25 and our build tool version is 29.0.2. So that is the reason if you are in the older version, this code will not work. Like in a pillow API 22, this code will not work. So that is to make sure your minimum API is at least 23 or maybe higher. Then here I need to specify the path of the color. So I am using here a R dot. Along with that, now here you can see it's actually providing the error that is because we need to call it with the help of a context. So I need to specify here and context. Now the error is actually gone. Now we have all set the player paint. Now it's time to pass this player paint to the object of the player constructor, which is actually this constructor along with the height and width. So just calling the M player because we have already created this object at the top. If you remember, this is object. Now the first object we are going to initialize. Then allocating the memory to this object that is new and then player because we are here calling a constructor. And then we need to pass the first racket width. So here I have also made a typo. It's actually with it. I need to make here th and then copy that and here we need to paste it again. Then we need to specify the racket height and then we need to specify here a player paint which will allow us to paint the player on this surface view. Now similarly we need to create the paint object for our opponent as well. So here I will be writing a one comment set player and then I am writing here another comment which is like set our opponent. Now I am going to copy this code and I am going to paste it here because the code will remain same just only we need to change the object name. So here I will be specifying a opponent paint and then copy that and paste it here and I will also paste it here and then also paste it here. Now similarly we need to create a ball. So here I will be specifying a ball comment. So we are actually setting the content so that we can draw it on the canvas. Now again I am going to paste it here. So it's actually open and paint is copied. So I am going to copy that and paste it here. And then I am going to change the object name to ball paint. Then copy that and here we need to paste it. It's actually copied again. Paste that and here also and then also here. But notice here we have made a mistake that we are actually calling a new player. But we already have a separate ball class. So we need to call this ball constructor here. So I need to change it into ball. And then when I did that it is actually giving us an error because it requires a radius. It says a two parameter the first is the radius and the second is the paint. So we need to provide here a 
radius first. So I'm going to remove these two parameters. Here I will be need to specify a ball radius. So this ball radius I have created, but here also need to change the object to m ball. Now if you click on that, then this is a variable we have actually initialized the dimension to the ball radius. That we are actually using it here. After that, we need to here draw a middle lines. So I'm going to type here a comment. So here I will be using a m net paint dot set. And the first we need to allocate the memory. Um, and paint is going to equal to the new. And this is going to be a paint. After initializing value to m and paint, here I'm going to again use the m and paint. Then we need to set the anti alias method and the set the value to true. Again, so we are going to use bunch of method with this particular thing. Then m net paint again. And then we need to set the color. Set color. And I'm going to set the color as like uh, white. Because our background is actually a dark gray. Because our, now I'm going to specify here a white color. Because our background is dark gray. Then again I'm going to change a method name. Here I'm just duplicate the code. And then here I'm going to use the set alpha. And I'm going to set the alpha value to 80. Then again duplicate that and remove this method. Because we need not need method. Because we need another setter method. Then set stroke width. Now then we need to call here a set stroke width method. Stroke width and here we need to specify the paint dot style dot and here we need to use the fill and stroke as a constant value. Now you can see it's actually giving us an error. So it's actually giving the error that is because we have passed our wrong parameters. So stroke width is actually we need to specify a floating point value. Then after that we need to specify the style. So I need to specify the style at the top. I don't want to destroy my code. So that is the reason I am just going to type the same code that I already developed the application by hand. Then we need to specify here a style. Set style and then it's actually a paint dot style dot and then we need to specify the fill and stroke. That's the correct parameter. And now finally the last method that with the m and paint actually takes up it's actually a set path effect. So we actually need a dash path effect. Now what this particular lines of code will does, it's actually create a line at the middle of the screen, which will denote like a net because it's a Pong 2D game and you remember that a Pong table game has a net between the table, which will partition the two different sides of the player. So that is the reason I'm going to try it here with this particular code. Now here, we need to specify a new float array and then I need to specify the values. So I'm going to specify here 5, comma 5. Now how I know all of these values because I already developed this application by hand. Then I need to specify here a 0 and then finally terminate that code. I need to remove this typo and then here we are going to set the bounds. So again I am here is a draw and then we need to specify the bounds. To set the bound we need to use a m table bound object. So here we need to specify the m table bound paint and then we need to set the first so first we need to again allocate the memory because I forgot it to allocate the memory because in Kotlin we don't need to allocate the memory because with the name of the class name we can simply allocate the memory. And again now it's time to set the anti alias method. So again just m table dot. After doing that we need to just set this color and all of this stuff. So again I'm going to paste it here and then I'm changing the object name. Paste it and then we're also going to paste it. Then we need to set the color. So I'm going to set the color to the bounds at black so that it will become hided when we run the application and then it's actually here uh, we need to close the bracket a round bracket then we need to set the style and also we need a stroke width so i'm going to copy this to code we don't need a set alpha color set it here and then copy that again paste it here and paste it here now to increase the width i'm going to specify the value to 15 and instead of fill and stroke i will be using a only fill or you can also use a stroke so i will be trying a stroke just to make a little bit different than my previous one. Then we need to initialize the mai variable, which is our mi probability variable. So I'm going to initialize the value, a floating point value of 0.8f. And now I'm going to terminate this value. So finally, guys, all the initialization of the code is done. So we are going to override a method that is a on row method. So on row, I'm going to type it here on row and hit our tab key. Now instead of this on row method, we are going to call all the draw method of this. This draw method will be called here. And also the ball draw method, which is a this one be called here in order to draw the things on the screen. And I have already initialized all these values. So there is no way to get the null pointer exception error. If you face this error, then maybe you have initialized something incorrectly. So that's it for this video guys. In the next video, we're going to specify more code inside our pong table dot class because I'm 
already told you first we need to set the things then we can run this application to the, our physical device to test the things so thank you for watching and i will see you in the next video in this video we are going to specify the code inside our move player method so that we can move our player means our racket when we are actually playing the game so let's get started with this video so first here we need to make some comparison so i'm going to use a if statement which is used for the comparison if left is smaller than 2 then we need to initialize the value which is left is equal to 2 2 and then we have to terminate that after that we need to make here a comparison with the else if statement and here we have to specify the left plus and then we have to specify here a player dot and get racket width if it is greater than equal to our m table width minus 2 then we have to specify the body so here again I will be specifying a top is equal to and then we have to specify here a m table height minus layer so this is our player dot get bracket width and then this is our minus 2 and then terminate that so what does it will actually compare the left if it is smaller than 2 then it's actually initialize the value to left and after that we are comparing so here we need to use a left instead of top after that if left and plus layer racket width is greater than table width minus 2 then we want to execute this particular statement and then we need to make comparison for the top so here i am using a top smaller than 0 and then to start the body of this method and here i need to specify first initialize the top to 0 then you need to specify else if statement and again here we want to specify the top plus and then we need to call here a player player dot get bracket height so if it is greater than equal to and here we need to specify a m table height then start the body and then we need to initialize here a top is equal to m table height minus player player dot get racket height minus 1 so this will actually check if either so if i again just take you to the game screen means not our game screen so almost same because right now our game screen doesn't have any thing so what it will allow it will actually compare the left of this and also the top so if it is actually our record actually collides with the top then this particular comparison will be used and if it is actually inside the left means our ball gets collided here at the left then this particular block of statement is used so now we need to here I specify the last statement of the code inside of this method that is a player dot bounce dot offset to and here we need to specify the left comma top now we have specified the code inside our move player method it's time to use this move player method inside this move player racket method so let's get start here so first I need to use a synchronized keyword because our move player method also uses a synchronized and then we need to specify here a holder object which will holds the object so m holder now i need to start the body because now our holder will hold this surface with the synchronized keyword so no other thread can use this until it finish its execution and then we need to use the move player which is a method and then we need to pass the player because our move player method is actually expecting a parameter which is a player then left and top so here i specify the player object then i need to specify a player bounce so make sure i need to call the dot operator and bounce and then dot left and then to specify a comma after specifying the comma again i need to call the player object and dot then bounce and then top also we need to specify this dy which is a parameter so here we need to also add this value along with dy now our move player racket code is completed now it's time to specify the code inside our do ai method so first we need to make here a comparison if m opponent if it is the case then we need to execute the block of statement which is our move player because our opponent is also a player so first we need to pass the object of type player class which is our m opponent and then we need to i am going to make an enter so that it will become more clear to understand the code then here we need to specify the m opponent not a moving it's actually an m opponent dot bounce dot and again we need to specify here a left then specify a comma and then again i need to specify here a m opponent then dot bounce dot and then to specify the top and then we need to minus the value by with the help of physics 
racket speed. So that marks the completion of the if block execution. Then we need to also specify the else if statement. So it is actually an else, and then we need to specify the if statement. I'm open end, and then dot bounce dot top, and then here we again need to call the move player because our racket will also move in the top direction. Just like here, if it is our racket here placed here, because our opponent will be placed on the right hand side, so our racket is actually moving in the top direction. Along with that, so also going to move in the bottom direction. So that is the reason. Again, I am here specifying the else statement. I am open end, and then to specify again enter. I am open end, not a moving. It's actually I am open end. Dot bounce dot, and we need to specify the left comma, and then again here I will be specifying I am open end. Dot bounce dot top and again we want to plus the value by using physics racket speed so here we are actually plusing the value means adding the value of the racket speed so that marks the completion of the code our do ai method so here i will be making it into capital that marks the completion of the code for these three methods we need to still specify some more code inside our pong table class so that we can easily able to interact with our rackets when we design our layout so from next video onwards i'm going to design the layout for our activity game along with that for our activity pong so that's it for this video thank you for watching and i will see you in the next video in this video we are going to design our activity game screen along with that our activity pong so let's get start first with this activity game so it is already designed but i need to just specify here something more so first i am going to close the show layout decoration so that we can get a clear screen so this hello world text i am going to change it into start game so i am going to just remove this text and here i will be specifying the start game and then i need to increase the text size so here i will be specifying the text size which is like a hashtag three times f because i'm going to use the dark background now here i'll be specifying the background color which is almost close to the table color so i'm going to use here a table color that is this one now i need to increase the text size so here text size is actually i have specified the wrong thing here i need to specify 35 sp and after that i need to specify the text color which is hashtag three times f now it's actually visible then i need to do one more thing which is text style is going to bold and also i'm going to specify here a on click which is actually a start game method so this will create a event handler inside our game activity so i'm going to press the alt enter and create start game in game activity now it's actually created so here i will be using a intent so i'm going to specify here intent intent then new then it's like to start a new activity i'm going to use the intent this is our game activity dot this and then i need to specify here uh, another which is our pong table not uh, yes so i will see whether the pong table is activity so yeah our pong table is actually a, not a activity our pong activity and to figure out which is my activity so it is our pong activity which i need to start here not our pong table it's actually our pong activity so pong activity dot class then terminate that and then to start the activity that is this one activity and need to pass the object which is intent so when i just click on this text view it's going to start my pong activity i'm going to close the game activity now it's time to specify the code inside our pong activity so the first thing i need to specify the pong activity is actually a tag so first make some enter and here i will be using a text views so go to the design tab because i'm using a constraint layout so to work with the constraint layout you need to use a design editor now this is our landscape mode and first i'm going to specify a background color but it's better if you not specify but i'm going to specify it because right now this is necessary because all the text which i'm going to placing i'm going to set the text color as white so first i'm going to drag this text to here and then again this text to here okay and now i need to set the constraints so first this one and then from there this one and from top and from here also i'm going to select it and also from the top now from top i'm going to make it into 24 maybe 32 and this one also is selecting and from top is actually already 32 then from bottom i need to specify the constraint which is 360 and also for this one from bottom is 360 now i need to specify the left constraint and then i'm going to select this one and also select the left constraint now these are actually going so, so may, i need to make it a zero and select this one also make it a zero now both of them are closely related to each other now their indentation is actually changed 360 selecting this one is actually 30 88 and from there i'm going to also make it into 88 
Now both of them are perfectly at the center. Now I need to specify here 100. And similarly for this one, I'm going to specify here a 150. And just select in this one and just increase it here 150. So this is how you actually work with the constraint level. So that's look great. Now they are actually perfectly constricted. Now go to the text mode of the XML. So I need to change the IDs. So this will be our TV score layer. Because on the left hand side our TV score layer. So I need to copy this ID. Because right now you can see there is our red line is appearing. So I need to specify here a TV score layer. Then this one is actually our TV score opponent. Then I need to copy this ID again and replacing it here. Now perfect. Both of them are perfectly aligned. Then again here need to change the text opponent. And also you need to change the text to layer. Then it's time to specify, modify the code. Text style is going to bold. Then text size is actually going to like 22 SP. So 22 SP is visible. It's very small. I need to make it into 25 I think. 25. Then I need to yes, specify text color is going to like hashtag 3 times F. Because our background is dark. Now just copy this code and then place it here also. This makes the layer and opponent text looks better. Again I need to specify another text view. So this is here. I need to specify the text view. That is this one. Setting the constraint from both sides. And then I am coming back to this layout. And here you can see this is our text view. So first I need to modify the code. So here I am going to copy that and placing it here. This will be the state. So right now when our game is not playing, it's actually a ready state. So right now our game is actually in a ready state. Sign of explanation. And you can see the font is not very big. So I'm going to make it into 35 SP. Now it's actually big and crisp and clear. Now at the top, I need to specify here uh, another text. I'm going to copy this text view. Copy that. Not just cutting them. Copy that and remove the ID. And then I'm going to here specify a com dot. And here I'm going to use this pong table text view. I'm going to create a custom tag. Means a custom view of a pong table. Selecting this and I need to place it at the top. So first I am going to remove the constraint. So go to the design tab and here first remove the all constraints because we need to make it them into center. So this is our surface view. Just align it at the center. And then I need to do what? Then I need to set the constraint. Constraint, then constraints and then constraints. Just leave the bottom one. Because our bottom constraints will not going to work in this way. Bottom constraint like this, and I need to just simply making it here. I'll first, remove the bottom constraint because it will create a problem, and I need to just move it here in the right. Just leave the right constraint, then select this one, then set the bottom constraint. Yeah, that's look great. Then just make it into center, this ready, and then set the right constraint. So that's actually at the perfectly at the center. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to again go to the test tab, selecting the main layout and then changing this background color, means just removing this background color. Now everything is white, because right now our pong table constraint is actually wrapped content, so I'm going to set it into match parent. And this one is also match parent. Then again coming back to the design tab, selecting this surface view, like this pong table. And then from here I just set it to 0, also this 0, and then set it to 0, and this also 0. Now you can see our surface view is actually visible. Now here you can see our racket is visible when I just coming back to the text mode and again go to the design tab then our racket is visible but right now our ball is not visible. So I just look at the code here so in the initialization code here you can see we are setting the same color that is yellow yellow yellow. So our opponent color is also yellow our setup player color is also yellow which is our visible player that is this one player racket and also we are setting our ball color as yellow. So we need to here change the color that is our ball color. So we need to call here a ball color. And then here we need to also specify the opponent color. So now the colors are different. Also you can see here at the top our opponent object is not used. The reason for that because we actually copy paste the code and here we are also initializing the player. So here it is our opponent object. So opponent object is used. This is the first error I have sold and this is the colors error I have sold here. Now our bounce color is also giving so much problem here. So we need to use here a color concept differently. Like uh, if I use the same color, which is our table color. So I'm going to copy this code from here. Like uh, this from here. Context compact. Copy that. 
I'm coming back to here and I'm going to paste this code. Then instead of layer color, I will be using here a table color so that our bounds and table color will remain same. Now the another change that we need to make is actually inside our move player method. So here we are actually using a width. So we need to also initialize here a M table width. Actually I forgot it and I make a mistake here. So after changing this, now it's time to run the application to see whether the things are actually working well because our activity and you can see here is actually showing a blue racket and a ball. So maybe we can see it inside our running environment. So here you go, our application is now running. If I click on that, but right now you can see it's actually showing the black. The reason for that, inside of that you can see here we are actually using the test property and this is actually a custom tag which doesn't hold this property. So we need to remove this all four properties. So just delete that and first we need to specify here a ID. ID and then we need to give here a pong table and after that we need to specify here a background color so that we can just see a little bit more crisp layout. Now it's time to run it to see whether this will fix our problem or not. Again installing our application. So it will take a little bit of time. Now our application is launching and now it's perfectly launched. So if I click on start game, now you can see our bracket is also visible along with that our ball. But you can see right now it's actually very close related to our layout. So we can make a little bit pairing of 2 to dp. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to specify the same code. Just copy this code from here. So before copying that, I'm going to the design tab and selecting this pong table. And from every side, I'm going to give a two, setting the constraint of 2 dp. So when I run it, because right now you can see our ball and racket is actually touching the edge of the layout, means our device screen. So we don't want that. So our application is now launched. If I click on start game, now you can see there is a white background is actually appearing. Means this will not look great. So what, how can fix this problem? We can copy this background color property from here. Like from here and just specifying the same color to our root layout. Because our surface view doesn't require, means our pong table doesn't require this color. Again running the application, this will solve the problem and our racket will just having a 2 dp from this left side and also for our opponent as well. So again our application is now running and if I click on the start game, so it's actually showing this uh, ready. So here I also need to specify the background color I think because right now it's actually not giving. So table color, again I'm running this because right now you can see still our it shows a black screen. So we need to specify this background color property. Without this our table doesn't look great. So if I again click on that and you can see now this look perfectly well. Our racket is actually placed, our player and this is our opponent. You can just reduce the size of the font of these two because right now it's actually very big. So I'm going to make it into like a 20 SP. And similarly for our player, let's make it into 20 SP. Now you will run the application, it will look fine. So that's it for this video guys. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video. In previous video, we successfully designed our activity pong screen and also our activity game screen. Now in this video, I'm going to specify the ball placement code inside our pong table class which will help us to our place the ball inside the game environment and it is used by the game third class which we are going to create inside our next video. So here at the bottom of this particular pong 2 d game class means our pong table class. So I'm going to specify the one method which is of type private and this uh, return type is going to void and then here I will be specifying the place player and it will actually place our both players which is our opponent and our user player in which we can interact. So here first I'm going to specify the amp player. So not a move player, it's actually our amp player object dot bounce and then we need to set here offsets offset to C and then we need to specify here a 2 then specify the comma and the next we need to specify here a bracket and start here a M table and height minus with M player and then we need to with the get bracket height and also we need to divide this particular statement by 2 like this that marks the completion of the code for this one and then we need to specify the other code for the opponent as well because our opponent is also a player. So again specify the bounds then dot offset 2 and then here I also need to specify the m table width and specify the then here we need to minus the table width with the m opponent dot get bracket width minus 2. Then we need to start the bracket and then we need to specify here uh, m table. So I'm going to make it into an extension so that it become easy to visible. So you can see here height which is divided by 2. So it's actually not uh, we need to divide it outside the bracket. I made here a mistake. 
Now it's actually sold. Now you can see it's actually a new top. So placement player code is actually completed. Similarly, we need to specify the code for our ball also. So it's again a private void. And then here I need to specify the place and the body of this method. And then instead of that, I'm going to specify here a m ball dot cx is equal to an m table. So it's going to m table width divided by two. Come here that m ball dot cy. And here I'm going to specify the equal to sign m table width. It's actually the height divided by two. And then here I'm going to specify the m ball dot velocity x. There is a velocity y. Sorry, first one to inside the velocity y. Then here I need to specify the m ball velocity y. M ball dot velocity y, and it's actually divided by. So first inside of that we need to divide this velocity, and then we need to multiply this value with our physics ball speed. That is the constant we have created at the top. Then terminate that value. And similarly we need to duplicate this line of code. So I'm going to duplicate that and. I need to replace y with the x. So here will be y, and then get this x. So now the code is completed for our ball placement also and the player placement also. And then we need to create a method. So here I will be creating a method which is of type private, not a private. It's actually of type public because we are going to use these two code inside of this setup table method. So here I will be creating a public method at the top, which is a void, and this is actually a setup table. This is a setup table method, and inside of that we need to call the method that is our place ball. And our place player. So that's my completion of this video. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video where we are going to create the game thread class. In this video, we are going to create the game thread class for our pong game. So let's get started with this video. Go to your package and right click, go to new, and then select a Java class. Then name your class like game thread, and simply hit OK. Now your class is created. So it's going to extend. A third class. So we are actually extending the third class, and then we need to override a very important method that is a void run method, which is a part of this third class, which is used to run the thread. So first, I'm going to create some constants that will be treated as a state of our pong game class. So let's get started with this. Now all of these constants are of type public, so that we can access it outside the classes. So I'm going to type it here psf, which is public static final, and then I need to specify here a integer. And then I need to name it as state ready. Then is equal to I'm going to specify the value to zero and simply terminate that. Then I'm going to duplicate it into many times. Here I will be changing the value one, two, three, and then four. After that, changing the variables names also. The last state is lost state, which is the lose state. So these are the states that we are actually using inside our game third class, and it will also used inside the pong table class. Because these two classes call their code each other simultaneously, and after that we need to specify a here another variable which is a boolean variable of type sensor class. Now why I am specifying this sensor? That is because when we rotate our device, we want our player to be on the left side. Suppose this is our screen, like if I just rotate it into landscape. Now all of our ball and player and our opponent is actually stack on top of each other. That is the reason the opponent is here and also in Behind this opponent racket, also we have our player racket. So we want our racket, which is a player racket, to be on the left side when we rotate our screen, and also our opponent on the right hand side. That is why we are using here a sensors class. Then we need to create another variable because we are actually extend inside the external Java class. So we need a context. So it is of type private and final, and then we need to specify here a context. And I'm going to name this as mctx, which is short for the member context variable. And after that, I need a surface holder because we are actually working with this surface holder. So here we are going to use a final. Now you can see these are actually giving us line because we need to initialize it inside the constructor. So we are going to do that because we have lot of final variables inside of this class. Again, I need to specify here a private which is final, and then here I will be specifying a pong table, and then I am going to name the variable as pong table. Then we need another variable of a private type which will be used to handle the score. That is the reason it is of type handler. And make sure you are actually using the Android OS handler, not this one. So just remove this import statement, and I'm going to press the Alt Enter. Then we want a Android OS one handler, not a Java util logging. So just double click that. So you can see now this is our Android OS import handler is now imported. This is the one that we actually need to use. Then here we need to specify the M game status handler because this will actually hold the variable names of all the status. Right now you can see. 
inside our if I actually go to activity pong if I just click on the play, our game state is actually in the ready means our game is ready to play we will change the value like running win and lose all of these states are actually handled by this particular variable and then we need a last constant that is of type final also and this one is also of type handler then terminate that now we need to initialize all of these five variables inside the constructor just leave the sensor one because we don't need a sensor one and simply hit ok looking for the user now you can see all of these variables are initialized so here is our handler and this is our handler score this is our pong table surface holder and this is our context so make sure the sequence of these all arguments are same otherwise you will face error the first is i have actually initialized the context the second parameter is our surface holder type the third is a pong table and the last two are actually our handler type which is a status handler and score handler so make sure all of these parameter lists are same otherwise you will face error when we call the constructor inside the pong table now instead of that we need to initialize uh, another variable but first we need to create it so here at the top i'm going to create another variable of boolean type so here i will be specifying a private and it is actually a boolean and m run is equal to we need to specify here a false hit a target key and then here private and then integer and m game object then another variable which need a which is of type object like uh, so here we actually used to uh, m game state instead of object and then it is of type object the variable that we want to declare object and here i will be specifying a m run lock because we are actually working in the thread so we need uh, to lock the canvas so that no other resources can actually use that canvas then here i will be initializing the m run lock variable perfect the initialization of all the variables are done inside the constructor now in this video i'm going to specify some more methods of public type so here is a public and i will specifying a void set state so then we to start the body of the state so it's going to expect a parameter of an integer parameter of state so instead of that we will actually use all of our states that we are actually declared at the top of this class also we need some more methods like uh, we need a setup new round method, setup running, sensor on method, and is between rounds. So we are going to declare all of these methods inside the next video. Also, we need to specify the code inside our void run method so that we can run our application without any problem. So that's it for this video. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video. In this video, we are going to specify the code inside our void run method. So let's get started with this video. So first, we need to remove this super callback, and here, first we need to specify a long variable. So I'm going to specify a long variable which is of m next game tick. Now what this will does it will allow us to actually use the system clock. So what I mean that it's actually used as a system clock to actually render the things in one frame per second. It allows us to draw these things frame by frame on our canvas. That is why we are actually using a long variable. And then we need to here use another variable which is of integer and another variable and we are actually using a skip ticks and then it's going to initialize a value which is of physics speed so we need to declare here at the top a physics speed variable which will actually renders the things in a 60 frame per second means our game will be rendered on the basis of this particular value so here i will be specifying a final and then it is of the integer and then i will specify a physics fps which is equal to 60 so our game will actually run on a 60 frame per second basis so to calculate each and every frame we need to use this formula which is of thousand divided by and we need to use here a physics which is our capital physics fps so this will actually gives a one single frame and on that frame we are actually going to specify the code to actually draw the things inside the canvas but before that we need to check whether our canvas is null or whether our canvas is in a ready state then we are actually calling the code to actually draw the things for the next time so that is the reason for that we need to use here a comparison so for that we are actually using a while loop because we don't want to make comparison again and again so here i will be using m run object and inside of that we are going to initialize this c which is a canvas object so first we need to specify here a canvas and c is equal to null we need to initialize the canvas to null and then after that inside the try block we are going to initialize the canvas so this actually work in this way so exception i am going to call the exception e which is the base class of the exceptions and then here i will be using e dot print stack trace okay now instead of the try catch block we are going to specify the code that will can generate a exception so first i am going to initialize the m surface holder 
which is into the canvas. So here I'm surface holder because surface will actually use inside the canvas and then we need to use a method called lock canvas to lock the things. And instead of that we need to specify the null null value and then terminate that. After that we need to make a comparison if canvas is not equal to null then we need to perform the condition because that the condition is actually true here. So we need to perform the code and when we are actually going to start a synchronized lock instead of that we need to pass the msurface holder so that the execution will only be released when the process of the surface holder is completed then we use a if statement if and then here i will be using a mgame state is actually equal to and then we need to use the state running because right now our game is in ready state and then we need to make the game into the state running then we are actually going to play the things inside the canvas then here we need to specify the mpong table pong table dot and then we need to call here a update method so this update method is not created yet so we need to create this method inside the pong table class so go to the pong table class and here at the top of the setup table and move player inside of that so after at the top of the on touch i'm going to here specify a method which is of type public date and this is going to expect a parameter of type canvas c because we have passed a c as an object which is of type canvas so we need to here specify the canvas object so canvas and then here we need to write the canvas now we are going to do the code inside this in the next videos we are going to write the code like collision detection start our ai all of this code are actually written inside this update method because when our canvas is loaded properly we need to allow our ai to move efficiently along with that the collision detection code so all of this code will be specified here and states are handled by our set state method which we have specified inside this game thread class now coming back to the code so here we have specified the code then after this block of code executed if it is a case of state running and if it is not running then we need to use a synchronized block mrun lock so we need to use a mrun lock synchronized block if the game is not paused if the game is not paused then we will actually using this statement then here we specify the mrun again if it is running means our game is running and it is not paused then we need to draw the things on the canvas again by using the object method of draw now here we are again make uh, one mistake inside the previous videos that is our draw method so draw method like in our server pong table if you see i have used here a on draw method so we need to make sure this is actually a draw method and then this is going to be type of public then also we need to change this super call back to draw so this will actually solve the error when we run our application so why i did this this is because when you click on this draw method by just simply pressing the control key and left click on that draw method it will take to the here if you not um, actually change this method if we don't change this method to on draw to draw then we actually calling the default draw method that is exists inside the java package which will create a problem because this is our custom draw method in which we specified our draw color rectangle color which is used for the bounce and also we are drawing our player and ball and opponent so that is the reason we want this particular code to be called here then the, so that our application can draw the things on our canvas that is the reason we did this because if we use the on draw method which actually call not be able to access inside it this game thread class because that's a protected because we need a public method now coming back to our game thread class inside the void run method here instead of that again we need to specify a finally block which will be executed definitely so if it is c is no equal to null if it is that the case then we need to specify the condition means after the condition is true then we need to release this surface holder and surface holder call the unlock canvas and post c so we are actually passing the canvas object so after this particular line of code with as well it actually draw the canvas on the basis of the conditions and update the necessary things now make sure you are inside the loop after this finally block is executed here now this particular block of code will execute only for the one frame we need to also calculate the ne next frames on the basis of this system speed because there are some high end systems and there are some low end systems so we need to make sure that our game is running on every system properly so we need to adjust the logic so for that we need to calculate the maximum next frame by using the codes means by using these variables that we have declared at the top of this void run method so let's get start with this so first here i will specify m next game tick because of our time so we need to calculate this sleep time we need to actually calculate the make our thread to sleep just for a 
little bit of time because there is no such a method is available which can actually perform a certain delay. Like in our Unity, we have actually used a delta time method which actually allows us to run our game in all the systems properly. Because if a high-end system will draw the 60 frames per second more quickly and a low-end system will draw the 60 frames very slow. So that is the reason we use in Unity a time dot delta time method. But here, instead of this Android Studio, we don't have this type of concepts and also we are not using any external framework. We are building this application by using the pre-built graphics packages available inside our Java. So that is the reason we need to sleep the thread for a little bit of time. Because we really need to adjust the logic so that our game runs with all the devices properly, whether it's a slow device or whether it's a high-end device or whether it's a mid-range device. So now, I specify the code, if sleep time is greater than zero, then we need to use a try-catch block because there may be chance that exception will occur. So it will actually provide an interrupted exception. Then here we need to specify and call the interrupted exception. And now we need to specify the code which we can generate the interrupted exception which is thread dot sleep. And then we need to pass here a object which is a sleep time, means the time you want to sleep. So that marks the completion of the code inside our world run method. In next videos we are going to specify the states code along with the all methods that are necessary and then we will run our application inside the physical device. So that's it for this video. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video. In this video, we are going to specify the code inside our set state method. So let's get started with this video. So here, first we need to declare a synchronized block and inside of that we need to pass the M surface holder. Then we need to start the block of this synchronized, that is this variable and then here we need to initialize this with the state which is a parameter that we pass to this method. Then we are going to use our resources class. Now this resources you are going to use inside the next videos when we are actually calculating the things like uh, state of our game. So get resources because these resources is allow us to actually update the things inside this text view. Like we need to set it to running. Also we need to set it to ready, playing, win, lose. All of these things are actually handled by the game status handler. Also with this resources we are actually updating the text. That is the reason I have actually used here a resources class. Then to specify a switch statement and instead of that we need to use a game state variable according to the value because here we need to make comparison so we are actually making a multiple comparison with the same variable so it's better to use a switch case statement. Specify the case if it is a case for state ready then we need to do what we actually need to set up a new round. So here I will be specifying a one comment because right now we are not going to call the setup new round because if we do that we will face lot of errors inside our application and application doesn't going to work. So here I will be using a setup new round method and I specify here a break statement. Again in the next we will need a second case. So this will be a case of running. If our game is running, what we want to do? We want to actually update the things. So we want to hide the status. So this will be a method that we are actually creating. The status hide. Because what do we mean by the status hide? Right now you can see the ready status because while our game is playing we need to hide this ready status because it behind of this we have a ball. Our ball is right here but when we start our game our ball will be placed at the center of the screen. So we need to hide the status. And also when we lose our game the lose text will be appeared but when we tap on the screen again means when we touch our racket again we need to hide these things. So for that we are actually creating a status method that is high status method. So we are going to create all of these methods in the next video because right now my main motive is actually to run the application and see whether we can interact with our player racket or not and our ball is moved or not because we have already specified these codes. Again coming back to the game third class and now that's it for the coding inside of this state. In our upcoming videos we are going to specify all the other states as well but right now I am going to just specify only these two states. We also need to use the other states like these are three states are which is state pause, win and lose but we are going to use in our upcoming videos and then we need to create this setup new round method. So this method is actually of type public so that we can use this method inside the next classes as well like in our other classes which is a pong table class. So setup new round. So I am here specifying a setup new round method and the body of this method and the curly braces. Also this method is also used a synchronized block so that we doesn't want to release the things and again repeating. And then we need to start the block and here we need to use the mrun class method. Here we need to specify the mrun object is equal to running. And instead of that we need to specify the object of mpong table dot and we need to call a setup table. Because setup new round will set up a new table. It makes sense. 
again we need to create another variable which is of type public also also this method is not going to return anything set running i'm going to specify the name of this method set running and then we need to specify the body of this method so set running and then here we need to specify the boolean then the running and then instead of that we need to specify again a synchronized block and then pass here a mrun block and then the body of this particular synchronized block specify here a mrun now we need to specify here a method we need to create a boolean method which is used for the sensor on variable so here sensor we need to specify a return statement and m sensors on variable just terminate that then we need to specify a public variable which is of type boolean is between rounds and instead of that we need to return like return and this will be our m game state is not equal to but is not equal to state running so these are the necessary methods that we will be using for the code now we have specify all the methods inside our game third class and our game third class is ready to use inside the pong table now you will see in previous videos i have specified a update method and this is the update method so inside of this update method we need to specify some more code that we will be use for the updating things inside the game third class so we are going to do that in the next video so thanks for watching and i will see you in the next video in this video we need to create the object of our game third class inside the pong table and initialize our game third constructor that is the constructor we have specified at the top which is a game third constructor so that we can initialize the resources from the pong table class and then use it inside our application so let's get start with this video so first we need to create some more variables at the top so the first object variable is of type game thread which is you can also refer as a game object so this is a game thread and then here i will be using a m game and then we need to create some private variable to update our player text also our opponent text which is a score and then we need to also create a text view variable which will actually update the status so here i will be using a status and then i need to create a private variable which is of type text to again and then this will actually a uh, our score player and then here i will be using another variable which is of type private then text view and then i will be using a m score which is our for the opponent so these are the variables that we are actually using now we need to initialize this game object inside this init pong table method so i have already specify a one comment just remove this comment and here we need to initialize the object so here we need to use m game so this is our m game the name of our game third class object this is our new game thread and instead of that first we need to pass the this this dot get context then comma then second is our m holder object then the third one is our pong table object so we need to pass the this and the fourth parameter is our of new handler and then we need to specify the body of this handler and then we need to specify the comma and then again we need to specify a new handler and then specify the body of this handler also then we need to terminate this particular line of statement now here i will be making some enter because inside of this handler we need to write some code and it's also in the second handler also now here inside of this we need to override a one method that is a, actually a handle message method and then we need to here type the m status we are going to update the status status and then we need to use the set visibility set visibility and inside of that we need to call a message dot get data and then dot get integer so this is our integer value and here we need to specify the key so the key i will be using here a visibility then we need to duplicate that code and instead of that we need to specify the text so this is a string method we need to change first it into string the message data get string then here we need to use this set text method now similarly we need to override this handle message method and then we need to actually initialize the code for these two variables that is score player and score opponent so let's do that so here first making some enter and override a method call handle message and then inside of that make sure the super call is present and then we need to call here a uh, m score player dot set text and then inside of that we need to use a uh, msd dot get data dot and we need to call here a uh, get string and then we need to specify the key so key i will be using here a uh, player because it's actually a player then duplicate that same with and then here we need to specify the opponent 
open it and then we need to here call the m score open it so that's marks the completion and initialization of the code for our game thread object which is a constructor inside the init punk table method now coming to the update method that we have specified here we need to specify the code that was actually used to move our ai so first we need to make comparisons if we need to here use a new we are actually using a random class and instead of that we are specifying the system system dot current time in milis dot next float next float so make sure you are outside of this block so then we need to call here a next float variable next float and then we need to make it a small and we need to specify here a value of ai probability and start the block of the code and then here we need to specify the do ai so it's actually a single statement so we can remove the block note we are actually using a compound statement and then we can do this as well then we need to call here a ball movement code also so ball dot move ball and then to pass the canvas object so that's marks the completion of the code inside the update method but we also need to specify some here more code like the collisions code so collisions code will be specified here also we need to specify the code inside this on touch method and then we need to specify the code for our all of these three overrided method which is surface created change and destroy so we are going to do this all of this stuff in the next video so that's it for this video thank you for watching see you in the next video in this video we are going to start implementing the code inside this on touch event method that will be actually used to move our player racket so let's get start with this video so first here i will be using a conditional statement if and if it is a m game object if it is not equal to m game then we need to use here a sensor on because i already told you that the sensor will actually use to keep the player on the left side and our opponent on the right side now here i need to do a multiple conditional statement so i will be using a switch case so event then i will be here using a event dot and then we need to use a get action and start the body of this switch statement the first case that i am going to specify is case which is i will be using a motion event dot action down if it is a case so we actually want to start the game but game is actually not running it's actually in the running state means in the ready state game is not running it's actually all the resources are initialized so for that we need to again use here a if condition and m game which is the object of our thread is between bounds now is between bounds is not actually accessible because i have made it to private so here you can see it's actually a private i need to make it it to public now if i just again call the is between bounds method here then you can see it's actually visible which is necessary inside the punk table so if it is actually inside the bounds means our racket is actually inside the bounds is not actually touching the bound top and bottom then we need to set the state of the game to running state so here we are actually using the set state and then we set the game thread because our states are actually present inside the game thread class and we need to use the state running so that is the reason i specified all of these states in public so that we can use all these states constant inside the punk table class right now you can see it here if it is not a case means if the game is not in the bounds then we need to use specify the else condition that will check if the touch is within the bounds of the racket then we are again using a if statement if is touch on racket so we are actually touching the racket means what actually i am saying here what actually i am doing here if we touch on the canvas like if our pong canvas and that means the touch is within the bounds so this particular block of code will be used and if it is not if we actually touch on the racket like if the user touch on the racket to move the player then we need to execute this particular code okay so that is actually i am here doing now is touch on racket is actually taking two parameter the first is a event and the second is a type of m player object so we need to move the player because the ai will move the opponent so don't pass here a opponent because we need to move our player and after that we need to set the moving to true which is a logical variable which is a boolean variable we set the value of moving to true that means we can move now and then we need to store the last touch value also so for that we have actually created a variable which is a m last touch y so if you know remember the previous videos so that is the reason you need to watch the previous videos carefully then here we need to use the get y then terminate that so this is a particular action down code for the switch case first case okay now coming to the end and here 
going to specify the break because we are actually need to specify the break because switch case statement requires a break to actually end up the one case next guys now we need to specify the another case so here coming to that and just making the indentation properly so here i am specifying the another case that is case and then we need to specify here a motion event dot action so make sure you are using the capital typing action and then we are actually using here a action move which is a constant value is equal to 2 if it is that the case then we need to moving we need to check whether moving is true which is actually we set in the previous case then here we need to specify float y is equal to we need to set it to equal and then we need to call here a event dot get y because we need to move our player means our racket in the y axis that is the reason we are actually here using y because if you look at the design we need to move the racket in the upward and downward direction which is our y axis and the horizontal one is our x axis that is the reason we are actually is here getting the y values only now we also need to calculate the difference between the previous value and the new value in which we need to move so for that i am creating a dy variable which actually used to calculate the difference then y minus and then we need to here pass the m last touch y and then we need to terminate that then we need to initialize the m last touch variable value is equal to y so we are actually calculating the difference between the first position and the new position in which our racket is actually moving after that we need to pass these values to our move layer racket method which we have created in the previous videos so this is the move layer racket first is the difference that we have calculated and the second is the m player object because we want to move our player racket so that's marks the completion of the code for the second case which is action move now we need to specify the break statement so break statement and then the last case which is the third case we need to specify inside of this switch case statement so make sure i am using the proper indentation so this is the case and then we need to specify here a motion event action up then colon and then we need to set the moving to false moving to false and then terminate that then we need to specify here a break statement now here our is switch case is ending now you can see this is the if block and it's actually ending here now this is the end of the else. so here we need to specify the another block of the code which is the else statement for this particular if if game is sensor on if it is not a sensor on case then we need to check whether the if event dot get action if it is equal to equal to motion event not action hover it actually automatically pops up action down then we need to specify the code we need to again check whether the m game thread means the game thread object is within the bounds is between bounds then again we need to execute the block of statement m game then to set the state of the game thread to running so that's marks the completion of the code inside the on touch method and the last thing we want to do is actually return a instead of on touch we need to return here a true so that's marks the completion of the code inside the on touch method also i need to specify the code inside of all of these methods that is surface created and you already know that inside of this i have already initialized the height and width which is a surface change method and i already told you these are the main method that actually creates the game means surface created surface change and surface destroyed all the other resources are used here but we need to set the resources so that we can avoid any error so that is then i set the things first like game thread ball player then um it's time to use all of this code inside this surface created because if we not do if, and if i try to actually add the code in the one long video it will become difficult to understand that is the reason i broke this particular code in a separate small video so that i can focus on the one logical part at a one time now again here i will be using a m game object we need to set the game object to set running and here we need to set the true and then after set the running then we need to start the thread so here we need to call the start method so inside the surface created we are actually our running our thread which is our game thread class and then here inside of this i have initialized the height and width also we need to initialize the m game to set up new round means the surface is change we need to call the set up new round means we need to again start a new game so for that we are actually using a set up new round method instead of that we need to when the surface is destroyed in any region then we need to again recreate the surface so for that i am using here a boolean variable and i am calling this variable as retry is equal to and we need to set it to true means retry is true and when you check whether i am game is actually running so set running is actually when to set it to false because we are actually retry the 
surface to create means again we are recreating the surface so we will here specify a while loop so while loop is actually true because we set the value to true then we need to start the block of this while loop and then we here we need to use the try catch block because then maybe a chance an exception can be occur and again we need to specify the interrupted exception and then you here call the e object and then here e dot print stack trace and instead of this try block just here we need to use a m game which is the object of our thread then we need to call here a join method to join the thread and then we need to set the retry to false the last method that we need to specify inside this pong table class at this tutorial only because in our upcoming videos we need to also specify some code here inside the update method which is a collision detection code so here at the top of the move player racket so this is our move player racket here i will be specifying a code you can specify it anywhere but i am using it here this place because i like this place so much so it's a public and then we need to call a game thread and then we need to create a object of get game so not get m it's actually the get game method and then here we need to specify the means we actually name this method as get game and this is actually going to return a m game object this method is actually called inside the pong activity that's mark the completion of all the code that we have done so far for our pong table and game thread now from next video onwards i'm going to specify means calling the game thread code inside the pong activity now inside of this pong table we need to specify some setters method that will be called inside this pong activity which will ultimately be used to update the values of these particular three text views so for that we need to create some setters that we are going to create in the next video and also we are going to call the code inside the pong activity and also we will run the application inside our physical device so thank you for watching and i will see you in the next video in previous video we completed the code for our game thread class and also inside the pong table class now in this video we are going to specify some setters method that will be used inside this pong activity so let's get start with this video now all of these setters methods are of type public so that we can call them inside the pong activity so i'm here using a public keyword void because these methods are not going to return anything so first is a set score and i will be using here a player to set the player data and then start the round bracket of this method and then start the body of this method so this method is going to accept a parameter of text view text view and then here we need to create a view instead of that we need to initialize a value which is m score player and is going to equal to view and then we need to terminate that duplicate that again and instead of score player we are going to use here a open end open end just remove this m because we don't need m and here we need to initialize the m score open end again duplicate that and at this point of time we need to use a set status remove the m here because set m status text view is also going to take on a parameter of text view and here we need to initialize the m status so that's marks the completion of the code now coming to the pong activity first here we need to create the object of the game thread class so type here a private and game thread is equal to m game thread okay and then here instead of that on create we need to initialize the ids of all of the wickets so first i'm going to create here a final variable so first here i'll be specifying a final pong table and then i will be calling this object as table i'm going to initialize it into and first i need to type cast so that we are on the safer side to get any avoid any error pong table and then call the find viewer id method and then here i need to call the pong table so i have actually not specified the id inside the activity pong so we need to specify so this is actually a pong table so i need to make it into shorter one so to follow the best naming convention of the java copy that id and coming back to the pong activity and paste here the id name terminate that after that we need to use the table object dot and then call the setter method which is a set score open end and here we need to specify the we start the brackets inside of that text view and then call the find viewer id method and then specify the id id dot and then even to specify the tv tv score open end duplicate that into two more time and instead of set score we need to code this set score player and specify the id to tv score player set score status set status method we need to call it here specify the tv and i have actually forgot it i think to set the id for the tv status so this is our tv score open end this is our tv score player and here we go we actually forgot to specify id here so it is actually tv status 
Now when I change the ID, it's not giving any error that is because the constraints are set to the parent root layout. Now coming back to the Pong activity, specify the ID here to TV status. So now the initialization of all the IDs are done. Now it's time to call the game thread object. So we call here I am game thread is equal to table dot which is the object of our table and we need to call the get game method. So finally the completion of the code is done. It's time to run the application to see whether the code is working or not. Now here you can see our application is now up and running. When I click on the start game, now this is the play screen. Now just like I said you in the couple of videos earlier, the ball is placed at the center. So we need to make this ready text view to little bit bottom of this layout. And also when I just interact with the racket, so you can see just like I did the interaction with the racket, our ball is actually moved. Also our AI racket tried to collide with the ball. But it's not able to collide it because we have not added the collision detection code. Also you can see now I can move my racket which is my player racket. So that's my the completion of this video. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video. In this video we are going to specify some getter inside this pong table class for our player and opponent. Along with that we also need to specify some more method inside this game third class. In previous videos you have seen I have actually created this command that actually a height status method. Also we need to create this height status method and along with that two or methods inside this game thread class. So let's get start with this video. So first inside the pong table I am going to create two getters for the, our player and also for our opponent. So here I will be typing a public because we need to access outside this method that is the reason I am going to create it as public. The return type of this method is actually player and then we need to here type the get m player but here I will be just deleting the m I just want to make player get player method instead of that we need to return m player which is our player object then we need to duplicate that and then here we need to specify the opponent and then also we need to return here object of the opponent then we need to create the getter for our ball so it's actually of type ball and then give this name of the method as get ball and then specify the curly brackets means the body and from here we need to return m ball and then we need to terminate that so that's mark the completion of these three methods inside the pong table class now coming back to the game thread class here we need to create these methods so let's get all of these methods one by one we already created the setup new round method in our previous videos so the first method that we are going to create is actually a set status text method which will actually update the our activity pong text views so what I mean, whenever we actually first I will need to make it into landscape. So set status text update method will actually update this text view. And we also need to create these two text view method that we have created inside the pong table. So these actually get player and get opponent will allow us to actually update the values of these two methods. Also we need to create some one more method for the score of these two. Means when our player gets win, then we need to give a one point to our player and also when our opponent gets win. Then we need to give a 1.2 opponent. For that, we need to also create a method inside the game thread class. Coming back to the game thread class again, and here first I need to specify the method. Now this method is of type private because we need to set the status through this set state method. So that is the reason we are need to here specify this method as private. So specify here a void and then type it here set status status and then we need to specify the text and then we need to start the body. Instead of that, we need to specify a string parameter string and then here we need to specify the text you can name it whatever you want as per your parameter now here I am using a message class and the reason for that is I will be explaining it in a moment obtain message so we are inside the pong table if you remember where I initialize the game thread constructor at the top of the init pong table method here so here we are actually using the handle message and we override the handle message method the, and we need to use these keys inside this game third class. So that is the reason we are actually passing the message to this particular constructor. So again pressing the enter then to pass the data in the form of key value pair we need to use the bundle. So here I will be using a bundle bundle and then we need to terminate that. And after that here we need to use the put string method because the first is the text type data. We need to pass the text and then we need to specify the text which is a parameter. Now this key and this key is should be same otherwise you will get error. Then the next thing is actually the visibility which is a type of integer. So we need to pass here a integer data 
so again i am using a b dot put so we need to use here a b dot put integer data so here i will be using a put int and then we need to specify the key so i am going to copy the key name so that i don't make any typo while typing the name of the visibility so that we, we can avoid any error then here we need to specify the view dot visible property because we are actually setting the text to visible i will be explaining when we create the high status method the meaning of these two will be become clear to you then we need to set the message to set data and then pass the bundle object and after that we need to pass the game status handler a send message and then we need to pass the message object so that's now the completion of this set status text method now our next method is actually we need to create the hide status text method so this method is also of type void and we need to specify the name is hide status so this method is not going to accept any parameter because we need to hide the status so the first couple of lines are same so i'm going to copy those lines and then i'm going to paste here then the bundle object we need to use is actually a put integer type of data because we are actually using the for the visibility so here i will be copying the key name visibility because it's always same and then we need to specify here a view dot not a value it's actually a view dot class dot invisible and then after specifying the invisible we need to use these two lines of code which are almost same so now we have completed the code of the high status now this particular method will actually does what it actually hides this particular text view which is a status text so i'm going to make it into a little bit at the bottom of the screen and also when it's actually hided when our game gets over means when our player gets make one point or maybe the opponent make one point so for that reason we again need to display the status of the game so in that situation our this method will be called if i again come back to the game thread class for that situation this method will be called to set the status again now to update the values of these two text view so i actually forgot to so i accidentally close my activity pong i need to open the activity pong layout now for we need to create a method to actually update the scores of these two text views now this method should be of type public so here i will specify the public and then it's not going to return anything and then we are going to specify the set score text so what's actually set score text this method is going to accept two parameters the first is the string type of string which is actually a player score so it's actually a player score and the second is actually of type string again which actually a opponent score so these are the two method then we need to specify some enter it to space string and then first couple of lines are same so again i'm going to copy these two lines of code which is message because we are actually sending the message now at this point of time we are going to use this particular handler code so we need to pass the data to this handler so we are actually having passed sending the message to this particular handler constructor so first is the player and the second key is the opponent so we need to pass these two data inside of this particular game thread class set score text method coming back to here then again we need to pass the put string and then we need to specify the key so the first key i will be using is a player so i'm going to copy the key so that to avoid any error so here i will be copying the player key and here i will be pasting it and then we need to specify here a parameter that is player score now you can see actually giving the error the reason that i have actually closed the bracket before specifying the parameter now the error is one but also we need to change here a m score handler instead of m game status handler that is the reason so here we need to use this score because we are actually updating the score not the status of the game and then again i need to duplicate that and here and to pass the opponent score as a parameter instead of that i need to specify the key which is the opponent key and then again come back to the game thread class and here i need to paste that and then we need to here use the these two lines of code to send the data back to the object and then again, and then i need to copy this line of code and just replace this game status handler to m score handler so that's now the completion of the code inside the game thread in the next video we need to call this method inside the init pong table so i'm going to tell you in the next video also we need to create some collision detection code for our update method if you remember that instead of our update method i have written uh, one command that is a collision code so here we will be writing the code to detect the collision along with the racket and ball and opponent racket and also with the walls which is a top wall bottom wall left wall and right wall so we need to write the collision detection code so we are going to do this all this stuff in the next video thank you for watching see you in the next video in this video we are going to specify some collision detection code inside our pong table class so let's get start with this video so first before specifying the code here we need to create some methods that will be used to detect the collisions so here at the bottom of the 
update method when our update method gets ended i have here going to specify some methods now all of these methods are of type boolean except a one method so first i am going to create some boolean methods now all of these methods are of type private because we are going to accept inside this pong table not outside the pong table class so it's of type boolean the first is actually a check collision for player so here i specify the name check collision for player so check collision player so it will actually use to check the collision between player and our ball so also we need to specify the parameters because we need to check the collision between player and our ball so it's actually a player object we need to specify here and then we need to specify the comma for our another object which is a ball and then again we need to specify here a ball so you can see it's actually giving the error because it's a boolean method so it's going to return something either in the form of true or false so i'm going to return here a uh, player dot bounce and then instead of that i need to use a method call by specifying the operator called intersects so this will actually accept a four parameter so i'm going to specify the all of the four parameters one by one so first i will be using here a ball dot cx to actually update the coordinate on the x axis and then we need to minus specify the minus ball dot get radius and then i need to duplicate that and here instead of that i will be using a y cx ball dot get radius and then you can see it's actually giving the error because i have specified the terminator we don't need to specify the terminator we need to specify here a comma and then also from here we need to specify the comma and again i'm going to duplicate that and at this point i will be here specifying the plus sign and then we need to change the y to x and again specify the comma and then the last one we don't need to specify the comma operator we specify here a y so you can see first we are actually adding the so this will be actually used to handle the collision between the player and the racket now the next method we also need to create another method to handle the collision between our top and bottom ball so i will be here specifying the private then boolean and then i need to specify here a check collision the name of the method so this is method is actually used to check the collision with top or bottom ball so here i will specify the ball not walk it's actually a ball instead of that this will also going to return something so i will be specifying a bracket then again inside of that again i'm specifying a bracket so we need to increase the size of the ball so first our ball is actually because our top and bottom ball is actually on the y axis so that is the reason we need to update the coordinate system in the y axis so again if it is smaller than equal to m ball or get radius so we do smaller than and then we need to here specify a logical or operator because our ball can hit on the top ball or at the bottom ball so that is the reason i am here using a logical or operator don't use a logical and operator because if you use that your ball will might not be work means your game will not work properly and coordinate system y then we need to increase the value of m ball by specifying the m ball the value with the get radius and then if it is greater than equal to table which is our m table height minus 1 then we need to actually terminate the whole return statement so this will actually handle the collision between our top and bottom ball then we need to create a method to actually increase or decrease the score so check collision with left ball and check collision with right ball so these are the method that we need to create so i am going to specify a private and again a boolean type then again i need to specify the name of the method so this is our check collision for the left ball this method is also not going to accept any parameter and then again i am copy that and pasting one more time and at this point of time i'm going to specify the name is as right ball instead of that we need to return because we are actually so first i'm here specifying the m ball dot x and we need to add the value so here m ball dot cx so if it is smaller than equals to m ball dot get radius then you terminate that and again we need to specify here another return statement return statement m ball dot cx not cy it's actually cx and then we need to specify the m ball radius dot get radius m ball radius if it is greater than equal to m table height minus 1 again i will be specifying the m table height minus 1 now it's time to terminate that statement so i just terminate the for statements now the last method i want to specify of type void which will actually handle the collision actually handle the collision so for that is actually type private void this will actually handle the collision between the racket and ball of both players like our opponent player and also our player in which we can interact so here i will be using a handle collision handle collision method name i specified that so first i need to specify the two parameters because we need to interact with the player and ball so player and then the second one is our ball 
then ball parameter. So first we we'll change the velocity of our ball. So on the x axis because our rackets are actually residing on the x axis because our left racket is on the left side which is the x axis because this is the x axis. The vertical one is the y axis. So that is the reason we are actually updating the velocity x. Then we need to minus and we, you need to specify this minus otherwise you will get lot of weird results. Then here we need to multiply that value so that we can increase the speed of the ball 0 0.f. Okay. That's actually marked. Then we need to check for the condition whether our ball is actually hit with the player or hit with the opponent. So here first we need to check for the player is equal to m player. If it is a player so means that our ball is actually hit with the player. In the else if condition we need to check our player is actually hit it with the m opponent. So we need to execute this block. That makes sense. Then instead of that first we need to increase the value. If it is actually increased then we need to reflect the value. So if our ball gets hit with the left player which is our player then we need to reflect back to the towards the this direction which is right direction right towards. So what I mean to say if our ball gets hit with this particular racket which is our player racket then we need to reflect the direction of the ball towards the x axis which is a positive x axis. Okay. So that is the reason we need to here specify a m player. So first we need to specify here equal sign m player and then I need to specify the bounce dot right then you to here specify the ball dot get radius. So here we are actually increasing the value towards the right direction and the similar thing we need to specify again I am copying this line of code paste it that and here I need to specify the left. Okay and then instead of that we need to specify the m opponent not player because we are actually interacting with the opponent. So I am just making some space so that it will become clearly visible to you. So we are actually here setting for the condition for the opponent then we then our opponent is actually on the right hand side. So when our ball get hit on the opponent then we need to reflect the direction of the ball to the left direction which is the negative x axis. So for that reason we need to here specify the minus sign to decrease the size of the ball means to decrease the velocity of the ball. So here we need to also specify one line of code which actually increase the speed of our racket. Now why I am increasing the speed of the racket that is because our game gets more harder means the speed of here we are actually increasing the speed of the ball and here I specify a wrong value which is 10.05 10.5 I don't need to specify 10.05 it's become very faster I need to specify here a 1.05 and then I need to multiply this value so this will increase the speed of our the opponent racket so that our opponent can hit the ball when the speed of the ball increased and for our player we don't need it because we are actually controlling the player okay guys so all the collision detection code is now completed in the next video we are going to use this all the collision detection code on the basis of the condition inside the update method because this method is actually called inside the surface of the holder inside the surface holder when our world run method executed which is a thread method which is a game loop method. So that's it for this video guys. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video. In this video we are going to use all of this collision detection code inside this update method that we have created in the previous video. So all of these methods we have specified in the previous video. But first we need to fix some issues that we actually faced when we run our application. The first is actually we have specified the wrong code inside the right wall collision detection method. So here instead of table height we need to use a m table width. And then we need to make a perfect spacing. And also here I have made a typo. This is not an error. This is just a typo. Check collision with top or bottom wall. So now everything is fine. Now it's time to use all this code inside the update method. So first I am going to delete that. Also inside the draw method we need to specify uh, one line of code to actually call this game thread method. Like uh, this method we have created. This is a sets code text method. We need to call inside this. So I am going to close this pong activity. Inside it we need to specify a one line of code. So here I will be using an game object dot set. And we need to set the score text call this method and here we need to pass the two parameter the first is the string the first is the string dot value of and then we need to here pass the m player dot score then we need to specify the comma again we need to call the string dot value of and then we need to pass here uh, m opponent dot score so this will actually update the values means give a 1.2 our player or either our opponent now coming back to the update method let's remove this comment now we are going to use the collision detection code according to the condition. So I will be using the else if statements because we need to do a multiple 
collision detection code and only one condition can be executed at a time. So here I will be using a check collisions for player and then we need to pass the M player object and a M ball object. If it is a case, we need to handle the collision properly. So handle collision method. Instead of that, we need to pass the M player and M ball. So this particular will handle the collision for our player and ball. Then to specify the else if condition, check collision. Again to call the check collisions for player because our opponent is also of type player class. So we need to specify the player. Then again we need to pass here a M ball. So not M player. We need to here pass a M opponent because we are actually going to check the collision between our opponent racket and the ball. Then again here we are using a handle collision method and pass the M opponent, comma M ball. So these are the two conditions will actually so these two will actually handle the collision between our player racket and opponent racket along with ball. Then we need to specify the else if condition again and here we need to check for the condition for the top wall and bottom wall and this one actually not going to accept a parameter so we don't need to specify any parameter. So we need to change the velocity. So here we need to change the velocity of the ball. So the top and bottom wall are actually on the y axis because it's actually residing in the vertical dimension. So here we need to minus the M ball width dot velocity y. So we are actually decreasing the value and also increasing the value simultaneously. Then we need to specify the another else if condition. And instead of that check collision with left wall. This method is also not going to accept any parameter. And here we need to specify the M game, which is our object of our third class, which is a game third class object. We need to call the set state method. And instead of the set state, we need to call the state which is a game thread dot state lose because in the left wall when our ball gets hit on the left wall, mids is actually a goal. So our player actually lose a one point. That is the reason we are actually setting the state to lose. And also you can see at the top if I will specify all the state, these are all of type public and static. That is the reason with the class name of the class, this can be called easily. Then we need to again specify here a else if condition. And then here we need to specify the check collision with right wall. And then again we need to specify the M game object. So and then we need to set the state. And then here we need to specify the state. So we need to specify the state win. So what this means if actually our ball hit on the, this racket, player racket and goes to the right wall, that means we made a one point. Means user made a one point which is our player. So we need to increase the state to win. So we need to specify the state to win and increase the one point. And after that, instead of all of this, we need to specify the return statement. And here inside of that also we need to specify the return statement so that we can again start the game. Okay guys, so that's now the completion of the code inside the update method for detecting the collision and handling the collisions. In the next video, we're going to specify the code for our state so that we can run our application inside the physical device. So thank you for watching guys. See you in the next video. In this video, we are going to use the remaining states that we have actually declared at the top of this game thread.java class. We need to use all of these states inside the set state method. So the remaining states are our left that is winning state, lose state and our pause state. But before that, we need to create the string inside our string.resource file which is our string.xml file. So let's open our string.xml file from the values directory and here we need to create some strings. So the first string that we want is actually of type so I will be using a state and just closing this tag and here we need to specify the ready and also we need to here specify the mode to display the text for the win so here I will specify a u1 and then we need to duplicate that again and here we need to specify the loss so it's a mode underscore loss and then here we need to specify u loss and after that, we need to specify another string. And here we need to specify the mode pause, pause. And then here we need to specify the text, which is a pause. Now, why I am using here ready string again? The reason is that when we hide the text inside the pong activity, then we again need to display this ready text. So for that, we need to call this text again inside the game third class here. When the status is ready, so first we need to call here a setup neuron method, and here we need to call the hide status method. Now the third case that is our is actually a case and the third case is actually a state win. So when we win a game, so we need to call here a set status method. So we need to call here a set status text method and instead of that we need to use this res variable to get the string resources. So res dot 
string parameter path. So add our string dot and then here we need to specify the mode bin. Also we need to set up a new round. So first we need to call here a pong table object dot and then we need to call the get player because we need to set the data. We need to update the score for the player because our player is actually win the game. So we need to call the score variable and just we need to increment the value of the score. Similarly we need to again call this same state just we need to change the constant name. So at this point we are actually using a state which is a loose state and at this point we need to just simply update the value for our opponent which is our get an opponent and then here we need to use the text which is mode loss. So this will actually update the score for the opponent case because our player gets lost one point and then the last state that is our post state so case and here we need to specify the state post. Make sure we are in the perfect formatting way and then we need to here specify the set status text is going to like again we need to use the rest directory rest dot get string then provide the path of the string which is mode post and finally we need to specify the break statement. Also guys when we win the state we need to again set up a new round means a one round is completed so again here we need to call the set up new round method and similarly in case of loss. When we lose the game, we again need to restart the game. So for that we need to set up a new round which will again set up the table and again place the balls and all the necessary things. So that's marks the completion of the code inside the game thread class. Now our finally the code is completed. It's time to run the application to see whether our code is working or not. So I'm going to run the application to my physical device. I already connected my physical device to my system. So now our application is installing, it's now launching and now you can see our application gets started. So if I just show you the screen, so this is the application, this is the main screen of our application. If I click on start game, now I'm not going to use the cursor because I'm going to interact with the device with my thumbs. So I'm going to just tap on the screen so you can see now the game is started and I can now interact with the ball and you can see now our rackets are interacting with the ball and reflecting the racket to the different direction. Also our top and bottom ball is also working fine. Then you can see now the game has become faster and I lose the game. So our AI is very smart. It's very easy to able to handle the game. I'm not able to, so the game is slow. Again, I got lost two points. I never made a, any strike, a score. So our AI is smart, so I made a one point. So I beat the AI for the first time. So you can see, and now I again beat the AI. And yeah, third time. So I beat the AI. And this is how the AI is actually beating. I am now leading with the one point. So yeah. Yes. Okay, so the now the game is become faster. You can see now the pong is ball is actually moving very fast. So when the game become fast, we will not able to win the game through AI because AI is speed is also increased. You can see how fast is AI is moving. You can see now okay, so I made another point. So yeah guys, that's worked very well. Our application is working fine. So thank you for watching guys. See you in the next video where we are going to announce the main screen of our application. In this video, we are going to modify our main screen of our Pong2D application. So let's get started with this video. So here you can see I have already created some assets for my application. This is the background for our play button and this is the actually the background for our logo. So I'm just going to copy these two assets and now coming back to the Android Studio again. And here inside the driver directory, I'm going to right click and paste my assets. Make sure you are actually pasting the asset inside the driver directory. Hit OK and again OK. Now you can see these are the two assets now appear inside our application. So I'm going to close this all and I'm going to go to the text tab of the code. Now here I'm going to change this text view to button. So this is now will become a button and I'm going to switch my layout to the landscape mode and after that I need to specify here a background. So instead of using background color, so here we have used a text color and now we have not used any background color. So I'm going to specify here a background and then I will be using a play button BG which is a play button background and then you can see the text is actually appearing all in capital formation. So I'm going to use a one property which is called text all caps is going to false and then I'm going to change the text to 
like uh, text all caps I'm going to specify false then I'm going to change the text to play game okay make sure you are typing it correctly now you must be asking a question that we need to change the UI inside the game activity as well but if I open the game activity we are actually using the on click attribute the start game method which will start the game now again coming back to the activity game we also need to place a logo so I'm going to just make it to little bit at the bottom of the screen and now again I want to specify the height because the height is actually at this point is very big so I'm going to specify the height to like 50 dp so 50 dp is very small I'm going to specify 80 dp height and also I'm going to reduce the text size to 25 sp so that will look great and then here you can see the height and also I'm going to specify the width to like 100 dp so 100 dp is very less so I'm going to specify here 150 dp so 150 dp is looking quite great then I'm going to the design tab of the XML code and here I will be selecting an image view and drag the image view at the center of the screen and from there I'm going to select a Pong logo and hit OK. Now we need to align this so I'm going to align it at the center of the screen then I'm going to set the constraints so set the constraints from top constraints and here from the bottom. So this is actually the logo of our application so you can see that's look great now it's time to run the application to see whether this is actually working or not. Now I have actually designed this very simple graphical asset. You can design high quality assets or you can use some of the high quality assets from some websites. It's totally up to you because the main motive of the course is to teach you how to build the Pong game instead of graphics lecture. Now our application is now running. If I just show you to the screen of my physical device. So if I click on this play, then you can see now we are inside the game mode of the application. And if I hit play, then you can see our game is start playing. Now I'm just going to back because we have already seen the working example of the application. So that's mark the completion of this video. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video. Hello and welcome to this lecture. I am your instructor for this course. So let me first introduce myself. My name is Vijay and I have more than 5 years of experience in programming languages and various other graphical softwares as well. So together in this course we are going to develop this good looking piano application that you can see in front of your screen. So this is our piano application. So now I'm going to play some notes with this application. So here you can see when I press the button it play a note. So you can see that when I press the button it actually play a note and you can see we have this horizontal scroll view that through we can scroll and different kinds of notes can be played so there are some tiny ones so that's it enroll this course and i will see you inside the course so if you have any doubt whether this course is worth it for you or not then you can watch some preview lectures to check my teaching style and also you are getting 30 day money back guarantee with no question asked if you feel unsatisfied with this course so and roll it today and create your first piano application. Welcome to this lecture. So in this lecture we are going to start the creation of our piano application means the actual coding of the piano application. So let's start this lecture by opening our Android Studio. So I have already opened my Android Studio and I am going to start with the new Android Studio project because we are going to start this application from the scratch. And I am also going to use the Android Studio version 3.1.4. So simply click on the start a new Android Studio project. So once you click on the start a new Android Studio project, a dialog box will pop up. So from here you need to define your application name. So I'm going to name my application as app piano. You can also name it as piano app but I'm going to make it a little different. Then here is your company domain. So I'm going to using my company domain as com code academy that I have named chosen according to my own thinking. And this is your package name and this is your default project location. No, this is not a default. I have changed it. So simply how you can change it by simply going into C and I have already created a directory means a folder Dino Code Academy projects and from here I am using a simply click on that so it will create a project but I am going to create another folder inside of that directory so I am going to Dino Code Academy and here I am going to create another directory and I am going to name as piano app P -R -O, project 
that's it so i'm going to again go into android studio and simply changing the directory so that my things getting so that the things be getting organized so the later on if i put the code on a github so it will make easy for me to differentiate between the different versions of the code so simply click next and here you need to specify your minimum api level so i'm going to use api level 25 that allow me to use most of the features of the android and it will cover approximately 14.2 percent of the devices you can change it to 5.1 or maybe 6.0 but i'm going to use api 25 simply because if you degrade the api then you are actually using less features and you need to do lots of coding means you need to take care of the lots of devices but i'm going to use this targeting this nougat so simply it's totally up to you which api you want to use so i'm going to simply click on next then from here you need to select your activity so i'm going to select empty activity you have a bunch of activities you can use it but for this application i'm going to use empty activity simply click on next now here, here you can see that the default name of our activity is main activity and activity main so i'm going to leave it as default and simply hit on finish and then the gradle will start the creation process of our project so wait for the gradle to finish the project creation so now you can see that our project is created so you can see that we have got two files that is activity underscore main.xml and main activity.java so you can simply click on this activity main.xml so you can see it's loading actually the designing editor of the xml file so here you can see that it's not showing the actual action bar now this is a problem in the 3.1.4 version of the android studio and also this problem exists in the 3.1.3 version of the android studio as well so how we can solve this issue because if you are familiar with the android studio you have seen that there should be an action bar by defaultly shown but right now you can't see the action bar but if you actually going to your style.xml from by expanding the first app then simply res and simply values and when you open the style.xml so here you can see that there should be a light dark action bar should be displayed but in your activity main.xml you are not going to see this thing so guys what i'm going to do i'm just going to run this application for first time in my virtual device so that you can see that there is an action bar should be displayed but right now in the design editor this the action bar is not going to display so what i'm simply going to run my application in my virtual emulator that is my android emulator so simply hit ok now virtual emulator takes little time to boot up so it's actually boots up quickly but now the build process is still running so it will take time so here you can see that the app piano the title bar and the action bar is actually displayed but design editor it is not going to display so the quick fix for this is actually you need to open your build.gradle that is module app so we hit on that and here you can see that there is a api target version is 28 compiled sdk version is 28 and here there is a app compact support version is also 28 so we need to degrade this into 27 so degrading 27 because the 28 version is not stable it has bugs and in android studio 3.1.3 this bug is still present in android 3.1.4 version also so simply click on sync now then you can see that the magic will happen and the action bar will be displayed in the activity underscore main.xml file so now the gradle build is running but for the build to finish completely so here you can see the build is finished and now it's time to and boom you can see that now the app icon is actually displayed no sorry the action bar is displayed so that's the quick fix for the api 28 because it is not stable that's why we have degraded to 27 it doesn't matter which version of because in the latest version means when the upcoming update will be come then this will this problem will be solved so right now the 3.1.4 is the latest update of the android studio that i am currently recording this course so this will be the latest version in future this version will become old as usual it's a true thing so now start the coding of our piano application so simply close these two files and main activity.java file we also need to close this one and we are going to start with the designing of the piano application now first we need to change it into landscape mode because piano application will be running in a landscape mode and the designing of the piano application is little complicated so the first couple of videos are actually totally based on the designing of the piano application so 
simply you need to first delete this text frame because we don't need it and we also need to change the root layout that is constraint layout so we need to change the root layout that is from constraint layout to relative layout which is makes it easy for us to develop this application and simply clear this because we don't need it anymore then again inside of this relative layout we need to place one horizontal scroll view so i'm again going to design editor and here i'm going to search for the horizontal scroll view so here is a, our horizontal scroll view simply drag it inside the relative view relative layout sorry and inside of this there is already a linear layout but we don't want that linear layout we want a relative layout now there should only be one child inside of this horizontal scroll view also if you are using another scroll view because if you try to put another layout like if you copy and i'm going to paste showing you then you are actually presenting means you are actually putting two childs inside the relative layout which will basically not true now you can see that the scroll view can have only one child if you try to put two child then you will get a runtime error now we know don't need this orientation vertical property to so simply delete that property and i'm going to just simply delete this one and i'm going to close the tag by this approach so simply now we're going to place the button inside this so simply i'm just hitting the preview first so yes but first we need to remove this action bar so i'm going to open style.xml file and here instead of dark action bar i'm going to use a no action bar so what it simply does it will actually remove the action bar and instead of this we need to place a button so i'm going to simply go into the design editor and here i'm going to simply select a button and place inside this and simply again switch back to the text so you can see that we have a button code so i'm just making it a formatting now you can see that the button is actually here now i'm going to modify the content of this button in such a way by using custom style so that it will be look like a button and we don't need any other software like adobe xd illustrator photoshop for creating the custom assets for the button then we can use because due to the screen density of the android because it is android screen size is around 5.0 5.5 5.2 5.3 different kinds of screen sizes so for that reason the graphical assets will become stretched and lose the quality so that's why i'm not going to use that one i'm going to use custom style along with custom drawable resources file so i'm going to do that do that but before i'm going to just simply remove this text because we don't want text in our button and i just simply switch to the style.xml file from here i'm just first write a custom style for the button so simply i open a style tag so here is our third option simply hit tab and the name of the style i'm going to give is first key style for pink key so i'm going to type first so here is no suggestion so here simply first i need to close the tag then i'm simply going to underscore now naming convention is necessary guys because if you are developing a big application then it will become difficult for you to it will debug the application if you are making random names so that's why i'm named i'm taking care of the names while developing my application so now i'm going to use the pink keys of the button that's why i named my style name as pink so first key style for pink key so i'm going to name it as p not li again is key so the this style is used for only the first and the foremost key of the piano button means the first key that will be this one will use this style that i'm right now here creating after that now instead of closing this cell close i'm just going to close it with the tag the style tag is done so i just simply want to close that tag so this is our custom style name now i'm going to give here one comment so i'm going to write this will be used for the first foremost key so this style style will be used for the foremost key of the piano so this will makes me difficult easy for me not difficult it will makes me easy for to develop the application also when i want to make some modifications because commenting is necessary it also helps us for the other developers if you put your 
project on my GitHub repository. Now simply click on item and here is the name. I'm going to use Android layout width. So here is Android. So I'm firstly typing here width. So Android layout width by default came out. So simply hit tab. And instead of Android and here is we need to close. From here I'm going to give the 45 dp. Now the dp is a density independent pixel. So I'm again going to duplicate it four to five times and I'm going to change the properties directly. So here layout width, I'm going to use height. So instead of typing, so I'm going to layout and here is a margin. Now I'm going to need to type more. So, so you can see the height is coming and here is I'm going to change again. So layout margin top and here we need to type layout underscore that is not here we need to use android background so and there is the android state listener which is the fifth property that i'm going to use so we start with a small state listener listener animator and i'm going to make it as null because we don't want any animation to that our button so i'm null now for the background we need to create a background drawable resources so we are going to create it in the next lecture margin height margin top so the margin top value i will be giving to 100 dp from the top the margin should be and the height i'm going to give is around 200 dp means how much height of our button key will be there and this will be the our style now here which gives us the XML tag has empty body so here we need to specify the drawable resource file so right now i'm giving the comment here so that when I will be developing, because commenting is necessary guys, not underscore, it's actually a hyphen. Then simply, here we need to write a command, is a custom, custom drawable file that we are going to create in our next lecture. So, it's time to actually apply these styles into this. So simply remove these two lines and simply here you do. Now you can see that the it gives us you, it gives us error. And why? Because every view has a two main properties, the height and the width. The ID is not necessary in some cases because if you are doing program connecting the programming in main activity, then ID is also necessary because this is the most important thing. You initialize the view to the variables. So, but the two main properties are actually height and width. It means how much height and the width will be view cover inside the activity. And activity is the physical component in which user interact. So, for that reason, I am going to give the height and width with the use of style so i'm going to give the style and here the style is present in our add the rate style so i'm going to add the rate and style style and the style name is around our first that's you can see the first key style for pink key for pink piano key you can name it as it is but i'm just simply limiting this so you can see that the button is actually style applied and the error is gone now I'm going to give you the background color because right now they both are actually having the same color. So I'm going to change the properties of adding some code inside the relative layout. So I'm going to first add a padding to right. So padding right. Where is padding right? Here is and 60 dp. And again I'm going to write a padding from left is around 16 dp. Now I'm again hard coding, you can create a dimensions.xml file, but for the learning purpose, you can do it by your own. I'm just making the application development faster, so that's why I'm here hard coded it. Then from bottom, I'm again going to give it 16 dp and the gravity center. So I'm going to type a gravity directly. So gravity, and I'm going to give it as top. Then I'm using a pipe symbol and combine the other property center. Then I'm going to give the background color so i'm going to give the background color first i will type hash and the 000 that is for the black and then i will be using the color because i want to give the brownish color you can use the custom texture created in photoshop and place the background but i'm going to use the color because i don't want to use a photoshop simply choose that color and you can see that this color will be look nice now you can also give the background color here but we can modify the give the background means the style to our button by using custom drawable so 
So that's all about this lecture. So in next lecture, we are going to create the custom drawable XML file to color our button to make some styles on our button so that it will be look like a piano key. So thanks for watching and I will see you in the next lecture. Thank you very much. Welcome to this lecture. So in this lecture, we are going to create the custom drawable file so that we can apply some styles on our button so that it will look like a piano key. So let's start this lecture. So switch back to your Android studio and so simply right click on your drawable directory that is under rest directory and simply hit on new and simply go to this option that is drawable resource file simply hit on and simply you will get a new dialog box so from here you need to actually select the drawable so i'm going to name it as press and non so i'm going to name you can name it whatever you want but i'm right now i'm going to create four XML files that is for drawable XML files. So I'm going to first name it as black shadow. So I'm going to name it as B black underscore shadow. So this will be our first XML file. So I'm going to simply hit OK. So you can see that the black shadow dot XML file is, will be created. Now I'm going to create three more. Again, the next one is key normal. So make sure that all the keys should be, all the letters should be in small. If you try to add capital, so it is not valid. And all you can use lowercase and 0 to 9 or underscore. So simply use key normal, which is a normal drawable resource file for our piano keys when we not press the or when we depress the key. So this will be the normal style. Normal custom drawable style for our piano key so simply hit ok i will be coding it once first i will create the all files one by one so simply the next one should be key pressed so when we press the key then what style means what changes we want to apply in our style so simply key pressed dot xml will be created now the next one is actually a little bit bigger name because i have named it as because i mainly concerned with the naming convention so i'm going to name this one as pressed and normal selector you can name it whatever you want but for my opinion it makes a sense when you pressed or also a normal selector normal selector so this will be the my final and the fourth one selector that we are going to use right now at this moment so simply first open the black shadow.xml and simply switch back to text. So and here you need to change this. So first I will just, just close the preview window and simply hit enter. And here from selector to we need to change the it to shape. So simply SHA and you can simply need to press tab. And simply here we need to add some code more. But before that, we need to add a rectangle because Rectangle means I want to say a shape, not a shape, shape, and here we will can use four options. Means from these four options we can use any one. So I'm going to use a rectangle and simply inside the shape means after when the shape tag is closed from here, you simply need to type corners. So simply type corners now without just simply open the tag and simply hit corners. And corners radius I'm going to give it as 5 dp and simply close it as a self tag means self closing of the tag then I'm the, another one I'm going to use solid and here I'm going to use the end dot color so I'll be giving the color as hashtag first I need to type hash then f f then six times four that's so four 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 and then another three times four so it will give us a little grayish color and you can see it on the preview so this will be the final output of this code now we need to also close this tag so i'm going to use a self closing of the tag so this will be our code for the back black underscore shadow.xml so now it's time to switch back to key normal.xml file and simply hit enter first i just disclose the preview window and simply key press key normal dot xml file coding so i'm going to first change this selector to layer list 
simply hit tab and you also need to change this so i'm just copying it and because the closing tag should be matching exactly with the opening tag and here what we need to do we need to specify item so instead i'm going to press item sorry enter and i'm going to add item and the item android bottom so in bottom i'm going to give the bottom as 10 dp and again i'm going to simply inside of this item i'm going to define a shape so i'm going to shape and the shape i'm going to use is this point of time rectangle and again i'm going to close the tag instead of this shape i'm going to define a corner so i'm going to use a corners not a corner it's a corner and i'm going to specify the radius as 5 dp that is same as the previous dp that i have defined in the background dot background no not background black shadow dot xml file means you can see it here this is background black shadow the 5 dp the radius will be same otherwise it will create a mismatch in the design simply close the tag then again i'm going to fill on uh, this time a solid solid and here i'm going to give the color and the color i'm going to give is this hashtag first need to specify f then 7 then again bc bc so this will be the our color code so now you can preview the output so this will be the nice pinkish color that i want to on my piano key you can change the color whatever you want like from here you can change it to aqua or whatever you want but i'm not going to use i just want to pink color because I already named my style as pinky then simply format the code extra spacing just remove the extra spacing so that the code will be look like more cleaner now it's time to close these two files that key.xml and blackshadow.xml now it's time to code the keypress.xml file so switch back to text and just close the preview and simply Again, change this selector to layer list. You hit tab and simply open another item. And here, simply type item. And here, you need to specify shape that is. And when you do this, simply close the tag. Instead, inside of this one, you can find a shape that is Android and Android shape and it should be a rectangle. Then, I will be close this and inside of this shape. I'm going to fill up one solid that is solid and the color should be I'm going to use a color is around three times means eight times zero by specifying hash zero 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 then four times zero then again four times zero it will give us a color code little blackish color code and again I'm going to define another item inside of this that is item Instead of that item, I need to define Android top. So simply select the Android top. And Android top, we need to define 10 dp. That is 10 dp. And simply close the tag. And inside of item, there is a shape. And I'm going to define the shape as rectangle. And simply close the tag. And inside of this, you need to define a corner and a solid. So I'm going to use a corner that is corners and I'm going to define the radius as 5 dp that is the previous same in the all our previous xml files that is black shadow.xml and also in key pressed so not in key pressed in key close normal.xml then self close the tag then again I'm going to use a solid pressing tab and simply open solid instead of solid I'm going to define the color and the color name that I am going is first I will type the hash, then should be F, then 7, the same as pink color, that is BC, BC. Again, I am going to self close the tag. So now you can preview your code. So this will be the our final. And you can see that there is a top bar at the first item that we want in our style. Next time to code the our final and the last, press then normal selector.xml file. So simply switch back to the text and disclose the preview button now from there uh, we will also add two items then from here we will be using a selector and instead of inside of this we are going to define an item so i'm going to use an item and here i'm going to use an android state pressed 
Android state pressed. Now it is not showing state pressed. Now here is Android state activated. So we need Android state pressed. This is one here is. So we are going to need the Android state pressed is equal to two. And just simply close the tag, not question mark. Close the tag and instead of item, I'm going to define an Android drawable. So here I am going to use Android drawable. That is Android. Now inside of this item, first we need to hear Android. Android drawable. And it is inside of the drawable, so I'm going to use an add the rate and type drawable. And here you can use key pressed. So that's why we already created the key pressed.xml file first because we want to use that inside of this pressed and normal selector. Means when we press the key and normal selector both are used in this file. That's why I named the my this fourth dot xml file name as press and normal selector. Then after that we need to apply a padding from top that is for the padding from the top the button will be so padding. First, we can type Android because if you don't type the Android, then it doesn't show the option. Android, I simply type padding, padding from top. I simply hit equal to, I simply type 10 dp. So, this will be the padding from top, will be 10 dp. Now, it's showing us error because I have made a typo here. Now it's okay because I miss my name of B because I make a spelling mistake when typing the name of the padding. Then we need to again add uh, another item. So I'm going to add item and inside of this item, we simply need to close that item and we need to define here a Android drawable again. So simply type, as we need to make room here, simply type Android drawable. And instead of key pressed, we will be used. Then instead of margin, we need to define a margin here from top. That is margin in the Android margin from top. And it's not a margin, it's a layout margin. Layout. margin top and that should be equal to 50 dp and simply hit there is no need to close the tab because we already closed the tag so you can preview your code and you can see that it will be look like this so but the problem is we want a black shadow at the bottom so how we can achieve this thing Maybe we have made some mistake in our key. Now we have already used both key pressed, key pressed, but we want here a key normal. That's why we're getting this problem. So you can see that here we will get a key normal. You can see that the black bar is not displaying. It's actually a white bar, but we want a black bar. So the problem is I need to just actually check the code. So why we are not getting the black bar? So here we have defined a solid. This will be now. I don't use a shape black. So, why I don't get a black bar? This is because I have not added another item inside of this layer. This so I need to add another item here that is item. Oh, sorry, not item, it's item. Item, and here we need to define Android drawable and drawable should be of that is drawable. That is a drawable key, that is a black shadow is there. And now you can see that our code has been showing a black bar. Now if you see the press and then you can see that will be the our final output of the code. So this will be the our coding for all the drawable XML files. Now I am going to use this drawable source file inside of this style.xml which we have custom drawable file that we 
I want to create that we left it so I'm going to use it here simply I will type add create and here I will type drawable and here you can see that press and normal selector so once you select it and if you try to see the code layout first open my layout note example you can see that the code is here so let me go into the design editor and zoom so you can see that our button will be look like a piano key so I'm also going to change the this title bar color so I'm going to switch back to colors and here I'm going to simply switch back to brownish color I'm just copying that color to this one as well so that's make a little good now the color is not matching so I'm going to copy it from here and instead of color.xml I'm going to paste it here so that will look like same in both of the now it's matching and it look nice you can use custom drawable or if you can give a black color but now right now this will be the code of this lecture okay guys so that's all about this lecture so thanks for watching and i will see you in the next lecture in which in next lecture we are going to place more buttons and also we are going to create the style for that those buttons but all buttons use the same style so the first button should be different because we want the different shade between this style so that we can make a modification so that's all about this lecture. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next lecture. Thank you. Welcome to this lecture. So in this lecture we are going to place more buttons in our Android app piano application. So switch back to your Android studio. But before placing the buttons, we are going to run this application. But we need to make some modification in our manifest file. Because if you try to run the application, it will run in the portrait mode. It will not run in the landscape mode. So we need to make some modification inside the activity. That is, this is our activity component of the Android. We need to write some code so that it will be run in a landscape mode. Simply we need to add a code here. So first I need to press enter. And I need to first go to the end of the file. And here I will write a configuration config changes. So when I config changes and here I will type orientation which is and then I will use a piping symbol and I will be hiding the keyboard because we want to hide the keyboard because we don't want to keyboard while user user pressing the keyboard of the piano means when user pressing the keys of the piano we don't want to keyboard of the android to be came out and interrupting the user and also we want the screen size. So screen size I will be writing here screen size not screen size and then we will adding the another property that is screen orientation screen orientation and I will be giving it as a landscape so that's all code for the manifest file remove the extra spacing and let's try to run the application so simply I'm going to running it on my device that running a an Android API version of 27 and my build tool version is also 27 so hit ok and you can see that it will give us an error and let me see where we so is the error is actually here so we have actually make a mistake because there is no underscore because it is not a property so simply now it's time the warning is actually gone now again try to build the application means try to run the application inside the emulator So you can see that our application is up and running so i need to switch it to landscape mode so here is our application up and running so when i click on the button you can see that the state of the button is here so i'm just holding the button so i'm just holding my click and when i release it then it will actually looks like that we are actually pressing a button so congratulations guys we have achieved the piano key result successfully and now in next lecture we are going to place more keys so that's all about this lecture. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next lecture in which we are going to place more buttons inside our activity screen. Thank you.
So welcome to this lecture. So in this lecture we are going to place more keys in our piano application means in our activity screen. But before that we need to write a custom style for our rest of the buttons means for the rest of the keys. So simply I am going to close all the packages and I am going to open my activity main.xml. Now before we placing more keys inside the button we want another custom style because if we try to add the same custom style we can't able to differentiate in the coding. So Open your style.xml file. And we need to start a style tag. So I am going to type style. And here we need to define the name of our style. So common key style for rest of pink keys. Means the rest of the piano keys which are pink. So I am going to write common. So first I will remove this suggestion. First I will need to just close this tag. Not resources. It's actually style. Then here I need to type the name of the our style that is common. Now the code is almost same, so I'm going to just simply copy the code because the height and width of the all piano keys will be same. The only difference we need to create is the drawable resource file. So I'm just going to simply leave it as, and you can simply see that this style will be used. Now I'm going to comment it for the again so that it will be easy for us to debugging and also to make modification when we see this code after long time. So simply add this style. So that's all about the coding of the custom style for the rest of the keys. Now also we need to make some changes in the activity main.xml file. The first thing here you can see that this relative layout we need to change it into match parent. So I'm going to simply Type here match parent. Then we need to specify here padding top. So padding top also we need to define 16 dp. So that's it. So that's all about this lecture. We have coded our custom style for the rest of the keys. That is common key style for the rest of the piano keys. We will be using that when we are placing more buttons. And all the buttons use the same style that is this one. So that's all about this lecture. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next lecture. Welcome to this lecture. So in this lecture we are going to code our rest of the pink piano key buttons. So let's start this lecture. So open your android studio and you can see that in previous lecture we are able to display this key. So we need to copy this code so that we can place more keys one after the another. Let me first switch back to landscape mode. So we want to place one key right after this key then another key with this so for doing that we need to code this we need to code the button so we are going to copy this code one by one because all and the style we need to use a another one that is this one style which we have created in our previous lecture here's a drawable file is needed so for that we need to copy this code because all keys uses the same drawable resource file that is this one and just switch back to again activity underscore main dot xml file and simply copy this code. So in my piano application I have implemented 60 keys. So in from that 60 keys I have 35 keys that are of pink colors and the rest of the keys are of black keys. That now those black keys we are going to call in our upcoming lecture. So for right now just simply copy this code and just paste it 33 times. But before I just want to paste it for one time because we want to change. Now change this id to p2 and you also need to specify the style so just simply quickly copy this style name here common key style for rest of the piano keys that we have implemented in our previous lecture and then simply replace with this one but right now you can see that the button is actually top of the our p1 id button so we want to add a property that is layout mar layout underscore to write off that is layout that is this one to write off now we need to specify the id for and the id should we are going to do that is this one because we need to specify the id for which the button will be displayed means we want to display this button right after this button so that's why we have given here the id layout to write off now you can see that this button is displayed but you can see that that means you made there is no gap so for creating gap we need to use a margin property so i'm going to use a margin left 
so this is the margin left and you can see that i need to specify here 2 dp or you can specify 1 dp or 3 dp whatever you like but i'm going to specify the 2 dp so you can see that it creates a little dip gap between these two buttons so it will be like like there are two separate buttons but if you don't specify the dp then it will actually combine it and just looks like a single object now we need to code 33 more keys let me first small this window so we need to code 33 more keys because right now in a piano application i have implemented 35 pink keys so we need to copy this code again for copy and paste this code 33 times more so that we are able to complete our 35 pink piano keys so i'm going to do that this thing quickly and you can simply fast forward this video so that to skip that boring stuff or you can simply watch it if you like it so i'm just pasted just for five times maybe then p2 then here is we need to change it to p3 then again you need to take care you need to display the button to the right of this button so here you need to specify p2 sorry not p3 there is p2 then here you need to specify the id p4 then again you need to specify here p3 because you want to display the id now here you need to specify p4 i'm just making mistakes while typing the keyboard keys then here into specify p5 and then here into specify p4 so you can see that in your preview window you can see the buttons are now now our piano is getting a shape means there are now five buttons now again i need to specify here p6 and then here into specify p5 so right now you can see that we have able to implement six keys then now it's time to copy this code again for 29 times copy and paste it 29 times so i'm going to count with every so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 21 22 23 24 25 26 27 28 29 now there are lots of red lines waiting for us to fix so simply first thing what you need to do simply click on it and press ctrl alt l to format the code it quickly format the code for us now it's time to scroll up to change the ids of the buttons id and also the to write of property simply just make it a little bigger i'm just making it two side and here we have id p6 and we want to display the this button right after button 5 so simply here we need to change it to p7 and here you need to change it to p6 then here you need to change it to p8 and here you need to change it to p7 then from here there is no shortcut way for doing this you need to hard code it with patience if you make any mistake then one of your key may be not work properly or it actually disturbs the ui then here is from p5 to you need to specify p8 and you can see that with every changing in the properties there is the one key is added right after the other and here you need to specify 10 that is 10th key and after you need to specify 9 and then here you need to specify 11 which is the 11th key and after we need to specify this key with the 10th then i'm going to do this quickly for you you now think what i'm going to do so i'm doing this thing quickly and just fast forwarding it So we have done our all the coding of the key so you can see that I have placed all the keys so it's time to run the application to see that whether I am able to display the all 35 keys of the piano application or not so simply try to run the application so I'm going to run the application in my virtual emulator so this is my EVD pixel simply hit ok so here you can see that our application is up and running so we are able to display our all 35 keys so congratulations guys our application is now getting in a shape and you are learning in a very good grasp so that's all about this lecture guys thanks for watching and i will see you in the next lecture thank you so welcome to this lecture so in this lecture we are going to place more keys in our piano application means in our activity screen but before that we need to write a custom style for our rest of the buttons means for the rest of the keys so simply i'm going to close all the packages and i'm going to open my activity main.xml 
Now before we placing more keys inside the button, we want another custom style. Because if you try to add the same custom style, we can't able to differentiate in the coding. So open your style.xml file. And we need to start a style tag. So I'm going to type style. And here we need to define the name of our style. So common key style for rest of pink keys means the rest of the piano keys which are pink. So I'm going to write common. So first I will remove this suggestion. First I will need to just close this tag. Not resources. It's actually style. Then here I will need to type the name of the our style that is common. Now the code is almost same, so I'm going to just simply copy the code because the height and width of the all piano keys will be same. The only difference we need to create is the drawable resource file. So I'm just going to simply leave it as and you can simply see that this style will be used. Now I'm going to comment it for the again so that it will be easy for us to debugging and also to make modification when we see this code after long time. So simply add this style. So that's all about the coding of the custom style for the rest of the keys. Now also we need to make some changes in the activity main.xml file. The first thing here you can see that this regularly layout we need to change it into match parent. So I'm going to simply type here match parent. Then we need to specify here padding top. So padding top also we need to define 16 dp so that's it so that's all about this lecture we have coded our custom style for the rest of the keys that is common key style for the rest of the piano keys we'll be using that when we placing more buttons and all the button use the same style that is this one so that's all about this lecture thanks for watching and i will see in the next lecture Welcome to this lecture. So in this lecture we are going to place some text views that will be used as a label for our piano keys. So switch back to our Android studio and first we need to add our text view. So simply type text view, text view and match parent match parent. But for now we are going to use a style not a match parent. Simply I am just removing this code and I will type in style and the style that we have created is a style for key text. So I'm going to copy the name of the style. Now this is this will be the wrong one. I'm going to copy the style that is style for text view key text three instead of first key style for pink key and I'm going to paste it. But right now we are not able to see the style. So we need to add some code first. So first I will quickly specify the ID that is TC3 that is text of C3 means this C3 will be the text of the piano key. So I also need a text property and we will need to type here C3. Not C has C3. You can see that this C3 is up here. But we also need to specify some more code like layout to left. So I'm going to use a layout to left of layout to left of this is and we are going to specify a piano key 2 because we want to place this key just left of the second key so this is our piano key 2 and we are going to place this level just left of the this so you can see just let me zoom it so what this property actually does what it actually place the this label just left of the second key so now we are again we need to do a one a, now we need to add one more property that is state listener, state list animator, and we are going to make it as null. Then the last property that we are going to use is text is selectable. So we are going to make the text selectable false. So this is your text is selectable property that we are going to set the false so that if your user is hold the finger on the text view for longer time. Then there is a small copy and paste cursor will be appear. So to avoid that copy and paste cursor, we will be making the, making the text selectable as false. So all pretty well done. So you can see there the key is displayed. So similarly, we need to add six more text views. 
so that will be act as a label for the another six keys of piano so simply i'm going to copy and paste it for six times then i'm going to simply change the id it is tc3 to td3 and then here we need to also change the alphabet to d2 it will be a d3 then it will be a e3 and also the id is e3 then i'm going to specify here f3 and also the text should be f3 then again we need to specify here f3 to g3 not capital one just simply small g3 then here should be the capital g then a then capital a3 now one is then now i need a one text u4 b3 then b3 and here is b3 so all are done but you can see that all are actually stacked on top of each other this is because we have not specified the two left of property so this is our first label so this is our second label so here we need to make it change as three you can see that the d3 is totally displayed here similarly for the this one we need to specify here p4 and then similarly for this one we need to specify p5 then for this one we need to specify p6 and for this one we need to specify p7 not p6 is p7 and then for this one we need to specify p8 so you can see that now it's our piano keys have a label that is c3 d3 e3 f3 g3 a3 and b3 so try to run the application so that you can see it in our emulator as well so simply hit ok so here you can see that our application has been running so you can see that all labels are displayed correctly so that's all about this lecture guys thanks for watching and i will see you in the next lecture in next lecture we are going to code our rest of the text keys and also going to code the rest of the styles that will be used for those text views which will we act as a label for our rest of the pink piano keys so thanks for watching and i will see you in the next lecture thank you welcome to this lecture so in this lecture we are going to code our remaining styles that will be used by the text view as a label so simply switch back to android studio and simply click on the style.xml file and what i have to do is simply copy this code and simply copy it and below this simply enter and paste it then simply change this key text to 4 that would be used the so that simple style will be used for all the keys that is have c4 d4 up to b4 and similarly again going here and simply control v and change it to key text 5 then again simply here and press control v and change it to 6 make it little closure and hit enter so that it will be documented then again guys simply just below it simply control v make it little recap and simply 7 so this is all the styles we have implemented that will be used for the text view now switch back to activity main to taxman and here we need to specify the code for the remaining text views that is will be used as a label which will be that they will be put in from here now from here we need to start it from c4 to up to b4 so we can't see it in our editor like this design way because it can't be scrolled but once we actually able to see the application when we run the application then we will be able to see so simply again i'm going to simply copy this code and paste one and simply i'm going to change the id to tb4 and from there I am going to specify it from P8 to P9 and you can see that it shows a B3 but we don't want a B3 because we want a C4 here we need to specify for C because the capital letter started from C and C then here is the ID we have changed the place now the text style we are going to use 4 now this is a blue but we want to create a differentiate between them so creating a differentiate this will be a 4 not dollar but for creating a differentiate between those 7 keys we need to change the make some modification in our style the only modification that we want to make is the color 
So simply I'm going to here is a color. So I'm simply click on this. A dialog will pop up. From here you can specify any color of your choice. So I'm going to choose a little dark purple. Simply hit OK, and I'm going to change the colors of these styles as well. So I'm just going to this part and just not I don't want alpha. Again, OK, and here I'm going to use a little dark black color. Black color, and here I'm going to use a green, a dark green. Not too dark, just a simple dark green. So switch back to activity window text. And now you can see that it is different than all the other seven keys. So simply copy this code and paste it into six more times. So the things can be getting easy with this copy and paste. And simply control Alt and L, it will format the code for us. And from here you need to change the ID. So from TB3, which is used for the B3, then this is the right. We don't want to change this one. So from here, we need to change into D3. Simply D4, and here we need to specify D4. Then we need to specify this key just to the to the left of B piano key 10. And similarly, we need to change this one to E4, and this one should be of E4. And then we need to change the key to 11. Then it will be displayed to the just one after the other. Then we need to change this one to F. And then change the capital F. And here you need to specify 1, 2. Then simply you need to specify here G. And then capital G4. And then the I change the ID to left property to 1, 3. Now from there you can't see the onwards new screens. So make sure you are doing it correctly in order by seeing this order. So after G there is a A. So we need to specify here A4 and simply hit A4 which is a capital 4. Capital A4. And A4 will be displayed but we can't see it because the screen and tire screen is just we have only this screen. We can't scroll to the right of this screen. Means we can't scroll to beyond of this screen. So simply the next one is the B. And here specify B4. Also you need to take care. You should specify the ID. So here is 1, 4. Then there is a 1, 5. So try to run this application to see whether we have able to implement the other 7 keys properly or not. So I am going to run it in my emulator again. So you can see that I am able to display the set of C4, D4, E4, F4, G4 and A4 as well. So total are 7. So now we are able to label our 14 keys successfully. So now it's time to do the rest one as well. That is our B5, B6 and B7. So for that we need to simply copy this code again and simply paste it. And we need to change the ID to D C5. And here we need to specify capital C5. And we need to place this key just to the left of Okay, not 1116, just 16 by seeing this number. Then we need to copy this code 6 more times. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Then simply press Ctrl, Alt and L. Then Android Studio format the code for us. And scroll to top, not to top. Then this is the right one. We don't want to change this again. So TC5 we need it. And again we need a D5. So simply change it to D5. Then here you need to specify D5 as well. And we want to display this key just to the left of 17th piano key, not 117. Guys, I just make too many mistakes. Sorry for that. So now here you need to specify after we have an E. So I'm going to change it to E. You can do it by your own if you want to just 
make it you can forward this repetitive task because you know very well how to do that and just changing it to, to e80 and then here you need to specify e t e5 then there is a t f5 there's an f5 and here you need to specify 19 and here you need to specify 20 and id should be of g5 so there is no shortcut you need to hard code this thing because if you find a shortcut then probably tell me tell me also because there is no shortcut you need to do this by your own self by hard code with some time then a5 then here you need to specify a capital 5 then we want to display this key just after the 21th key means just to the left of 21th key then after the last one is b which is b5 and we want to change it to capital b5 then then we need to display this key just off to the left of piano 20th key 22nd key so simply try to run the application once more so you can see that our application is up and running the only thing is missing there is a c5 d5 e5 f5 g5 a5 and b5 the style is same because we have not changed the style so I'm going to quickly make it a 5 and there's a 5 and there's another 5 and then 5 and again I'm trying to just make some changes so you can see that now c5 d5 and up to a b5 now displayed with on its style that is style for text to key text file now again we need to do the same thing for our for our c6 to c c6 to b6 then again we need to apply the same thing for c7 to b7 so now i'm going to copy this code again copy and i'm going to paste it then here we need to specify t c 6 and also we need to change this one which is a sixth style we are going to use and it should be changed to c6 then we want to display this key just to the left of piano key 23 and again we need to copy this code six more times simply hit and simply type control v 1 2 3 4 5 6 now simply press ctrl alt and press l it will format the code for us again then we don't want to change this one so t6 then there is another one which is t6 and we want to display this key just to the left of 24th piano key and here we want to specify d6 then for after that we need to specify e6 and then here we want to specify e6 and just we need to display this key just after the piano key of 25th then this is a 26th key and here to specify t e and then f6 and we want to change the text to which should be f6 then here to specify this is a g which is next then there is a g6 and we want to display this key just after the just to the left of 27th piano key and here is 28th then we need to change it to A and then we need to specify capital A6 then we need to change to this, this key just to the left of 29th piano key and this should be a for B and it should be capital B6 so I'm again running the application to my virtual emulator to see that changes I have made are done correctly or not So you can see that our application is up and running. So you can see that from C6 to B6, we are able to display the labels on our piano keys. Now the only 7 keys are left, that is from C7 to B7. So let me quickly do that, then we will try to run the application to see whether we have done or wrong or right. So simply I am going to copy this code again. The copy and paste will make our life easy guys. If the copy and paste are not available in Android Studio, 
then it will be difficult to hard code the whole code. So simply change it to C7. And also here change the 7. And again I want to specify here C7. And simply copy this code and paste it for the 6 times. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. And simply control alt and L. Format the code and simply scroll and here we need to change it to B7 and simply this one should be the capital B and we want to display this key just to the left of piano key 30 and we want to display we would change the ID to P TB7 TC is uh, it should be T D7 no it is not B7 I have made a mistake here it is a T7 let me first check whether in the top I have made a mistake or not. Now it's D6, it's true, it's right, I have made here a mistake. That is B6, C7, D7, now it's time to E7. And change it to do 31, because we want to display this key just to the left of 31th key of piano. And here after B7, here to specify D7. And here to specify E7 and here to specify F7 and here is also F and here to specify 32 and here to specify 33 F7 then there is a G7 G7 then you need to specify here A7 capital A7 and we want to display this key just to the left of 34th key then for the last key which is our B7 so simply change it to B7 and here we need to specify capital B then for last one we need to change the layout to not to left to off we need to change it to to right off to right off 34th key so that is 34th so I'm trying to run the application in a virtual emulator to see the changes so you can see that we are successfully able to display all of our keys in a piano application so that's all about this lecture guys thanks for watching and I will see you in the next lecture thank you so welcome to this lecture. So in this lecture we are going to code our custom style for our black piano keys. So the total number of black piano keys are 25 in our piano application. But for this lecture I am going to only code the style code of the piano that will be used by the black piano keys. So let's start this lecture and switch back to your Android studio. So simply open style.xml file and here we need to write a custom style for our black piano key so simply type style then the style type and here you need to type black piano key style black piano key style then simply close the tag then inside of this you need to open an item then you need to specify the name the first is the layout height so i'm going to simply type the height then I'm specifying the height as 30 dp. After that, I'm again going to type the item tag. Then I'm going to specify the width. Not width, it's just width, layout width. Closing the tag, and inside of the width, I'm going to specify the width as 30 dp. And the height, I'm going to specify as 110 dp. So 110 dp is our height. and Width is around 30 dp. Then again, I need to go for the item tag, and from there, I'm going to specify layout margin, layout margin top. Then closing the tag, and here the margin should be 100 dp. So simply press tab, then enter background. 
So I'm going to create a custom background drawable we needed for this one. So item name and I'm going to specify the drawable. No, no drawable, it's a background, sorry. It's a background and just simply need to close the tag. Now we will going to create a custom drawable file for that black key. For that black piano key style. But for right now I'm just completing the code first. Then we need to specify the layout margin left. The layout. Then layout margin left and for that we need to specify for minus 14 dp so first we need to close the tag and this will have for minus 14 dp so here we need to specify a custom drawable file so i'm going to document it by writing a one comment so that it will remember remind us that we need to specify a custom drawable here that we can see so we we'll write here custom So we need to create this custom drawable file. So let's do it. And that custom drawable file uses two more drawable files. So simply click on this project tab and just simply just expanding the just simply click on this app, then res, then simply click on this right click of this rest directory, note and res, just simply click on this drawable folder, new and drawable resource file. Simply near right black underscore piano key selector black piano key selector simply hit ok then we need two more simply right click on it then new we simply click on job resource file and here we need to type normal black key style normal black key simply type normal black key then simply hit ok then after that simply again when you take the third one simply click on drawable resource file and here you need to write pressed pressed black key simply hit ok so simply switch back to the normal one so I'm going to the normal one first and this is this is back to text then simply preview window close the preview window then here you need to type layer list simply type layer list and just hit enter instead of layer list you need to specify one item simply type item and here to specify the android bottom not android bottom first we need to specify android drawable and that should be of shadow so that shadow we are going to that should be of drawable source file so we are again need another one that is we need one more that is of shadow so i'm going to click on this and i'm going to type it shadow shadow for black key black piano or plus it's a black piano key simply hit ok now for that here we need to just simply leave it as empty so i will be coding it once i will record the first normal black key dot xml file Simply now it's time to open the another another tag of item. Simply specify item and here to specify Android bottom and bottom should be of 10 dp. Then simply close the tag. Inside of item you need to specify shape. Shape, then here you need to specify the shape should be rectangle. Then simply close the tag. Then instead of shape, we need to specify corners. The corners should be Android radius, and I'm going to give the radius as 5 dp. Then simply self close the tag, and then there is a solid is necessary. Then simply color of solid, and I'm going to give the color as hashtag f, then 6 times 0, 0. 
and simply self close the tag so that's my so that's complete the code of our normal black.xml file means normal black key.xml file now it's time to switch back to shadow that is the way shadow for black piano key.xml simply hit enter here and we need to change the selector to shape so i'm going to type it shape so it is not changing here that's it giving us an error so simply copy it and paste it here then from there you need to specify you can simply click here and you need to specify android shape not some android it's android shape and to specify rectangle then instead of this you need to specify our corners so simply type corners and android radius should be of 5 dp then self close the tag by pressing backslash by pressing forward slash sorry then simply you need to type solid and simply type the color and here i'm going to specify the color hashtag ff then six times four 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 so that gives us a little darkish gray color simply close the tag then we need to call this drawable source file here inside of this item so simply switch back to our normal .xml and you need to type add the rate drawable simply type drawable and here is black shadow now the shadow for black piano key now you can preview it and see that this is our button and we all need uh, this black this da little darkish gray bar at the bottom of our this style that we have created with the use of drawable sources file and you can also preview this is our shadow that will look like now come back to press black key dot xml file switch back to text view and simply and simply hit enter and simply open our item tag item and you specify and close the item tag inside of the item specify a shape that is shape and type the end shape as rectangle then simply self close then close the tag not self close simply close the tag and instead of you need to specify a one solid a solid and the color of the solid should be six times zero so simply hashtag and eight times zero sorry four and one two three four now is actually we have left one more then simply self close the tag so right now we can count it that we have i divided eight so this is four These are four guys, there are so many zeros and if I only to remove one. Okay, so that's actually done. Now another we need to then here we need to specify another item, but before that we need to create another file that is a value resource file. So simply right click on this values folder and click on new and click on this value resource file. And here we need to type diamond that is D I M N dimension dot demon. Now oh, demon diamond it's actually a dimension file. So simply expand this source tag and here to specify one tag so that is of daemon di that is daemon and is the name required so I am going to give the layer padding and simply closing the tag so here to specify 10 dp so that's it for this one this resource file now it's time to switch back to our first black key dot xml and open the item tag again item and here to specify android top simply type first android not plus it's our android android top equals to and here to specify add the rate daemon layer padding and simply close the tag now instead of the item tag you need to specify one shape tag that is shape android shape and you need to specify rectangle then you need to close the tag instead of the shape we need to specify instead of this we need to specify one corners simply type corner and android radius then it's a 5 dp and here we need to specify solid simply type corner and solid then color and here it should be specify hashtag ff and 0 0 0 0 0 0 and simply type so here it should be 6 zeros 
and show me one way you need to remove. So we will get uh, this color. So that's all about the coding of all the drawable resource file. So that's all about this lecture. In next lecture, we are going to use this custom style that we have created. We will be using in our buttons and we are going to specify 25 buttons. So that's all about this lecture. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next lecture. Thank you. So welcome to this lecture. So in this lecture, we are going to code our black piano keys. But before that, we need to code our one more drawable resource file that we have left in our previous lecture. So switch back to Android Studio and simply open the black piano key selector file because we have actually forgot these two code. So simply click on this text and here we need to specify some code. So first you need to uh, open an item tag and inside of the item you need to specify Android state pressed equal to true. And after that we need to specify Android drawable resource file. So drawable and for there we will be use key pressed. For key pressed Yes, we need to specify black piano key press black key so this will be the selector that we created for the black piano key then we need to specify padding top first we need to type android and android and padding top simply hit ok and here we need to specify 10 sp after that we need to close the item tag then after closing the item tag, you need to open one more item tag. Simply type item and here to specify Android drawable. And for there he will be use black normal. So key normal key press is for white, our pink piano keys. So here is our normal black key. Simply hit tab and simply type under attribute that is Android layout margin top. So here we need to type layout. So first we need to type Android. Then when you type layout margin top equal to and we need to specify margin top value to 50 dp. Then we need to close the item tag. So that's all about the black piano key selector.xml file code. So in next lecture we are going to use this slide on our black piano key buttons. So that's all about this lecture. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next lecture. Thank you. Welcome to this lecture. So in this lecture we are going to code our black piano key buttons. And also we are going to use the custom styles that we have created in our previous two lectures. So switch back to an Android studio and open your activity main.xml file and also style.xml file. Then here we need to specify our custom background drawable selector. So that is this one black piano key selector. So simply here type at the rate and Drawable and this is our first one black piano key selector. Then close the style.xml file. And here you need to specify a button code. So here you need to specify button and instead of using layout width and height directly, I am going to use a style tag that we have done in our previous buttons of piano that is of pink color. Then you need to specify the style that is black piano key style. Now you can see that in the preview window. Our button is display with the black, but it is very left to the screen. So how can we make it to the here, which is just mid of these two buttons. So we can do this with the property that we have used so far. That is layout underscore to write off. So first we need to specify the ID B1. Then we need to specify the property that is layout underscore to write so simple so type so type layout underscore to write off then here we need to specify the button id for which it will be displayed to the left so that will be the first key of the piano and you can see that the button is displayed in between of c3 and d3 key so for this approach we need to do and place more buttons and there are total number of 25 black piano key buttons but with the pair of two then there is a gap then three buttons then there is a gap then two buttons then there is a gap then three buttons so i'm going to do that but first we will run this so click on the run button then select your virtual emulator or whatever device you have so you can see that we are able to display our black piano key button as well 
but you can see that it's actually not displaying too well when I'm pressing that it is actually disappearing. So we need to fix and I'm going to fix this bug in the next lecture. So that's all about this lecture guys and I'm going to fix the bug as well in the next lecture and also we will be implementing our rest of the 24 keys. That's all about this lecture. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next lecture. Welcome to this lecture. So in this lecture we are going to code our all the black piano key buttons. But before that we need to fix the bug. So switch back to Android Studio. The bug is when we press this button that is a black key of piano then it is actually disappearing. But we want the same result just like when we click on these buttons it is actually bouncing. So when but when we click on this black button it is actually disappearing. So to fix that bug we need to open our Drawable resource file that is black underscore piano selector dot drawable resource file. And there is another one that is a press black underscore black key XML file. So the problem is here. Let me first open the normal black key XML file as well. So here we have used a layer list. And but in our press black key dot XML file, we don't use the means I don't use the layer list. So for that, I just simply need to copy this layer list from here and simply replace it with that one. Then try to run the application again to see whether the fix work or not. So now our application is up and running. So if I try to, then you can see that I am able to achieve the again bounce effect. Just like in those keys. So that is how to fix that bug. Now coming to the main coding point, we need to code this button. So again I am copying this button code, Control C and I am going to paste it here. I will change the ID to B2 and here we need to display this button right after the second white piano key button. So you can see that here. But for the third key, we want to display the third key from here because in piano if you see that there is a black key there is a gap between every two black keys of piano then there is a three keys then there is a one gap so i'm going to implement the same so again we need to copy this code and paste it but at this point of time i'm just first change the id but at this point instead of piano three key i'm going to use p4 means so that there is a gap between the buttons. Then again, then again I am going to copy the code. You simply click on here. And again I am going to copy the code. And type it, paste it two more times. Then here we need to change the ID to B4. Then here to specify the piano key as P5 because we want to display this key right after the pink piano key 5. And here to specify the ID as B5 and here is B6. So you can see that our application is looks like a piano. The keyboard of the piano is getting its in shape. So try to run the application later to see whether it's working correctly or not. So you can see that it's working fine. Now similarly we need to place two more keys here. Then there's a gap. Then three keys. One is here. And one is here. And one is here. So right now we are able to implement the five keys. Then there is 20 keys are left now. So I'm going to code, copy this code. I'm going to implement in a pair of five five. So that it will become easy for me to debug. And also don't try to not make any mistake so copy and paste it so i'm going to paste it four times more two three four and five so simply press ctrl alt and l so it will format the code for us then here is b5 then we need to specify here b6 then i want to display the key right after the b7 not P7, that is P8, because I want a gap. Then there is P9. 
and also need to change the ID as P7. Then here I need to specify the ID as P8. And I want to display the key right after the touch piano key. Now I want to display two keys, then there is three key. So instead of 10, I want to display it right after the 11. And here I need to specify 12. And here I need to specify 13. Then here B8 and there is a ID number B9. And there is ID number 110. So now it's time to run the application to see that I have done a right thing or not. So here our application is up and running. So you can see there are two keys, then there is a three, then there is a two, then there is a three. So now we have left with our 15 keys more. So let's do it again. So copy the code and again I am going to paste it 5 times more. Simply press Ctrl V 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Then hit Ctrl plus Alt and L. Then it will format the code for us. There is a B10 and here is a B11. And I want to display this code right after the 15th key. Then here I want to display this key right after 16th piano pink key and there is 17th. Then I need to change the IDs. This one which is of 12th. This is 13th. This is 14th. And this is 15th. And after 17, there is 13, 14, 15, 16, and there is no 17. I need to make a one gap. So it will be 18. Then there is 19. Wait a minute. Did I make, did I make any mistake? For button, there is a 13. And for I leave the 14, there is a 15, 16, then 18. And there is I need to specify 19. And here I need to specify 20. So let me first run the application because right now in the preview window I'm not able to see because I can't scroll it. So if I made any mistake it will be displayed only when I run the application on the emulator. So let's run the application again. Hit OK. So you can see that. So you can see that our application is up and running. So I'm able to display two keys then there is three. So I'm doing a correct one. That's why I'm taking the take care of the 5-5 five five pairs because it make easy so that I will not make any mistake. Now it's time only left 10 keys that is 10 black piano keys. So again copy this code and paste it 5 times more. Ctrl V 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and simply press Ctrl Alt and press L to format the code. And again go to the top B15, let's leave this one. There is a button 16. And here, instead of 21, we need to specify 22. And then 23. And here, we leave the 24. We need to specify 25. Then 26. Then 27. Then change the IDs. Let's say B15, B16. B17, that is black button key 17, then there is 18, and then need to specify 19. After that, there is a 20. Then again, I am going to run the application to see whether I have done a wrong or right. So you can see that our application is again up and running. So you can see there are 2, then 3, now it's only left 5 more keys. So minimize it and again I'm going to copy this code and I'm going to paste it 5 times more 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 then again hit Ctrl Alt L to format the code and here is our 20 
then leave that one is a 21 now 22 it's a 21 then instead of 27 28 I'm going to give 29 then here we need to specify 30 then leave the 31 because we want a gap so it will start with 32 then 33 then I need to specify here 34 not 24 it's 34 then need to change the ID one by one so this is B21 so here is B22 not triple 2 is 22 then 23 then 24 then there is 25 so we have done all our black keys coding so it's time to run the application again to see whether I have done a right or wrong so it's 3 2 3 so you can see that we have finally created our full final designing of our XML of the piano keys so congratulations guys you made a good progress with this I hope all this lecture are very helpful to you guys. So, the, in next lecture, we are going to connect these all the codes, these are IDs, to our activity main dot Java file. So, that's all about this lecture, guys. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next lecture. Thank you. Welcome to this lecture. So, in this lecture, we are going to connect our all the views inside the main activity. So, let's start this lecture by simply opening the Android Studio. So, first we need to click on this and I am just simply expand it to find out our, now I am just simply close all these values file and I am going to click on this java directory then it's the first package and simply click on this main activity. We need to create bunch of variables. So, let's start doing one by one. So, we are going to create a private variable and I am going to, we have used a horizontal scroll view. So this is our horizontal scroll view and I am going to name it as scroll view, scroll view and semicolon. Then we need to initialize this scroll view inside the onCreate method. So I am going to write a one comment and we will writing here a one statement initialize, initialize the scroll view then simply type scroll view equals to find view id and we have r dot id dot so we have not specified an id to scroll view so i'm going to specify quickly the id of for the scroll view so this is our scroll view i'm going to specify id id and i'm going to type it here scroll view and simply copy this id Inside the main activity, I am going to paste the id. Then from here, semicolon. So we need to initialize all of our views inside the onCreate method because the onCreate method is the first method when you launch your activity screen. Means when activity is in a creating phase, then onCreate method is executed first. There are a bunch of methods of activity lifecycle that are come under the category of activity lifecycle like on resume, on start. But for better and the better coding. We need to always initialize our views inside the onCreate method. Now it's time to initialize all these buttons one by one. Means we need to initialize all these buttons code inside our main activity. But for doing that, we need to create variables. So let's start doing one by one. Simply type private and here you need to write button. It's a capital button. And this is the fourth one button. And I'm going to name it as button. And it will be of C3 because we have C3 and semicolon. Then again, I'm going to specify a button. Let's say private button. Then again, I'm going to write a button, and it will be of button C3. That is black. And what will be this black means? I'm going to click on this activity main dot XML, and the preview window simply I just make it into landscape. And here you can say, so this is our C3 black button. 
and this is our D3 lag button. Now E3 in between the intersection of E3 and F3 there is no button, but I'm going to name it as C3 D3. This will simply zoom it a little bit. I'm going to treating this button black button as a C3 lag button, and this one be is of D3 lag button, so that things will become easy for us to develop. And also remember the names of the button because there are a bunch of buttons and it creates a lot of confusion because what is black button because in black button there is no label so that's why i am denoting the, it with the c3 black so again i'm going to main activity and it's time to type other buttons as well so button button and again there's a button and this is a now in this time we have d3 semicolon Similarly, when you type button private and there is button and then when you type another type button and this time we have a D3 not get button it's simply type button and here we to specify D3 black then there is a button called E3 so button button and then under there is a button and this will be of e3 notice for e3 there is no black button key because in preview we have already seen there is no black button key so that's why for e3 we have no black button but for f3 and g3 and a3 we have simply type another button button then there is another button and in this time there is a e3 and after e3 we have e3 then we have f3 and then we have g3 so here i am typing a capital f3 and i am going to button so you need to learn hard code this thing guys because there is no shortcut for that because we have already bunch of keys in our piano application and again type private private button button and this time we have g3 semicolon you can quickly type it for button then we have g3 and then we have black Again, I'm going to type private button. Then another we have button, and this time we have after G3 we have A3. The semicolon. Again, I'm going to type private button and A3 capital. Then I'm going to type button. Then we have another private button and this time we have a last button that is button b3 now you so we have completed the first pair for which is started from c3 to b3 now similarly you need to complete this pair that is around from 35 means we have all 25 black keys and also we have 35 pink piano keys so similarly you need to create all the variables so i'm going to do that and just fast forward into the video so that you don't need to watch the boring stuff because it's a boring thing so just simply i'm doing it quickly for you so i'm just simply going to do with the copy and paste just changing the values at the end so i'm going to paste it one more time so there are lots of red lines then i'm going to simply change it to c4 and here again i'm going to c4 so i'm going to do this quickly just i show you the one how you can quickly do this thing So finally here you can see that I have defined means declare all the button variables. Now it's time to initialize all these variables inside the on create method. But I'm not going to initialize inside the on create method because there are 60 buttons and it will actually overcode the my on create method. Means my 
on create method will become over coded not o means i want to say it will become difficult to manage the code so i'm going to use a method a modular approach which will help us to make the code more clean so i'm going to write void initialize all piano buttons so i'm going to name my method as i in initialize all piano keys so i'm going to type button so i'm just going to start with the c3 note this in the order in which i have placed inside the then i'm going to call find view by id method now dot id dot and the id is of the button is c3 note is not c3 it's p1 because the first button id is p1 so i'm going to simply you can see that the id of first button is this one is p1 this is the text to this but this is our button so the id of this button is you know so similarly we need to initialize all the buttons but here we need to also type cast it into the button so that we can't get any error although the it is saying button is redundant but still in some cases application may be crashed if we not type cast it but maybe if you don't specify it your application will run but for avoiding any kinds of error we need to at least type cast it because we just need to add this only a small block of code so similarly we need to initialize our next button that is button button c3 black then simply equals to button we need to type cast it and we need to type find with the id r dot id dot and the id of this button is b1 because that is a black key one now hold your control key and go to this b1 and when you click on it you will simply jump into the xml file that is this one so this is our black piano key that has id b1 that is this one so again we need to code the rest of the button so i'm going to type button then from c3 we have d3 button d3 and then is equals to button then find with the id r dot id dot then we have p2 that's why i simply i name the id in a simple simplest way so that it will not create any burden means difficulty while typing the id name then here is d3 black button and then we need to again type find b by id r dot id dot and there is a b2 then again with this approach we need to call it but i'm going to copy and paste so that it will become easy for me then here i need to change into from d3 to then we have what i just simply check it out simply d3 then we have e3 f3 So is, then we have d3 f3 f so i'm going to i'm going to change it into capital f then capital f then we have a simple button that doesn't have f3 then we have e3 so e3 doesn't have a black key so the another one that the e3 doesn't have a black key so then then we have g3 and then a3 Here I'm going to specify. So, so here I'm going to specify G3. And again, here G3. Then again, I'm going to copy the code for one more time for A3, not S3. It's A3. And then simply copy the this line of code. and change it to e3 and simply change it to copy and paste it one more time and change it to b3 also you need to change the id as well now e3 button has a id p3 you need to remember right so i'm going to place it on a 
add the in a series of sequence so after p2 after b2 i have a button that has of c series p3 now b3 has a series of then after f3 because you can see that in the e3 e3 button has p3 id and then f3 has p4 id so that's why i am placing the e3 here so f4 f3 sorry f3 has p4 id then this one had b3 it was a black e3 and the another one that is g3 black is have id around maybe 4 and this one has p5 and we have a3 so simply switch back to and again design editor and a3 has a id p6 and then a3 black has a id b5 and then button b3 has a id p7 so i'm going to call this method we we'll simply copy and go to the top of the on grid that is this one and here i'm going to specify semicolon now i'm going to run this application in our virtual emulator at this point of time we don't get any message because we have simply initialized the code now the next step is just simply i'm going to copy and paste but before copy and pasting i'm just going to build it once so that it will become clear whether the code is working fine or not simply click on this run button select your emulator and hit ok so here you can see that our application is up and running so right now we don't get any error if we get an error the application may be crashed but we don't get any error so that means the code is fine so the next step is we need to copy and paste this code and just simply changing the c3 to c4 c3 to c4 then again for the next pair changing the c4 to d4 so this is you need to apply this is a repetitive process so i'm going to do that and then again i'm going to continue the video so that you don't need to see the boring stuff One more thing guys, you need to be take care of the IDs, that is if the, you are targeting C4, then before changing the ID, make sure you have actually checked the C4 key. So how you can check, you just need to scroll down and here you need to see B ID and what is the button, the C4. So you need to be remember the ID names, it will take time because they are a bunch of keys, so don't need to worry about whether you are consuming time because at least you are going to create a very good application so that's why i want to give the suggestion so take care while giving the id if you misplace the ids then maybe you will not get an error but at the end when you try to playing the node then you will get a different kinds of sound which will actually a bug in your application so be careful while changing the ids so i'm again going to fast forward the video and then simply continue the video so that you don't need to watch the boring stuff So finally guys I have did all the coding of the buttons that I have initialized all the code. So now it's time to run the application to see whether it gives an error or it runs successfully. It took me around 5 to 6 minutes. So simply hit ok and see what's the output. So you can see that it doesn't give any error and it's done fine. So it means I have initialized all the application buttons successfully. So in next lecture I am going to initialize the text views and creating the variables that is our label that is actually a text view. So that's all about this lecture guys. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next lecture. Thank you. Welcome to this lecture. So in this lecture we are going to work with our text views that is act as a label on the piano keys. 
So switch back to your Android Studio and just simply click on activity main.xml and here you simply click on this C3. So the ID of this text view is DC3. So I'm again switch back to main activity.java and here at the top of the on create we need to define variables for our text view labels. So here I am writing a comment that is variables variables for text view and simply type private second one is a text view and tc3 which is the first variable on the our keyboard means our piano key that is c3 then the next one is our d3 e3 f3 so i'm going to copy and paste it six times again so these are total seven because we are working in a pair of sevens and tc then it's a t d3 then thus another one is e3 then we have f3 then we have a3 and then we have b3 so we have d3 e3 f3 and there is also a g3 a3 and b3 so i have one implement more so i need to so there is six so i'm missing a g3 one so copy and see again after f3 we have g3 simply hit and control v and then here type g3 then we have completed the first pair then it's time to simply copy and paste again and paste it five times more because we have 35 keys that is of piano pink keys so I simply paste it into four times more so i'm going to do that and again i'm going to continue the video so that you don't need to watch the boring stuff so simply copy and paste it finally i have declared all the variables for the text view now it's time to initialize all this variable inside the onCreate method but like we have did in previously with buttons i'm also going to define the another method for the text views so create a method after the end of the onCreate method type void and the name of the method i'm going to given is uh, initialize text view labels on piano piano keys the name should be meaningful so that when application will become bigger and bigger then it will become easy for us to debug so the first is tc3 hit a tab key and again you need to typecast it into text view that is the text view and simply use a method called find view by d r dot id dot then the id is so I'm going to me go to activity main.xml and the ID is TC3 as well. So copy and here you need to specify TC3. Then I'm going to simply then at the end of the cursor when the cursor is simply I'm going to press control and again I'm going to press the control plus D means I'm going to use a shortcut key control D which is duplicate. So I'm going to press it six times. So you can see that it quickly duplicates the code then here i'm going to specify d then f then there's e sorry then we have f3 then there's a g3 then there's a a3 and after that we have a b3 then the corresponding thing here also there's a d3 which is a id then there is a e3 then there is f3 Then there is a id which is g3 then there is a3 
and then b3 so similarly we need to copy this code four times more because we have 35 keys and also corresponding 35 labels so i'm going to paste it four times more then i'm going to change the name so i'm going to simply fast forward the video so that you don't need to watch the boring stuff So finally I did the coding of all the text view initialization. Now it's time to run the application to see whether we get any bug or not. So simply I'm going to click on this run button and select in the emulator and hit OK. So you can see that the application is up and running but also there is one thing I forgot it. I didn't call this method inside the on create. So I'm going to copy this code and simply here at the after the initialize all piano keys method, paste in the piano key method and at the end I need to specify the semicolon. Then at the top of this method I'm going to write one comment that is method for all text views. Then at the top of initialize all piano key method, I'm also writing one comment method to method for all piano piano key buttons and also piano key text piano piano key labels. So that it will convey some idea when the next programmer means when you put on in a github repository or maybe you share your code with some other programmers then they will completely know about what that method will actually does. So they can get an idea and they can actually modify the code because we are in a programming world and sharing knowledge is the best way to gain knowledge. So again I am trying to run the code to see whether it will give an error or not. So you can see that application is running fine, so it doesn't give any error and it's running almost fine. So because we have not done anything else, we are just simply creating the variables and just simply initializing it and then calling the method inside the own grid because it's the best place to initialize the views. So that's all about this lecture. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next lecture. Thank you. Welcome to this lecture. So in this lecture I will be sharing some points about MIDI driver or audio file. After the end of the video you will get to know about which one is suitable for the piano application. Now means which one is suited best for our piano application. Now first I am going to discuss the MIDI driver. For playing a piano note in an Android device on a click of a piano key. So when you click on the piano key. We can use both MIDI driver or audio files. So when you click on the piano, then you want to play a sound. So you can achieve this task by using both MIDI driver or audio file. The problem with MIDI driver is you will need to give the credits to the creator of the MIDI driver. Also you need to use some external dependencies or need to understand how to use it properly. Once you got it properly how to use it then the development time will definitely reduce. But the problem is if you publish the application in play store without giving credits to the developer and then your application may be rejected because you are not taking the permission from the creator or the developer of the driver that creates the MIDI driver or any other dependency. So if you publish it on play store then maybe your application rejected due to copyright. Also when you use the external dependency then you need to work according to the rules specified by the creator of the dependency. Now it's time to discuss some points regarding audio file. Now similarly in audio file you also need to give the credit to the creator. 
You can purchase the audio files from different websites at affordable price. You can create different piano notes by yourself or with the help of someone, just like I do. I took the help of my friend and he just helped me to give a graph and also give the notes of piano to me to complete this application successfully. Now audio file is easy to use and easy to maintain. So that's why it is a very convenient to use audio file when you are creating a small application like piano. Now which one to choose and which one is idle for the piano application. So in my piano application I used a audio files that I got from my friend who is very good pianist and also I use in piano application because it is very easy to use and quickly to implement. So that's all about this lecture. Thanks for watching and I will see in the next lecture. Thank you. Welcome to this lecture. So in this lecture I am going to share some information about on touch listener and on click listener means the difference between on touch listener and on click listener. Now both on touch listener and click listener are interface. So I am going to first talk about on touch listener. Now when you implement the on touch listener then it's mandatory to override the on touch method because the on touch listener is an interface and the property of interface says if you implement the interface then you need to override all the methods that are present on the interface. So that's why if you implement the on-touch listener, then you need to implement means override the on-touch method. So on-touch method will be look like this. It expects two parameters. The first parameter is the view and the second parameter is of type motion event. And the listener sets by using the method set on touch listener. Now if you want to set this listener to the view like button, text view, image view or maybe image button, then you need to use set on touch listener method. Now it's time to talk about on-click listener. So when you implement on-click listener, then it's mandatory to override the on-click method. Because on-click listener is also an interface and the property of interface says that if you implement the interface, then you need to override all the methods that are present on the interface. And the on-click method will be look like this. It will expect one argument that is of type view. And to set the listener, you need to call means you need to use set on click listener method to set the listener to the views and that view can be a button, image view, text view or maybe a layout file. Now on touch event has some properties. It has a gives a motion event. It has action up, action down, action move. Those are common actions which usually implement to get a desired result. Sometimes it becomes difficult to use on touch method. Yes. On touch method is little tricky to use because it has different kinds of events that you need to took care. That's why sometimes also in our piano application, I'm not going to use a on touch method because it complicates the UI. Also the logic will become more complicated. But in case of on click, on click is a complete event which focusing on pressing and releasing of a button. On click is very simple to implement and it allows a better control. The on-touch method works more faster than on-click method because there are some developers say that on-touch method works more faster as compared to on-click but the difference is very minor and you can't see it when you are using the application. Now which one to choose? So it depends upon the requirement and the complexity of the application. Now from the user point of view it is unnoticeable whether you implement the on-touch method or on-click method. Because user is an end user and the user doesn't know which type of programming is used behind the application. Means the behind the scenes what is actually going on. So user just want to use the application and enjoy it. But you need to avoid using both. That's the main point because there are some developers try to use all those, all the methods. Means on touch as well as on click. If you do so, then it will complicate the process. Means your application will become unstable and doesn't give the results that you want. In my PN application, I use the on-click listener because it is simple to implement and easy to use and it allows a better control as compared to on-touch method. Now on-touch makes the logic more complicated. That's why I avoid using the on-touch method in my PN application. So that's the reason I choose the on-click listener for my application. So that's all about this lecture. Thanks for watching and I will see in the next lecture. Thank you.
Welcome to this lecture. So in this lecture, I'm going to add the on-click listener to our views, that is button and text view. That will be act as a keys or labels of our piano keys. So let's start this lecture. So switch back to your Android Studio and just click on main activity dot Java. But first, I need to change this into landscape mode. And here you can see that it is running fine in our emulator as well. So minimize it and just click on main activity dot Java. So first. Just here the line is written that is public main activity extends app compact activity. Just at the end of app compact activity, you simply press space and type implements and hit the tab key. And we need to implement an interface that is view dot on click listener. Simply hit tab and you can see that it's, it gives us an error. So simply click on this red bulb icon and implement methods. Because it is an interface and we need to override the methods of the interface. So right now we need to override this onclick method. Simply hit OK. So you can see that the method onclick is overrided. Now it's time to add the listener to all the buttons and text views. So how you can do that? It's very simple. Just simply here you need to press enter and type TC3. Hit a tab key and dot set onclick listener. This is the second one. Just hit a tab key. And here it will expect an argument. So we need to specify the context of the activity that is this. Now similarly, you need to specify the onclick listener to the other text view variables as well. Just hit an enter key and click Ctrl V. And here is what to do. You just simply copy TD3, that is the variable name of text. Simply hit space. Similarly, you need to do with the other ones as well. Just to copy this one. And paste it here, and then te3 copy, and here paste it, and again copy this one, because it will save a little time for the typing. That's why I'm copying and pasting, and then hit a Control V, and again at the end of, let's first copy this one. That's it. F3, or set on click listener, and again paste it, and again I'm going to copy, and again I'm going to paste it. So it will take time, but it is the only thing because you need to do this coding stuff. There is no shortcut for this one to do it quickly. You need to do it manually because we have 60 keys in our piano application. Simply copy and again paste it here, just leaving the dot operator simply. And again, copy this one, not this one. We want to copy the set on click listener one. And at the end, press enter and control V and then copy this TB3. Then TA3. So this will be complete in the first set that is TC, that is TC32 TB3. Now similarly, you need to add a listener to the button as well. So I'm going to do the one set for you. Then you need to do it all the set for yourself because I'm going to make it in video so quickly. Set on quick listener. Then this. So I'm, what I'm saying that I'm going to skip the part of the video so that you can do it. You don't need to watch the Boring stuff. Then here is BT BC3 black dot set on click listener and type this. And again, I'm going to copy and paste the thing to make it more quickly. Just not spending the time to on pasting. Simply copy and then here you need to specify control V. Again, copy this one and at the end of this TD3 black. Control V, then copy this button D3 black and then paste it here. So it will set the listener to the button D3 black and copy this again and again paste it and again copy button E3 and set here copy and paste. It's the very easiest way to copy and paste and again press enter Control V, then copy this button BF3. And simply paste it here at the front of set on click listener. Again, copy this code. And again, simply at the end of this button F3 black, control V, then copy button F3 black variable name and replace with the button F3. And again, copy the same line of code. And again, at the end of the button G3, control V, and then copy the button variable name button G3, replace it with the button F3 black. And again, we're going to copy. We need to copy the listener one, not in the find view ID one. Control V, 
and again copy the button g3 black variable name replaced with the button g3. Similarly, you need to do with this one that is button a3. Yes, paste it at the end of m again going to have paste it. Then what you need to do? This is set on configuration of bg3 and a3 black. So here you need to copy a3 black and set the listener in place of button g3. So it will set the listener to the button a3 as well. Then find the ID of button a3 black. Then here you need to again paste the code, not a3 code. This one that is set on click listener a3. Again going to paste it and just simply copy the a3 black code and paste it here. Then this is button b3. This is the find viewer ID. Just copy it and replace with the button g3 black variable name. So now there is no need to be space. So you can see that I have all completed the first set of the piano key that is c3 to b3. So similarly you need to specify the means you need to add the on click listener to this one, this set and this cell. So I am going to do it quickly for you so that you don't need to watch the entire video because it's a repetitive task. So finally I had did all the coding. Now it's time to run the application. You can see that I have already code all the listeners. Means I have set all the click listener to the all text views and also all buttons. Now it's time to run the application to see whether I have made any mistake or not. But before that you can simply go to the top of the code. If you find any variable which actually looks like this one that is scroll view then it means that it is not properly assigned or listener is not set properly but for in my case all the variables are looking yellow so it means that the variables are properly assigned and properly listener is set it to them so it's time to run the application so i'm going to run the application in my virtual emulator so here you can see that application is running fine so that's all about this lecture Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next lecture. Thank you. Welcome to this lecture. So in this lecture, I will be giving you some information about sound pool and media player. So let's start this lecture. So both sound pool and media player used to handle the audio files in Android. Now the question is which one to choose? Media player, sound pool. So you will get to know about when you watch the entire lecture. Now moving forward. First I will be talking about media player. The media player is suitable for large files and it's also suitable for background tasks. Like in music application, you want to play a very large musical files that are 5 to 6 minutes long. And that's a long process. So in order to achieve this task, the media player is suitable for that task. In media player, the file is loaded from the disk whenever it's called. This will save memory but introduce a small delay, not really noticeable. Means the media player is suitable to play large files and it loads the file from the disk to save some memory and also some CPU usage. But it introduces a small delay, but that delay is unnoticeable to the user. Now it's time to talk about sound pool. Sound pool is suitable for shorter sound clips and is best suited to use for sound effects. Like in games, mostly sound pool is used. It loads a sound file into memory from the resource directory of the application, that is APK. That's why it is used for shorter files and idle for playing piano notes as well. Now in my piano application, I use a sound pool to play a piano note whenever a key is pressed. 
I can use the media player to play a piano node, but I not use the media player due to some reason and that reason I am going to explain practically inside the Android Studio. So that's all about this lecture. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next lecture. Thank you. Welcome to this lecture. So in this lecture I am going to show you the concept of using sound pool in my piano application and why I leave the and why I am not using media player for playing the piano key notes. Now here you can see that I have all files for piano apps, a folder in, in which all piano notes are there in a different format. So you can see that I have OGG format and .mp3 format and this is another .m4v m4a format. So I have piano note files in three different format. So depending upon the requirement you can use it in or as per your application requirement. So I'm going to using the OGG format although Android support MP3 format as well. But I get the piano note in a form of M4A format. So I converted it with the use of some converter software into two different other formats that is MP3 and OGG. Luckily Android support all of them. If you want to know more about the different kinds of formats that Android support, you can check out the official documentation of the Android developer website. So I'm going to copy this OGG format and I'm going to copy all this pressing Ctrl A which allow me to select all the files and then press it Ctrl C and after that I will switch back to my Android Studio again and then I am going to expand this and expand my app level directory and then click on res and instead of drawable no instead of drawable I am going to create a new raw directory then simply click on this Android resource directory and select from here raw folder that is used for to play some audio files or used to store audio files that is the best place and that's why I like the Android Studio very well because it's organized all the things properly for you. Simply hit OK and here you need to simply click on this folder and simply right click on it click on this paste and it will prompt you to copy the files in a specified files in this directory simply hit OK and you can see that by expanding this raw directory all the files are here for the use simply close it and I'm going to create another one because I want to demonstrate the use between the sound pool and media file or you can say that the difference between why I use the sound pool in this application. Simply right click on this app folder and go to new and then select activity and from there you need to select another empty activity. Then a dialog box will pop up and here you need to specify the name of your second activity that you are going to use in this entire application. So I'm going to name it as test. Because at the end I want, I am just simply going to delete this activity. So I am going to specify it with a capital letter. Because all activity name must be started with a capital letter to create a proper organization of the application of files. So simply hit finish and wait for the Gradle because the Gradle build is again started. And so we need to wait for the Gradle to complete the syncing process so that our activity is fully created and we can use it. So you can see that our activity is now fully created. Now what I am going to do, I am just simply going to click on this activity underscore test.xml file and just first I am click on this project tab so that I can get a more wider area to work. Simply I am going to remove this one because I don't want and I am just changing the root layout of the activity screen to reality layout because I don't want to use constraint layout just I want to use the reality layout. Then simply click on this design tab. And from there you can see there is no action bar because we have used in our style no action bar. Then you need to drag first a text tree. Then after text tree you need to drag a button. Then again a button. Then again you need to specify your text view. Then again a button. And then another button. Then you can see that in design editor it looks like weird. Simply just scroll too much. And just here you need to specify this button. Again this button here. Then this button you need to specify here and this one is here. Just line it properly because not too much just simply line it so that it looks little bit good. And again specify this text view here and this text view at the center. Now I am going to just simply switch back to the text mode as again and here I am going to just click on this text view and I am going to making the width as match parent. Simply hit tab. Again, I'm going to click on the second text view and making this width as match parent as well. So you can see that 
So this one is not cover the entire area. Now I'm going to click on the this text here again, and I'm going to specify its text alignment property. So I'm going to type text alignment that is a uh, this one center. So our text will be displayed, and also I'm going to specify the text size that is 35 dp. And I'm going to name the text as sound pool. And again, I'm going to click on this text view that is first one. Here I'm going to specify the text alignment property again. As text alignment, I'm specifying it to center. And again, I'm going to specify the text size. That is text size 35 dp. And then changing the text to media player. So that's it. The code of the Designing, we don't want to change the name of this one, this button, sorry. We don't need to change because we just want to tap and play a sound. Then switch back to again test.java file and here to define the variables for the buttons. So I'm going to type button and I'm going to type bt1, comma, bt2, comma, bt3, comma, bt4, bt4. Then I'm going to initialize the IDs inside of the onCreate because it's the best way to initialize the IDs. Of the old views, so I'm going to type bt1. I'm going to type find view by id. First, we're going to type cross it. It's better to type cross it so that we are in a safer side, so that our application doesn't crash. I'm going to type button find view by id and r dot id id dot and the id of the button is button because by default Android, if you are using it as a to out, then it will defaultly Gives the IDs as button one, button two, button three. So then at the end of this first line, that is button one code, I am pressing Control D three times, so it will duplicate the code. And here I am going to specify two, and three, then four. So quickly it will allow me to make modification. That's why I specify the name. Almost looks like similar. And after that, we need to add some code for playing the sound. Means. What I want to demonstrate when I press on these two buttons of media player, this it will play the sound by using the media player API. And these two buttons, when I tap on it, it will play the sound on pressing the button. But the problem is when you quickly pressing the these two buttons, when click, quickly clicking on these buttons, the media player actually stop responding and actually your sound will not be played again. But in sound pool, it is not because our application has very low small files that is this one and it is very small small means these are very not too long this is very short audio files and it is suitable to play with this sound pool yes you can play it with media player as well but media player creates complexity and we need to actually prepare the listener means prepare the media player then we need to unhold unload the media player then again we need to play it media player so it will become difficult to manage also if you are tapping so fast on the buttons then it will Stop responding means it will stop the playing the audio. Whereas in sound pool, if you tap too quickly on these two buttons, then it will remains and it will play the sound, and it is also suitable for playing shorter audio files. So when I just implement the whole practical, then you will came to know about it. Simply again click on this text to a Java file, and here what you need to do, and here what you need to do, you need to implement the on click listener. So just click on it after the end of M compact activity and type implements and capital view dot on click listener. Then you need to click on this red bulb icon to override the methods that is on click and on click is override. Then you need to set the listener to all the buttons. So I'm going to do that by we'll typing bt1 dot set on click listener. Then again I'm specifying this. Again, at the end of this line of code, I'm going to press Ctrl D three times. Then here I'm going to change it to bt2, bt3, bt4. Now here I'm going to specify switch case statement. I'm going to press switch. And I'm going to type view. There is a capital. There is a small v. V dot get id. And then I'm starting a code block. Then here I'm going to specify the first case. That is case. And the case should be r dot id dot button. If it, so, if it is a case, I'm going to play a sound that is played with the use of media player. 
ID dot button two is ID dot button two. And again, I'm going to type break. And again, I will define the first all the cases. Then I will put the code between the case and the break statement. In case, and again, I need to specify R dot ID dot, and the button is this is button three. And again, I need to need a break. And again, I am going to specify case R dot ID dot. That is button four. And then I am going to specify break. So, what I am going to do? I am just going to first create a media player variable. Then, with these two buttons, that is this one, I am going to play a sound with the use of media player API. And with these two buttons, that is first I will close this main dot XML. These two buttons, that is this one, I am going to play the sound with the use of sound pool API. So. Let's do it. First, I'm going to create a variable for media player. That is media player. It's media player, and I'm going to specify it with the ob. So that will give some more illustration, means more meaning that it is an object of media player class. Then we need to do what? We need to actually create a media player. So we can create a media player inside of the own create as well, or we can directly create it here. So I'm going to create directly here a media player. Object means I am going to create the media player again. I have created the media player object, but it is time to initialize the media player object to some raw files. The raw files are which is our audio files. So I am going to type media near ob equal to. I am going to again type media player dot create, and here need to specify the context. So I am going to type get application context, and just simply press a comma, and I am going to specify the directory where my audio file is stored. So this is stored in the raw directory. So raw directory, and I am going to specify C3. The first node that I want to play. I don't want to play the entire node just for the demonstration purpose. I'm using only the single node. Then again, I'm going to copy this code. And again, I'm going to specify here. Just making it. And then here, I'm going to specify C3 black. Just the unknown also that we can make a difference that we are playing two different nodes. So now it's time to start the media player. So I'm going to type media player. Dot start. Click tab. And again, I'm going to copy this code. Control V. So that's all about the coding. Now, by default, if you try to run the application, you will start from the main activity. So we need a mechanism so that we can switch from main activity to this test main activity. Means, I want to say, by default, when you launch the activity, you will actually launch the main activity because in manifest file, you have specified the main activity as your launch activity, and the second activity is your test activity. So we need a mechanism. We can change it here directly to test activity, and here we need to specify main activity to launch our test activity first. But I'm not going to do that. I'm going to use the another approach. So I'm going to simply switch back to main activity again. So I'm going to here specify one method that will automatically take us to the test activity. So I'm going to type void. So type void and go to not get to go to test. Activity. Simply close the braces and open sub opening and closing block of the. Now it's time to specify the intent. So I'm going to type intent. Intent and again the object of intent equals to new intent tab and our main activity. So I need to specify the context here from where. This is main activity dot this, and again from where I want to go, so I'm going to want to go to, to test activity. So test dot class, then it's a semicolon. Then we need to start the intent. And we need to start the intent means we need to start activity. So here is our start activity. So we need tab, and we need to pass the intent as an object to this method. Then we need to call this method. Simply copy the code, and at the top of the On create, where we have initialized our scroll view, I'm going to call this method at here. So whenever this method is called, it will takes us to the test activity. When because when activity is in creation phase, it will automatically redirects us to test activity. So it's time to run the application to see whether we have done a uh, right code or wrong. But before running, I'm going to click on this activity test dot main XML file, 
and I'm going to just simply drag these buttons a little bit below. And then again, I'm going to drag this button here, and again, I'm just click on the sound pool label that is text view, and again, just simply dragging this one to the op top of the media player, and this one here. Now, I'm going to make it into a landscape mode. Now you can see that the buttons are actually misplaced and the layout is also. So I'm again going to do it in a media player top. And the button that the media player uses is this one. So this button will become to here. And the another button that is button 2, which is used by media player, will be here. Then sound pool need to drag there. So you can see that I have now. So you can see that now I have changed it to landscape mode, and the layout is misplaced. And I I arrange the layout again means the views that are actually drawn on the screen. I arrange them according to their properties. So now it's look good. So it's time to run the application to see whether we are able to play the sounds by using media player or not when we tap these two buttons. So again, I'm going to cross check that this is a button two, and this is button that has no id that is should be oh that is definitely a button one but here is the id is button so i'm going to run this application in a virtual emulator the running a api 27 and having an android version 8.1.0 so simply hit ok so you can see that our application is up and running so when i click on this button so you can see that the nodes are playing so when i click on continuously to this one Now you can see that now the sound is gone. I'm clicking on it again, again, but now you can see that the media player stopped playing the music. So if I switch back to lock cat and again I change it to error, not warning, error. So you can see that it shows us an error. Then the error name is actually media player error. You can see here. So that's the problem with the media player. If you try to do that, then it will not play the music. And in our Piano application, the user will click on the button too fastly. Means user will click on the button fastly when the user is trying to compose a music or maybe liking the application is just simply touching more quickly. Means touching the button more quickly. If the sound stops on that time, then it will actually reduces the popularity of the application and also that's a bug. So it's time to fix that bug by using sound pool. So, minimize it and again switch back to test.java. So, I'm going, to close, I'm going to close the main java file and this android manifest file also and style.xml file also. Then again, I'm going to click on this test.java file and here we need to declare a first variable of sound pool class. So, I'm going to type here sound pool. It is sound pool, an object of sound pool. I'm going to prefix it with in the post, I'm just going to add ob at the end of this sound pool variable name and hit a semicolon. And instead of the on create, we need to create initialize the sound pool variable to the we need to build the sound pool. So again I'm typing sound pool ob equals to new that is a new operator that is used to allocate the memory to the object of the classes. So I'm going to use sound not so I'm going to type here again sound pool. So here with the use of sound pool, I'm going to use dot builder because sound pool is actually deprecated. Now again I'm going to type it here dot new set audio set max streams and I'm going to set the max streams as six. And again I'm going to tap enter and again I'm going to search and I need to click on this last map that is build. Now our sound pool is build. Now we need to some variables, integer variables that actually holds our row folder files. So I'm going to create new int. I'm going to name it as c3, comma, c3, black. That is our not playing not name. I'm going to initialize sound pool ob dot load, and then we need to specify the where the context that is this. Then I need to specify the directory where our audio files are stored so it is stored in our row directory that is row dot 
then the name of the file you want to play that is c3 then I simply hit ok and the priority should be I am giving to 1 then again I am going to duplicate the code by pressing ctrl d and here I am going to specify as c3 black and again I am going to specify here c3 black bl and hitting a tab key now it's time to use this code inside of these buttons when we press this button 3 and button 4 then we need to play a sound now here we need to specify the object of sound pool sound pool dot play then we need to specify the id means the variable that holds the raw file so simply hit c3 that c3 variable holds the raw file the audio file that we want to play when we click on the button then left volume i'm going to specify one and again comma the right volume i'm going to specify one then again comma now the priority i'm going to specify zero and again i'm going to specify the loop here the loop should be zero because we don't want to play it again then the float rate i'm going to specify one then at the end i'm going to specify semicolon then simply copy this code and paste it just here then change this c3 to c3 flag and hit a tab key so yeah we are pretty much done with the coding so it's time to run the application to see it in action so just hit on this play button means the run button and just simply click ok so you can see that our application is up and running now i'm going to click on this button to play a sound so you can see that when i click on this button quickly 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 no matter how much i quickly tap on this button it doesn't lose the sound So that's why I use a sound pool in my piano application because user quickly taps on the button and when user taps on the button, we continuously listen to the user input and play a required piano note. But in case of media player, we have seen that the player stopped responding and stopped playing the note. Whereas sound pool, it is better and it's easy and it's convenient for shorter files. That's why I use sound pool in my piano application. Now I'm going to run this application in my physical device. So I'm just going to click on this run button and selecting my physical device that running API level 25 and having a logout version 7.1.2. Simply hit OK. You can see that the gradual build is starting. That's my physical device. You can see that it's up and running. So when I click on these two buttons, you can hear the sound. When I click on media player, you can still hear the sound, but when I just click on, now you can see that the media player is stopped responding and not playing the audio. So, just close the application. And first, you need to kill the application because media player destroy the all audio system of the application. Again, try to launch the application. And again, if I try to click on the sound pool, then you can see that the sound is playing. So, that's all about this lecture. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next lecture. Thank you. Welcome to this lecture. So in this lecture, we will add the code to play a piano node when we click on the button by using sound pool. So let's start this lecture. Opening your Android Studio. So switch back to Android Studio. And here, first go to the at the top. So first, I need to close the test Java file and this activity test .xml because we don't want it anymore. So I'm going to switch back to main activity. And here, I'm going to just delete this go to test activity code. And just simply expand this window to get a more wide area to work. Now scroll to the top and here you need to define some variable. The first is you type private. The first variable is of sound pool. You need to create a variable for the sound pool and just semicolon. Then you need to create some private integer variables that holds your row files. Row files, the audio files. So simply type int, not capital int, is simply integer and here to type c3 that will hold the row file c3. Then type c3 black, then type d3, comma d3 black, then type e3, maybe it's e3, I'm going to see it in a, yes, it's e3 f3 g3. Then type e3 and comma 
because e3 doesn't have a black key so you need to type f3 and comma f3 black and f3 black then you need to type g3 and comma then type g3 black and again comma then you need to type a3 then comma then a3 black then at the last you need b3 because b3 doesn't have a black key so you need to initialize all these integer variables to the row files corresponding row files that i have already named it as same c3 a3 just like you have found it here c3 and c3 black.ogg so we need to initialize this c3 file to this variable so later on we will pass this file to the sound pool then the sound pool will play the audio file when we tap on the piano key so the simple logic and easy to implement so let's go to the onCreate method so here i'm going to initialize all the variables so first i'm going to type the code for building the sound pool it's because inside of the onCreate is the best place to initialize all the variables simply i'm going to here give me one comment code to code for the sound pool now type sound pool equals to new operator then capital uh, sound pool and instead of sound pool you need to here type dot builder then again you need to go to next line then type dot set max streams and i'm going to pass six and again i'm going to press dot just indenting it properly and i will be using a not this type I'm going to using a build and semicolon. So that makes the sound pool creation code. Now it's time to initialize all the variables that we have created. Integer type of variables. So first I will going to initialize C3 equals to then I'm going to call the sound pool object that is sound pool dot load. This method is used to load the file. Then we need to pass a context that is this and the directory path where the file is stored. So it is stored in row directory that holds all our sound file. Simply hit tab and dot the name of the file you want to play. So I am going to play a C3 file. And after that, you need to specify the priority. So I'm going to give you the priority as one. So again, I'm going to just simply control pressing do and just simply duplicate this code many times. Then I'm going to simply change the file. So here is C3 black, and here is there is black i need to press a tab there is d3 then here is d3 black then after that there is e3 maybe or whatever has d3 d3 black then there is e3 then there is f3 and there is here we need to specify e3 and also we need to change it here e3 now it's a d3 sorry it's a d3 black then here is d3 then here is c3 black then here is there is no e33 there is e3 only and here we need to specify e3 here is f3 and then again i need to specify here is f3 then f3 black then here is also F3 black, not F3 double black, and after that we have G3, then we have G3 black, and here we have also G3 black, then after that we have A3, and we have also A3 black. And I also have here A3 black, and apart from that, we have A3, not A33. And the last one is B3, and then also we have B3. Now, similarly, you need to initialize all the other variables as well that we have created. It means you need to create another set. First, you need to declare the another set that is from C4 to B4. Then, after that, inside the onCreate method, 
you need to again initialize all the row files to their corresponding variable name. Now it's time to go inside the onClick method and type the sound play code. So this is our own. Now we don't want this go to test activity method more. Simply I'm going to delete it and just I'm going to switch it again. Now I'm going to use a switch case statement inside the to play a note according to the ID of the button. So v dot get ID. Then I'm starting the code block. Then I will be write a first statement that is case. If it is a case of r dot id dot that is tc3 means the text level 3 and also the case and also if it is a case of r dot id dot the first button that is p1 if you remember the id of the p1 the first button is p1 here you can see that if it is the case if the label is first id of the label is tc3 and the id of the button is p1 so if it is a case then i'm going to play a sound the first i will write the break statement then inside of the break inside of this break i'm going to call a method with the use of sound pool object that is sound play dot play now instead of this i need to specify the sound id means the variable that holds the row file that is c3 comma i need to specify the left volume that is 1 then right volume that is 1 then again i need to specify the priority that is 0 and i'm going to specify the loop as 0 because we don't want to play it again then the float rate i'm going to specify as 1 and at the end i will specify a semicolon similarly you need to also write the code for the button b1 so i'm going to type if it is a case of case r dot id dot b1 then i want to play a sound first i will write a break then i want to play a sound sound pool dot play then here i need to specify a c3 black because it holds a sound file of c3 black then again left volume 1 right volume 1 then priority 0 and the loop rate loop 0 and the rate is of 1 then at the end semicolon so right now i have specified the code for just the two buttons so similarly you need to specify the button code for the other two as well so i'm going to do it quickly then i will be continuing the video again So finally I did the first set of the coding. Now here you need to take care while the first case is for the first button that is of id p1 and the second one is for the black key that id has b1. Then the another this is for d3 then the, the black key 2 which is also for d3 black. Then you, then you need to take care that there is e3 there is no black key then you need to copy the code for f3 then f3 black then g3 then g3 black then a3 then a3 black then b3 so similarly you need to do the coding for the all of the buttons and all of the text view the approach is very simple and easy to similar so i'm going to do it quickly for you so that you don't need to watch the entire video which is based on the repetitive task but before i do the coding process i want to run this application to check whether i'm able to play the audio files by clicking on the button or not so i am going to run the application on my physical device because for somehow in virtual emulator i am not able to hear the sound and hit ok so you can see that my application is up and running if i click on the buttons then you can say that the notes are playing Now from A, from C3 to B3, I'm able to successfully play the nodes. Now similarly, you need to code all the buttons. So the approach is repetitive, so I'm going to do it quickly. So then I will be continuing the video.
So finally I had done all the coding of the piano application buttons. I completed all the sets. First I created all the variables and at the top of the I am going to show you. So at the top you can see that I have created all the variable set. I created in just a linear way so that it will make easy for me to just simply change from C3 to C4 then say or C5. Then inside on create I initialize all the variables to hold raw files that is actually used to play the audio files that is loaded with the use of sound pool object and with the use of load method then we pass the context and then directory where our file is stored and then priority i set to one then inside the on click i have used a very simple logic just getting the ids of the view and then according to the id that is this label indicates that the correct id that is c3 then matching the id that is c3 to c4 and f4 to f4 and this will make easy to does the code and yeah i did all the coding so it's time to run this application so i'm going to run this application on my physical device so you can see that our application is up and running now i'm going to tap on the buttons so you can see that the audio So our application is running fine. So in our upcoming videos, we will be adding more functionality to our application. So that's all about this lecture. Thanks for watching and I will see in the next lecture. Thank you. Welcome to this lecture. So in this lecture, I'm going to add more functionality to our piano application. But before that, you need to download this piano app assets file. That is a RAR file. So when you extract it, you will get this folder. So inside of this folder, you have some more files that are graphical assets so i'm going to use these graphical assets inside the piano application this is now let me first zoom it so you can see that there are five files the first one is a left navigation button and this one is a right navigation button so these are basically used to control the navigation of the horizontal scroll view means the scroll amount i'm going to add the code to control the scroll amount of the horizontal view when we click on this button or this button then there is a play button which is used to play the recordings and also the record button which is used to record the piano key node and this is our logo that we are going to place at the mid of the piano layout not at the mid just the empty area here we are going to place the piano logo so right now in previous lecture i am able to successfully implement the basic functionality of the piano so when we click on this piano node you will able to hear the musical note that is piano note and i also run this application on my physical device to show you that it's working on both physical device as well as on virtual emulator so so first we need to copy this whole files into our drawable directory now these files are called drawable because android framework actually draws it into the screen and one thing you also notice here all the namings of the files are in a small letters if you try to add the capital letters then android studio will give you an error and your application will not be run so if you want to learn more about the naming of the file that why in android we need to always type the name of the application or whatever the actually we are going to use the assets or drawable sources file or all the file that i just placed inside the directory of the piano that you can see that here all files are written in small letters so why these are written small letters so you can learn this in the official documentation of the android developer website so i'm going to copy this all by selecting them copy then i'm going to place means paste inside my this driver directory under the rest directory so I'm simply clicking on this right click and i'm going to paste it then a dialog box will pop up so you need to paste in app src main rest driver directory not in drawable v4 which is v24 in, you don't need to paste in this directory you need to paste in drawable directory so simply hit ok then our message will pop up to copy specified files to directory then simply hit ok then it will copy the whole file so you can see that this is our piano file which is a logo 
this is our play button and this is our record button and this is our right navigation button and our left navigation button is this so right now i'm going to close all this so i'm going to refactor this test activity so simply click on refactor and just click on rename so here i'm going to specify the another name that is plain plain no this is the activity name so i'm going to use plain just simply hit ok also i'm going to change the layout name as well so i'm going to refactor it and rename in activity i'm going to use plain and say play press enter and it will refactor the activity file so in next lecture what i'm going to do i'm going to place four buttons let me first switch back into landscape mode so i'm going to place four button that is a left navigation button then there is a record button then there is a label in between and then there is a play button and then i'm going to place a right navigation button so so in next lecture i'm going to do that so that's all about this lecture so thanks for watching and i will see in the next lecture thank you welcome to this lecture so in this lecture i'm going to add some buttons to our piano app screen so switch back to your android studio then after the end of this horizontal scroll view i'm going to place a one relative layout so i'm simply typing relative layout then i'm specifying the width as match parent and height as wrap content inside this relative layout i'm going to add some buttons so i'm typing a button then i'm specifying the height of the button means the width of the button as wrap content and the height of the button as 80 dp then i'm going to specify the id of the button that is id id and the id should be bt left navigation then after that i'm going to specify some more properties that is layout align so i'm going to have layout align parent top that is this one and i'm going to specify it to true then and again i'm going to specify another layout property that's layout align parent start so where is layout align align parent start so this is one specify the enter and again i'm going to specify it to true then there is a margin i'm going to specify margin start is of 10 dp then after that i'm going to specify the background that is background and the drawable of the background is left navigation button so you can see that our drawable is now displaying you can see that there is lot more space is left so i'm going to do what i'm just simply scroll to the top and from there i'm going to specify a margin inside the horizontal scroll view margin top and i'm going to specify 10 dp so i'm going going to specify 30 dp so you can see that So this will give us a little more room to the top of the screen. Then again, I'm going to specify another button. So I'm going to type button, and the width of the button should be match parent, and the height I'm going to specify 80 dp. Then I'm going to specify the ID, 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 and it should be the BT record. Then I'm going to specify more line properties, and the first property is align parent, that is layout align parent start. So I'm going to lay out align parent start to true. After that, I'm going to specify layout align parent top, the same property. So I'm just simply going to copy this one. This should be also true. And after that. Layout margin start, and I'm going to specify the margin as 112 dp. I mistake, and so it's taking the whole space. This is because I specify the width as match parent, so I need to specify it here. Wrap content. Then I'm going to specify the background. So the background of this is background, and this is a record. So this is our record play button background. Now I'm going to specify the image view inside the linear layout. 
so I'm going to type a linear layout this by opening a tag linear layout so the width of the linear layout should be match parent and the height of wrap content and I'm going to specify the gravity as gravity center inside the orientation I'm going to specify vertical inside of this I'm going to specify a image view its image view and the width of the image view is around 150 dp and the height of the image view I'm going to specify 100 dp then I'm going to specify the id so id I'm going to specify image view then there is a src attribute of the image view so I'm going to specify src so src is our piano so that's our label of our piano then after the end of the linear layout I'm going to specify another button so simply type button then the width of the button should be wrap content and the height I'm going to specify 80 dp then I'm going to specify the id to the button so id id that is so bt play that is bt play underscore recording then I'm going to specify align parent star align parent and so this is our align parent and and I'm going to specify true then align parent top then I'm going to specify another property that is align parent top and I'm also going to specify it to true then the layout margin end layout margin so this is our layout margin end and I'm going to specify the layout margin end 111 dp then I'm going to specify the background property that is background and this is our play button so I'm going to type play so this is our play button so I'm going to type play so that's it so this is our play button now displaying then our last button that is button 4 for the right navigation of the piano keys that is that control the scrolling amount of the horizontal scroll view so I'm going to specify another button button the width has an app content and the height I'm going to specify 80 dp then I'm going to specify the id again id and the id is going to be height then I'm going to specify the, and the id should be bt right navigation then I'm going to specify the line parent top line parent top and the top is the true then I'm going to specify margin start in the margin start photo I'm going to specify minus 102 dp then after that I'm going to specify the layout to end of property and I'm going to specify it where the id and the id is of pt play recording play recording then after that I'm going to specify the background background and it's our BT and it's our right navigation so that's you can see that now our layout is completed and it looks nice so so we have done added four buttons and a one label to our piano layout screen so in next lecture I'm going to add uh, connect all these buttons to our main activity file so that's all about this lecture thanks for watching and i will see in the next lecture thank you so welcome to this lecture so in this lecture we are going to connect our buttons to our main activity so let's start this lecture by switch back to your android studio so in previous lecture we have specified all the buttons that is left navigation button record button play button and a right navigation button 
So in this lecture, I'm going to add these buttons, means connecting this button with the ID to our main activity. Now, I'm going to click on this record button, that is this one. Inside of this, I'm going to specify the on click event, that is record. And again, inside of the play button, that is this one, I'm going to also specify the on click event and I'm going to specify the play. You need to click on this red bulb icon and create a play view in main activity. Just click on the second option. So what does it will create a method inside the main activity for you. Simply just again click on this activity main.xml and just go to the record button, this one. Again just click on it. A red bulb will appear. Just click on it and just again select the second option. Then it will create a record method for you. Then Again, go we'll switch back to main activity, then go to the top of the main activity. Just from here, you need to specify some variables. So I'm going to type button that is left, left navigation, then comma, then right navigation, then again hit comma and type record button, which is used for the recording, and hit comma and type a play button. Then semicolon. Also prefix the private at a in front of the this. Now then we need to initialize all these buttons inside our on create method. So just scroll down to the on create method. So you need to initialize all the buttons. So first left navigation, let's hit a tab, type cast it into the tab, then type cast into button, then find with the ID and hit r dot id dot that is left bt left navigation or semicolon then again type right navigation and type cast into button so that we in a safer side don't get any error while try to run the application then r dot id dot and bt right navigation and it's semicolon then there's a record button it's a record button then again it to specify button and find by id and r dot id dot and then we need to specify bt record then there is the last button which is the fourth button of our play button equals to we need to specify button then find by id and r dot id dot bt play recording then hit a semicolon now it's time to set the listener to this button, that is left navigation and right navigation. So I'm going to set the listener to these both buttons. So what I'm going to do, I'm just simply type left navigation dot set on click listener new view dot on click listener. And again I'm going to specify the listener to the right navigation button as well. Right navigation set on click listener that is new. Again I'm going to capital V view on click listener. Instead of this I mean we need to write the code to control the scroll property of the horizontal scroll view. So the ID of our scroll view is means the variable name of our scroll view is scroll view. So here we have initialized our scroll view. Now it's time to use the scroll view inside the this left navigation set on click listener method. So I'm going to type scroll view dot scroll to and here I'm going to type cast into int and then I'm going to type scroll view dot get scroll x and I'm going to subtract it with 30 which is minus 30 then again I'm going to specify a comma and here I'm going to again type cast into int then Again, you need to type a scroll view in the second one dot then get scroll x tab on it. That's it for the left navigation code. Now it's time to write the right navigation code as well. So again, I'm going to type scroll view that is the second one dot scroll to and here into type cast into int just between the braces that is int. And again, instead of this, I need to specify scroll view dot get scroll x, that is this one, and I need to specify plus 
30. For left scrolling, it is minus 8 with 30. And for right scrolling, we need to add 30 to the scroll. Then again, I'm going to specify int for the type costing. And then scroll view, your second one dot get scroll y. So that marks the completion of our code for controlling the scroll property of our horizontal scroll view. Now we change this value that is minus 30 to minus 50 or 60 and this 30 to 60 or 70 then your scroll will move more faster. So now it's time to run this application to see the code in action. So here you can see that our application is up and running. So when I click on this right navigation button so you can see that our scroll is moving and now if I click on this left navigation so you can see that now we are controlling the horizontal scroll view through these buttons. So if I click on more quickly you can see that now if I change the values to like 60 and again I am going to change this value to minus 60 then now let's see the what will happen. So simply I am again trying to run the application. Here you can see that our application is again up and running so when I click on this right navigation button now it's move more faster than the previous one and again I'm going to click on this left navigation button so you can see that it moves more faster. So that's all about this lecture. Thanks for watching and I will see in the next lecture. Thank you. Welcome to this lecture. So in this lecture I'm going to add the recording functionality to our piano application. But before that we need to check for the runtime permission because in our piano application we need two permission. The first permission is a right external storage permission and the second one is the record audio permission. Now record audio permission is used to record the audio of the device and once we record the audio then we want to store it into the internal storage of the android system. So for that we need a right external storage permission. And we need to check for the runtime permission because if since api 23 the coding process of the permission is changed because you no longer need to install the permission while you are installing the application. So Google had made some changes. So for that we need to check for the runtime permission. So in this lecture I am going to implement the code that will check for the runtime permission. And this code that I am going to teach you in this lecture will be your feature reference means you can use it in your feature application as well because you just need to change the permissions. And if you want to check more than 5 to 6 permission or maybe 7 because there are some application that requires more than 5 to 6 permission. So you can do it with this code very easily because if this code is a one template that I am will be using in my all application. So I am going to teach you in a very proper way so that you don't get confused because this topic is very confusing and doesn't have very too much content available on the internet as well. So, so let's start this lecture by switch back to our Android Studio. So first I'm going to click on this app directory that is I'm going to new and from there I'm going to create a new empty activity and I'm going to name this activity as splash. Splash and simply hit finish and wait for the grader to sync the project. So you can see that our splash activity is created. So in our manifest file, we want to make some changes. So I want this splash activity to run before this main activity. So I'm going to just make changes. So here I'm going to specify the splash activity and from the splash activity, I'm going to specify main activity. Then I'm going to change the orientation. So I also need these two properties inside of my both activities. That is main activity A in which our piano layout is there and also in my playing activity that we are going to code in our upcoming lectures. Then at the top of just make some room and here I am going to type a code for the permissions. So I am going to type use this permission and that permission is right external storage. So we want this permission. Also we want a second permission that is record audio. Then self close the tag by pressing forward slash. Now open your splash.java file by double click on it and from there you need to create some variables. So the first I am going to create some constant that is private 
static final integer and I'm going to let me type permission permission constant equal to 100 and again I'm going to specify another private constant of static type static final integer request permission code request permission not code request permission setting then initialize it with 101 and add a semicolon at the end now I'm going to create a string array of permissions string and array braces and I will name my array as permissions required initialize it to new string and then with a semicolon at the end and I am going to type manifest manifest dot permission dot then you need to type your name of the permission that is write external storage with a tab and if I want a second one as well so I am going to type again manifest dot permission dot record audio record audio so these are the two permissions that we want to check at runtime now again I am going to create some two more variables that is the, the private shared preference so this is our shared preference hit a tab and I am going to turn, name it as permission status permissions status and it has semicolon again I am going to create another variable of bool type not protected I want to write a bool type and again I am going to create another variable of bool type that is boolean and it is a sent to settings is equal to and I am going to initialize it to false now this variable is used to redirect the user to the setting screen so from that user need to allow the permission manually from the settings of the application then after that inside the on create the actual code start inside the on create I am going to initialize the permission status then I am going to type get shared preference and here and then here I need to specify the name so the name is permission status then the mode which is private so I am going to type mode private and at the end I hit a semicolon then I need to check for the self permission so for that just simply click on this project so that will provide a more wide area to work then after the initializing the shared preference we need to check for the permission so for that we need to use if statement so for that we need to use if statement so I am typing if then again I am going to specify activity compact dot check self permission so here we need to pass the context so I am going to pass the context as slash dot this so this is our context of our activity then here we need to specify the permission that is our array name that is permission required and, need to, and here I need to specify the zero which is the first permission that we want to check then after that I need to specify the not equal to package manager that is package manager dot permission granted and from there I will provide another permission because we want to check two permission then I am using a or operator and here I need to specify activity compact again this activity compact and check self permission then again I need to specify the context so this is a slash dot this and a comma then there is another I need to specify the array name that is permission required and here I need to specify the entry as 1 which is our second permission that is at array index 1 then 
from there I need to check for the permission and from there I need to check for the another is not equal to package manager dot permission granted and from there I need to specify another if block and here I need to check for the another method that it should show request permission now this or operator will work on two operands so this is our first operand and this is our second operand if either of one is true then this if block will be executed then we need to check for the another condition so I am going to use another if and instead of this if again I am going to type activity compact dot should this is a should show request permission rational method that is a boolean method so I am going to use this one and instead of this I need to again specify the context so I am going to type splash so I am going to specify the context as splash dot this then again I am specify the comma and here I need to specify the permission required array variable along with the array index that is 0 again I need to specify another or operator so here I am going to type another or operator and again I am going to specify activity compact dot should request and here I need to specify this again context slash dot this after specifying the context I need to specify the permission required which is our array name along with the array index that is 1 so now we need to create another dialog to give some information about the user why these permissions are required. So I'm going to use alert dialog dot builder. Again I'm going to type builder equals to equals to new alert dialog builder and here I'm going to specify the context that is slash dot this and I'm going to hit a semicolon. Then I'm going to use the builder dot set title so I'm going to specify the title as need multiple permission then I'm going to specify a semicolon again I'm going to type builder dot set message so this is a set message So instead of this, I am going to specify the message and hit a semicolon. And again, I am going to specify another builder set positive button. Then we need to build a builder dot set positive button that is grant means we want to grant the permission. Then the second argument I am going to specify is new dialog interface. So instead of this on click, I am going to specify a method activity compact dot request permission. And I am going to first hit a semicolon so that we don't want to see the red line. And again I am going to type activity compact dot request permission. And you need to specify the context that is slash dot this. And after that, I need to specify the permission required array that is our array name that is permission required. And then I need to specify the permission constant that is this one. After that, I need to build the negative button as well because user may not want to give the permission. So I am going to again type builder dot set negative button which is specify the message as cancel cancel and again I am going to specify the second argument as new dialog interface instead of this on click method first i'm going to specify the semicolon instead of this method i'm going to specify the dialog dot cancel after that i want to 
show the other dialog by calling builder dot show method. Then I need to specify the else if condition. Then I need to specify the else if condition for our so this is our self check permission and this is our own create and this is our if statement for our so right now we have one more extra so this is our activity ends here our activity ends so I'm just write to comment because it gets lots of confusion at the end ends our activity and from there this is the end of our own create method Now this is our first if that is check self permission and this is our rational means should show request permission rational. So after that we need to specify the else if condition. So else if and from there if the permission status is dot get boolean the permission status dot get boolean is equal to permission required and specify the array which is with in array index is equal to zero. And the second argument is false. Then we want to do something. Instead of this else block, we will write the code to take the user to the setting screens. Because previously user if not specify the means not allow the permission, then this code will be executed. So let's start the coding. So again, I'm going to start the alert dialog. Alert dialog dot builder equal to this is builder. And again equals to new dot alert dialog builder and hit a semicolon and here I need to specify the context. So the context is splash dot this. After that again I am going to call the builder dot set title. So the title is then I am going to copy the title which is the same as this and also the message is also same so I'm going to copy the both lines and just I'm going to replace it with this one so this is our going to set the positive button so the positive button I'm going to copy the code of the positive button from there copy it and here I'm going to paste it this I'm going to simply remove this one because we don't want to such in, because we don't want that code instead I'm going to set the positive button and I'm going to here call dialog dot cancel because we want to cancel the dialog now then we will use a send to settings variable and we will set this bool variable to true after that we will be using an intent 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 is equal to new intent and then we will be starting and we will use a settings that is settings provider dot action application so I'm going to type action application details settings. So this is the first one that we need. Then hit a semi and then we need to use URI. Let us again call a variable called URI equals to URI dot format parts. The second one we want. And here we need to specify the package name. So the key I'm going to schema should be the package. So I'm going to type package. Package. Then we want the package name. So I'm going to call the method get package name. Then the second argument I'm going to specify the null because we are not using a fragment. Then hit a semicolon at the end. Then with the use of intent object, I'm calling a method set data. And, and, and instead of set data, I am passing the URI as an argument. Then hit a semicolon. Then we need to use a method called start activity result. Start activity for result. And here, in, and here I need to specify the intent as a first object. Then, then I need to specify the constant that is request permission setting. So that's marks the coding of our else if statement. Then we need to call the outside of this builder class. 
we need to call the code that is builder dot set negative button because user may not want to give the permission as well. So I'm going to type cancel and again I'm going to specify the second argument as new dialog interface and here I need to cancel the dialog by simply calling dialog dot cancel and here I need to specify the semicolon so that we don't want to see the red line after that we need to call means we want to show the dialog by calling builder dot show method then it's time to use the else statement I'm calling the else and instead of the else I'm going to specify activity request permission so here I'm going to request the permission by calling now instead of this else statement I'm going to request the permission by calling request permission method so I'm going to again type activity app compact activity compact dot request permission and here I need to specify the contact that is slash dot this and again hit a comma and I am going to specify the array name that is permission required and I am going to specify the constant that is permission constant so that's it for the else part now after that we need to specify the check self permission if condition so this is our outer if and I am going to specify the else for them means this else is for our this outer if so again I'm going to write here now if the permission is already granted then this else block will be executed so here we need to write a method that whatever we want to do so do your code so here we will write the code that will take us to the piano activity so first I will write a comment do the normal code so I'm going to create a method proceed proceed after permission so this method is not created yet so I'm going to create it by using this red bulb icon so here is our method is created just the end of the on create method so inside of this proceed after permission I'm going to write a first a toast statement that will show us a little message we got all permission got all permission not we got all permissions then I will be writing a code to take us uh, then I will be writing a code by using the intent to take us to the main activity that is our piano activity screen then new intent and here I need to specify the context that is this comma and our activity is our main activity that is this one main activity dot class then at the end I need to specify the semicolon then I need to start activity here is our activity start and I need to pass the intent as an object intent object as an argument then I need to specify the intent as an argument which is our intent object so that's all the coding of our proceed after permission now it's time to code our request permission method so first we need to override the own request permission method so I'm going to type on request this is and the method is this one which is a retain custom method request permission result so I'm going to hit a tab key so we will get this method inside of this method we need to check for the first request code so I'm going to write first if request code is equal equal to is equals to equals to permission constant then we will then the then we will create a bool variable that is boolean and I will create all 
granted equals to true then we are going to use a for loop that is int i equals to 0 semicolon and i smaller than grant results dot length then there is a semicolon and we will increment the i variable now this grant result variable is this one and inside of this i'm going to do a call first i'm going to check for the condition if grant result with array index that is i is equal to equal to our package manager dot permission granted then we will put into then we will put when the permission is granted then inside of the if log what i am going to done i am just all granted variable to true then hit a semicolon inside of the else block then after that i going to specify else and inside of the else i am going to set all granted variable equals to false then again after the end of the loop after the end of the loop that is this one and to check for the condition if all granted means if it's true then proceed after operation method will be call that is this one if not then we need to request for the permission so that is else if here we need to specify another again activity activity compact dot should request permission dash new the method will be used then we need to specify the contact that is flash dot this and again i need to specify here a permission required array variable with array index so again i have to specify permission required then with array brackets and i need to specify zero then again with the or operator instead of the or operator i am going to again specify activity compact dot should rest nil and here i need to specify again the slash which is our context dot this and again i need to specify comma and here i need to specify the array variable name that the permission required with the array index 1 so when this will be holds true then instead of this we need to again create a alert dial dialog that will alert the user so i'm going to call alert dialog dot builder then builder is equal to new alert dialog builder and here i need to specify contact that is this then it has semicolon then the positive and dialog buttons are same so i have already write this code at the top of this one so this will be the exact same code so i'm going to copy it and i'm going to paste it just below this so there is two array dot builder code is there so i'm going to remove this one so once it's done we need to show the builder and after that we need to specify the else so after that there is an else statement so else instead of else now this will be executed when the user doesn't allow the permission means user reject the permission from there this block as well and then again this block as well and instead of this block as well then what we can do we can create a, a toast message and indicate the user that application unable to get a permission unable to get permission and again i'm going to duplicate the toast the application will not work properly so i'm going to here write app in the application will not so that marks the completion of our code i think we have done all the coding just only one method is left that is own activity result so i need to override the method own activity result so first on activity activity result this is the method inside of this method we need to check for the request code if request code this is for those when we are actually redirecting the user to the settings of the application inside the android system 
So again, I'm going to type request permission setting. If it is true, here I need to specify another. So once the request code is equal to request permission setting, then I need to specify another if. So I'm going to type activity compact dot check self permission method and inside of check self permission method first parameter is the context so i'm going to type slash dot this after that there is a second parameter that is permission required that is our array that is our array name permission required along with the array index value that is zero after that i'm going to specify is equal to equal to package manager dot permission granted if, if it is granted then we want to perform the normal operation by calling proceed after permission so this is a normal operation So that's all the coding of our runtime permission. So if you want to check more than three to four permission that you simply need to add here and just simply add the one more line with the or operator there and with there and just simply set the required message that this app needs storage and record audio permission. If you are making a camera application, then you can write a simply this app requires camera storage slash com media types of permission and then simply changes with the there there. Now what does code actually does? First I created a constant variables of static type. Then I created a string of permission required array. That is a array variable of permission required of string type that holds our permissions that we want to use in our file. Then there is a shared preference I created. Then there is a send to settings variable that will be used to redirect the user to the main settings screen of the application inside the Android system. Then instead of on create I first initialize the Share preference with the mode private. Then I check for the self check self permission. Then again I check for the check see this method. Actually, I'm making an alert dialog so that user will get to know about that why this why these permissions are necessary. Now, if that work code will not work, means the user actually redirect the means the user actually ungrant the permission means doesn't give the permission to the application. Then this code block will be executed. Then from there user will be redirected to the setting screens then from there user need to set the means give the permission manually and after that if it is both were not true then this will be executed now if all of the three conditions and if the user actually gives the permission then all the three condition will not be executed the control simply this block will not be executed and the control will simply came to the this else block and it will pursue the after normal operation Similarly, inside of this, we have actually requested the permission. Means user actually doesn't give this permission, this permission. Then we want to request for the permission. So this method will, this block will be executed. Then the control simply came to this on request permission, and from there, this actually start requesting the permission by with this logic. If it is grant the permission, then it will set to the all granted to true. Otherwise, it will set the all granted to false. Then we will check the variable if all granted then we will perform the normal operation otherwise we will check for the permission again and alerting the user why these permissions are necessary for the application to work properly. Then again we are setting the negative button so that if the user don't want to give the permission then the user can simply cancel it. Then if the this block will execute it and it's the final block that will tell the user unable to get permission and app will not work properly. So this message will indicate the user that user need to apply the permission and this activity result will actually start the activity it will be used for the code when the user will be redirected to the setting screen so now this will be seems to be very difficult for you to understand but you need to actually took care and just read this code again and again and just apply it because you can't learn it from one time because you need to spend at least five to seven times you need to read the code and understand each line one by one this I am understanding this thing because I just did it 15 times more than maybe 15 times because I have created more than 50 to 60 application and I use this code many times. So I just use this code as a template whenever I need 
to check for the runtime permission, I just simply made some changes here and that's it because every application needs 4 to 5 permission depending upon the size and the strength of your application. Now it's time to run the application to see our code in action. So I'm going to run it into my virtual emulator. So you can see that our application is up and running. So if I click on this deny button and again, so now you can see that a alert dialog will pop up. This app needs storage and record audio permission. So if I simply click on grant and put again pop up a dialog with the checkbox of don't ask again. So if I click on this checkbox and click on deny and again with this record audio permission as well, click on deny. So then the application will not work properly. So if I just simply close the application and again try to open the application, app will not work properly. And again I am going to install the application and again I am going to run the application. So at this point of time I am going to allow all the permission. So I click allow and then clicking on allow. Got all permission and now you can see that our piano screen. So that's all about this lecture. Thanks for watching and I will see in the next lecture. Thank you. Welcome to this lecture. So in this lecture I am going to add the recording functionality to my piano application. So in previous lecture I already did the coding for checking the runtime permissions. Now those permissions are required for our application to work fully because from API level 23 you need to check for the runtime permissions. So if you are targeting API level 21 or below 21 or maybe 22 then you don't need to check for the runtime permissions. But I am targeting latest Android devices that is Android Nougat, Oreo and Android P. So for that you need to check for the runtime permissions. So I already did the coding in the previous lecture. So in this lecture I am going to add the recording functionality. So when user actually press the piano key then we want to record that audio and later on if the user want to play it then we want to add also playing functionality in our upcoming lectures. So let's start this lecture by switch back to your Android studio. So here is the layout. So I am just going to click on this main activity.java file and I am going to just scroll to the top of the file there. So here I am going to write some variables. So first I am going to write a comment that is the code for for the recording of the audio of piano keys. So first I am going to create a media recorder. So I am going to type private hit a tab key and then media that's a media recorder so we want it and I am going to create a variable of media recorder and I am going to specify a semicolon. Then I am going to create some public string variables that of type static. So I am going to type public static and I am going to use a this sort of string type. So this is the second one and I am going to name it my it's a file name that will be used to store the audio files in the system means the internal storage of the device. So I am going to duplicate it into more times and I am here going to specify 2, 3, 4 and then 5, then 6. So I am going to move the last one. So this will be our 6. So I am going to use 6 files. You can create as many as you want. If you want to record, I am going to record 6 audio tracks and then later on I want when 6 all completed then from the first to if the user try to record the seventh time then the first one will be removed. So this is the basic logic if you want to record 17 then you need to create 17 files means there 17 variables. Then I am going to create a boolean variable so I swap type boolean and I am going to type as and start recording and I am going to initialize it to true. Then I am going to declare our one public integer variable that is of public int and that is of recording number. Recording number. So that's all about the variables that we want for adding the recording functionality to our piano application.
Then inside of the onCreate method, just right below here, I'm going to initialize the code of the piano keys. So I'm going to type here one command that is recording code for the piano keys. Then I'm going to type a m file name equals to get external cache dir then I'm going to type another method that is get absolute path then hit a semicolon then I'm going to type again m file name plus equal to then I'm going to in double quotes I'm going to name it as audio audio recorder one dot I'm going to record in a 3gp format 3gp and hit a semicolon so I'm going to copy this code five more times one and another time then I'm going to change it to, to two then this one is three not four three then this one is should be four and this one is five this one is six this one is five this one is six so we don't want this because it's an extra so I'm going to delete it then I'm going to create a shared preference equal to so I'm going to name create the object of pref so I'm going to type it prefs that's a pref for preference that's a pref short for preference then I'm going to type get shared preferences and here I'm going to specify the file number and comma it should be of mode private then hit a semicolon then I'm going to specify the recording number variable means initializing to prefs dot get int and I'm going to specify the file number comma one and I hit a semicolon so that's all about the coding or initialization of the variable so that's all about this lecture thanks for watching and I will see you in the next lecture thank you Welcome to this lecture, so in this lecture I am going to fix some issues of our previous video. So switch back to an Android studio. So here I have write a code audio record.3gp but I need to specify a forward slash at the front of this audio recorder and also I need to write this test1.3gp. So that's a wrong code that I have implemented in the previous video means I wrote in the previous video. So I need to delete this one and this is the correct code so we need to just make this same as all the as other ones so I have already did it because in previous video I have did this code let me undo it first so this is the old code that I have copied in the all the files that's file 3 file 4 but this is the right code that is this one that I have commented so I'm going to remove this one again so you need to just make changes to your code just need to specify a forward slash at the front of audio record and also need to specify a test one this install because when I try to run the application then it doesn't run so in my another system I have experimented with the code means I have wrote the same code that you are now seeing in front of your screen this is the same code in my another system I have wrote it and the application runs fine but when I just when I just recording the video on this system in which you are seeing the code that it doesn't run because I have made some changes I just remove this forward slash and also this test one dot text and the application doesn't run so when I just again fix it means again just type the code that is same as the another system then it run fine. So that's a quick fix of this lecture. So thanks for watching and I will see in the next lecture. Thank you. Welcome to this lecture. So in this lecture I'm going to start the actual coding of our adding record audio functionality to our piano application. So switch back to Android studio and here is our main activity dot java file. So I'm going to scroll it to the below of the file and here I'm going to start create a one method but before that I'm going to write a multi-line comment that will organize our code so that when later on we want to modify then we can modify it. The start recording method code is not recording method code so I'm going to write this comment so this will makes me easy when later on if I want to make some modification to this uh, this project so I can do it easily 
because of this commented or you can say that this also for documentation purpose so i'm going to create a private method private void then i'm going to specify the name of the method that is start start recording and i'm going to open and close the braces then i'm going to use a variable m recorder that is media recorder variable that we have created at the top of our file that is this one so i'm going to use this variable that is media recorder equals to and i'm going to initialize it to media recorder class that is media recorder android media let's simply hit a semicolon then after that i'm going to set the audio source so i'm going to type set audio source so this is our method i'm going to set the audio source so i'm going to type media recorder dot audio source so this is audio source the second one we want media source audio source after that we want a default audio source then again hit enter and again i'm going to use media recorder media recorder dot set output format the method that we are going to use is the output format so this is our output format method simply hit a tab then instead of the output format we need to type media recorder not this one we need to use media media recorder android media dot output format this yes, output format dot there is a 3 gpp then after that i am going to use a switch statement then i will type switch and inside of switch i am going to specify the recording number that is this one i am going to pass the recording number to this method then i am going to use a case one case 1 instead of case 1 first I will type a break instead of this case I am going to type media recorder dot set output file so this is our set output file and I am going to name it here m file name 1 as an argument then I am going to increment the record number to plus plus by using post increment operator then after that here I need to make a comparison if recording number is equal to equal to 7 then I am going to then I need to do what I need to reinitialize the recording number to 1 because I have only 6 tracks because I want to play only 6 tracks if you want to play more then you can create it because later on if there is 6 files were recorded then again the recording number will get to 6 means the value of recording number will become 7 then what I want to I want to just to reinitialize it to 1 so that you will start from the beginning again and again I am going to specify the case 2 case which is second case then hit enter then again I am going to type media recorder dot set set output file and here I am going to specify the file name 2 as an argument then again i'm going to increment the recording number by using postfix operator here again i need to check for the condition if recording number is equal to equal to 7 then i need to recording number initialize the recording number to 1 simply hit semicolon then at the end i need to specify a break so i'm going to copy this code again for four more times paste it now here i am going to change it to case 3 this one is case 4 this one is case 5 and this one should be 6 then here i need to check for the pass the file 6 and here file 5 not 6 5 here I need to pass the file number 4 and I also need to pass the file number 3.
the rest of the things are same after that close the after the end of the switch statement and here into type shared preference dot editor is create a variable of editor is equal to get shared preference get shared preferences and then you need to specify the name that is file number and let me check it that it's the same as the top we have initialized that is this one so i'm going to copy it because i don't want to make any mistake and just here paste it it's almost same then i need to specify the mode private that is this one then after the end of i need to use edit and hit a semicolon so then with the use of editor variable editor dot put int i'm going to specify the file number in small value then i need to pass the recording number so this will then after that i need to use editor dot commit so what we are doing we are actually passing the recording number to this editor we are storing the recording number to our shared preference because shared preference are used to store the values in a key value form then i'm going to use the media recorder dot set audio source audio source and here i need to pass a media recorder media recorder dot audio encoder dot am r underscore and b if you want to check out all these you just need to go for the documentation then you will get more information about how these methods and what about these constants are because that's going to be a very long process now if you want to know more about these things you can actually go to the official documentation of the developer dot sites of the google then you can learn about about all these constants and here i'm going to use a try catch block because we are actually opening a file so maybe we will get an io exception so i'm going to type media recorder dot prepare and instead of this it's giving an error because we don't specify a catch block so here i need to check for the code for io exception that is e and here i just simply log the code log dot e and i'm going to specify the string tag prepare preparation prepare is fail then i'm going to type a message failed so this is a handy message if there is any io exception occur then instead of the log cat we will get the message so that we can try to fix the error then i'm going to start the media recorder by calling media recorder dot start method so that's all about the coding of our start recording method so that's all about this lecture thanks for watching and i will see you in the next lecture thank you welcome to this lecture so in this lecture i'm going to continue the code of our recording piano functionality application so switch back to android studio so here in previous lecture i have code the start recording method so now it's time to start the coding of our stop recording method so i'm going to type private void stop recording stop recording method and instead of the stop recording i am going to use a media recorder dot instead of the media recorder dot stop and then i am going to type media recorder again and then i am going to use media recorder and hit a tab key and then i am going to release so i am going to stop after stopping the media recorder i am going to release the media recorder then i am going to set the media recorder to is equal to null so that's all about the coding of stop recording now it's time to code the 
on the code method. Now I'm going to create another method of type of private type that is a private void and it's the name of the method is on record. That method will accept one parameter of type boolean. And I'm going to specify the name of the variable as start. And instead of this, first I will check for the variable name. If there is a start, then I will open the block of code for if. I'm going to call the start recording method. Else, if it is not start, means if the start variable is not true, then I'm going to call the stop recording method. And I'm going to also check for the file name if recording number equals to 1. Then I'm going to use a toast class of toast. I'm going to create a variable of toast recording message is equal to toast. Instead of this, I'm going to pass the context that is get application context, and after that, semicolon. I need to specify the text, so I'm going to type the song. Then again, I'm going to use a plus operator, and I'm going to type six, then plus, then I'm going to type here saved, then. I'm going to make the length of the toast to short and after that end it with a semicolon. If recording number is not equal to 1, then I also need to show the recording message. So I'm going to type recording message dot show. If recording number is not equal to 1, then we need to check for the else condition. Then I'm going to create a variable. Then I'm going to create a variable of int type. And I'm going to call this variable as int temp recording number equals to recording number minus 1 the semicolon. Then I'm going to copy the same code here, that is the toast line, paste it here. The song, and I will just need to remove. Here I need to specify the temporary 6 with 2 temporary recording number. So that's all about the coding of our own record method. Now it's time to came. It's time to code the our own record method that we have specified as a click event of inside the record button. So here first I need to check I'm going to call the method on record and I'm going to specify the boolean variable value as m start recording. Now after that I need to check for the condition if m start recording is means the recording is started then I need to set the record button text not return record button text I want to specify the set text to finish and after that in the else statement I'm going to again set the text to that is record and the record button dot set text and I'm going to specify the record. After the end of this, I'm going to write one more line of code that is m start recording is if it's not m start recording. Now this line of code is basically used to 
stop the recording if you not specify this line then you have the no way to actually stop the recording means if the recording is started then with this line of code it will allow us to finish the recording when we tap on the button so now it's time to run the application so i'm going to run it on my virtual emulator so i'll simply hit ok so here you can see that our application is up and running so i'm going to allow all permission and we got all permission now i'm just simply going to click on this record button so you can see that our, now our recording is started so when i click on any piano keys and i just simply click on this finish button again so song one saved so i'm also going to run this application on my physical device let me connect it first my physical device so here i'm going to select my physical device that's running ipi level 25 i'm going to hit ok so you can see that our application is up and running on my physical device as well so i'm going to click on this record button So you can hear the voice, now I am going to click on this finish button. So song 2 is saved. Because I have already run the application once before this one. Now again I am going to click on the record button. And again I am going to click on the face. So song 3 is saved. So our application is running fine. So that's all about this lecture. From next lecture onwards, when we click on this play button. So we want to play our music. Means the recorded music that we record with the use of this record button. So we are going to implement this feature in our upcoming lectures. So that's all about this lecture. Thanks for watching and I will see in the next lecture. Thank you. Welcome to this lecture. So in this lecture I am going to design the play screen activity. Means we are going to create an activity and then we are going to design the play screen activity in which when we tap on the button then we want to play a recorded audio. In previous lecture we had already implemented the recording functionality of our piano application. So in this lecture I am going to design the layout. So switch back to your Android studio and first you need to clear the activity. Here I already have the playing activity but I delete that activity because it gives a problem when I just code the and it gives a problem it doesn't run properly. So I just delete the entire activity and then again again, again I just recreate the project on my another system and it works fine. So right now you just need to click on this app folder and just simply go to this activity and here you need to select the empty activity and you can name it your activity as playing activity so i'm going to name it as playing activity then simply hit finish then wait for the gradle to complete the syncing of the project so you can see that our activity is successfully created just minimize it and just expand this rest directory, go to the layout and here select this activity playing. So I'm going to switch to the constraint layout. So I, I want constraint layout for this screen because it makes easy. So I'm first I need to switch it to landscape mode. Then I'm going to place one text view and just set the constraint like this. Then you need to place it there. Then we need 6 buttons, so I am going to place a 1 button here. Then I need to set the constraints. Just like this. Then one another button, just below this button. Then I need another button, that is this one. So total I need 3 more buttons more, means total button I need is 6. So I am going to do it quickly for you, then I will be continuing the video. So here you can see that I have placed all the 6 buttons and a text view. So now switch back to text mode and here I am going to add some properties. 
means we want to make some changes into the property. So I'm going to type my songs. Then I'm going to increase this, that is text size to 35 dp. This look nice. Now it's time to for button. So I'm going to type it here. Play song one. And for second one, I'm going to type play song song two. Then I'm going to quickly rename all the buttons. Then I will continue the video. So now I have renamed the old text of the buttons. Now it's time to create some drawable resources. So we are going to create the drawable resources in our next lecture. So that's all about this lecture. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next lecture. Thank you. Welcome to this lecture. So in this lecture I am going to create some drawable resource file for our playing activity. So let's start this lecture by switch back to your Android Studio. So first you need to create some drawable resource file. So simply click on this drawable resource file means right click on this drawable resource file and here select the drawable resource file. And from there name your drawable resource file play song shape. And simply hit OK. Then again we need another file that is drawable source file. So I'm going to name, name it as play song shape pressed. Then simply hit OK. So just open all this door file, just close all the remaining files. Now simply click on this play song shape.xml file and hit a uh, this button that is text. Then I'm going to click on this project tab so that I get a more wider area to work. So now we need to change this selector to shape. So simply select it and just hit a tab key. Now instead of the shape we need corners. So simply open a tag that is corners, hit a tab key. And instead of this, we need to specify a radius. So I'm going to specify the radius as 72 dp. After that, close the tag with the self tag. Then I need a gradient. So I'm typing a gradient, and I'm going to specify the gradient angle to 45. And after that, I need another property. self close I just want a self close tag then again I need to specify a start color a start color I'm going to specify a hex code that I have already experimented with this hex code so I'm going to type 4741 capital E and then 8 so we'll get this nice looking color after that I need to specify end color the end color I am again going to specify hex code so simply hashtag then capital B then specify E capital E then 3 and then capital B F F then I need to specify the type of the gradient so the type of the gradient is linear and after that I need to specify a padding tag so padding then here I need to specify the padding bottom to 0 dp. Then I need to close the tag to self tag. Then again I need some more properties. In the left padding I am going to specify 0 dp. Then the right padding I am going to also specify 0 dp. And again I am going to specify the top padding as also 0 dp. Then I need to specify the size by opening a size tag. In size, I need to specify the width that is 216 dp. Then I need to self close the tag. Then here I need to specify the height. And the height I am going to specify as 60 dp. 
you can see that we this looks like a button background now similarly we need to code the play song shape press dot xml file let's click on it and switch back to text mode and then change the selector to shape hit the tab key and again i'm going to specify a corner inside of this so type as corners then i need to specify radians so radius should be 72 dp then self close the tag then again i'm going to, then again need to start a gradient with a type key and angle i'm going to specify at 45 then i need to self close the tag Then here I need to specify the start color. Start color and the, I will be specifying a hex code. So hex code hashtag 33 DC E and then we need to specify 8. Then again I need to specify end color and I need to specify hashtag 1 capital C then 7 E F and then another F. Then I need to specify the type of the gradient. So the type of the gradient should be linear. Then here I need to specify the padding. So I'm opening a padding tag and the padding from I'm just simply going to copy the code so that it will be good for me. Copy it because it will be the same code. Then I also need to specify the height and width for the size tag. I'm going to copy it and I'm going to specify it here. So that's all about the coding of our all the both Drupal source file. Now it's time to link those Drupal file in our activity. So we are going to do that in a, when we are going to code the playing activity. So that's all about this lecture. Thanks for watching, and I will see in the next lecture. Thank you. Welcome to this lecture. So in this lecture, I'm going to code inside the playing activity dot Java file. So let's start this lecture. So switch back to the Android Studio, and here just simply click on this playing activity dot Java file, and just create a room at the top of the file, and I'm just simply click on this project tab so that I get a more wider area to work. Then first, I'm going to create a variable of private that is of type media player. Because for playing the audio, we need a media player. The media recorder is used to record the audio and the media player is used to play the audio. Then I'm going to create a variable and player and hit a semicolon. Then I'm going to create variable of buttons is button and the button variable is record record one comma record 2 then I need some boolean variables so I'm going to type here boolean variables so I'm going to type private private boolean is playing is playing one hit semicolon then i'm going to duplicate it to many times and i'm going to change it to two then this one to three then this one to four this one to five this one to six and i also need a one that is simple boolean plane and just remove the last one so these are the variables that i need now it's time to initialize all the button variables inside the on create that are our view. So I'm going to type record 1 is equal to we need to typecast it into button so that we can safe style so that our application doesn't get crashed. Find by id r dot id dot and the id of the first button is button. Now I'm going to hit a semicolon. Then I'm going to by using control plus D means by using a shortcut control D. I'm going to duplicate in too many times. So I'm going to specify here one. Now there is no button one. So I'm going to switch back to again. The layout file is activity playing. So I'm going to see the ID. 
so this is our text view this is our button so button 2 button 3 button 4 button 5 button 6 so we are missing with button 5 button 6 and we have button 4 we have button 3 button 2 but we don't have button 1 so that gives us an id error so need to specify here button 2 here need to specify button 3 button 3 the hand is with a button 4 then 5 and then here a 6 so button 1 is not specified in the id so here i need to specify the code 2 and 3 here is 4 here i need to specify 5 and i need to specify 6 not 5 then i have done the initialization of the button i am going to specify the default background to our button so that when we run it so we can see a default background that is play song shape so it's a bad set background it's not a sir background it's a set background that's a that's when we need set background resource r dot drawable dot play song shape so i'm going to duplicate it too many times then I'm going to change it to the variables. That is 2, that is 3, that is 4, that is 5, and that's the last one is 6. So yeah, we have set the, the default background to all the button variables. Now it's time to initialize the all bool variables to false. So is line is equal to false. Then into semicolon. Then again is playing 1 is equal to false then i'm going to duplicate it too many times then i'm going to again change it to the variable's name 3 4 5 and then the last one is 6 now it's time to write a method to play our audio files so i'm going to type a first method for playing a first audio so i'm going to type public that is this one public void that is void and i'm going to type play one and i'm going to here i'm going to specify a view that is this one and again i'm going to specify a view now this play one method is i also need to specify this as an event inside our activity file so i'm going to quickly define the events that is our button with the say so here and you specify a event on click and i'm going to specify play one then instead of button two i'm to specify a on click event and to specify on click event play two similarly in button third i need to again specify on click so i'm quickly going to specify it that is play 3 and this one is for our play 4 so i'm going to say on click then play 4 and this one on click that is play 5 then there is a last one that is on click even not play directly at a tab play 6 not 5 it's a 6th so I need to create all these methods inside our playing activity to Java file. So I'm going to use a shortcut pros by clicking on this red bulb icon and create a play six method in a playing activity. So I'm going to click it. It will create the method for us. And similarly, again I'm going to switch it to play five. Now the simplest approach I can do I just simply copy and paste it so that it will save little time. So this is our play 1, that's a play 2, that's a play 3, and that's a play 4, and this one our play 5. I simply hit enter. Instead of this, we need to do a code for our playing song. So let's start doing the coding of this playing of the audio. So first we need to check for the condition. If it's not, is playing, that is, is playing 1, and when we are using a logical AND operator and then again is 
if it is not is playing then we want to do the following that is we want to set the record one dot set background resource to r dot drawable dot play song shape pressed and after that i need to call a start playing method but right now i have not created a start playing so i'm going to just simply type the start start playing playing method right now i have not created the start playing method so i'm going to create it so at the end you can see this method is created so i'm going to take it into the bottom of the method bottom of the play 6 method so instead i'm going to pass it here of an argument that is one so this argument so that means this method will accept a one argument of integer type so i'm going to type recording number so this will be the argument that is recording number that our starting method will be take now then continue the code and after start playing the code we need to set the is playing equals to true means that our song one is playing then we also need to set the is playing one to equals to true if it is not playing means else you can check for the else if condition if it is not playing because there is a situation when is not playing then we want to handle that situation as well so i'm going to try is playing and again i'm going to use a logical and operator then again i'm going to type is playing then we want to do the following i'm going to type here a stop link method top i have to make it capital then i need to create this method first i'm going to semicolon come on come on the red bulb icon so it's not giving the red bulb icon i just need to copy it and here i'm going to give it a name as private void and i'm going to specify this so that will remove the error this is a slope playing method after that i need to set the resources of the all the buttons to the default resources so record one this is our button one set background resource to r dot drawable dot dot play song shape then I'm going to duplicate into many times. Then here I'm going to change the variable name to 3, then 4, then 5, and then 6. Then we need to set the all boolean variables is playing 1, not is playing 2, false. Then I'm going to duplicate it to many times. Here is a second, then three, then four, then five, and then the last one is six. After that, I need to set the record one dot set background source file to r dot r dot drawable dot play song. Shape pressed. Then I need to call the again start playing method. So I'm going to try start playing and specifying the integer as 1. Then I need to set the is playing 1 to true. Then if it is else, if it is a not a case of both of them, then we need to handle the else part. Which what we have to do. We need to set the record one background that is set background resource to r dot drawable dot play song shape. Then we need to call the stop playing method and then after we need to set the is playing one equals to false. And then after I need to specify the is playing 
1, 2 as well as false. So that marks the completion of code our playing song 1. So similarly you need to define the code for the play, play song 2, 3, 4, 5 and then 6. So I am going to do it quickly. Just you need to make only one change from 1 to you need to change 2. If you are writing the code for play song 4 then you need to change replace all 1s to 4. So I am going to copy the code and just doing quickly then I will be continuing the video so that you don't need to watch the boring stuff that is a replicated process. So now you can see that I have did all the coding for playing song that is from play 1 to play 2 that is our play 2 that is our play 3 and this is play 4 that is it play 5 and the last one is play 6. Now it's time to code this start playing and stop playing method. So let's do it. Now here first we need to initialize our amp player that is our amp player equals to new media player and then hit our semicolon. Then I need to use a try catch block because this code may be through an exception. So instead of try catch, I'm going to use a switch case statement. And a switch. And here I need to pass the recording number. And instead of this switch, I'm going to start a switch block. And I'm going to specify a case one. So that's what we have case one. And then that will be our M player dot set data source that is our file name m1 file so what I have to do I have to do m file name 1 and that file name we want to insert it by pressing alt enter so it will be inserted at the top that is there now it's giving an error because we have not handled the exception yet so i'm going to type here catch and i'm going to catch the exception that is io exception so i'm going to handle the io exception io exception e and i'm going to specify the code so now you can see that the error is gone. So you can here print a log cache statement if you want. Log dot e. And there is a failed. And there is another one. Failed. And here I am going to specify a semicolon. Then after that you need to specify a break statement. So similarly you need to copy and paste the code and just simply change the file names. And here you need to change it to 2 and here you need to change it to 2 and here you need to change it to 3 then here you need to change it to 3 then 4 then 5 then 6 then 4 then 5 then you need to change it to 6 and hit here old plus enter to add the package of these files so you can see that this is all about the coding for start playing method now it's time to code the stop playing method as well so instead of the stop playing method First we need to release the player by calling a release play method. Then after we need to amp player, then we need to null. Then it's better to actually inside of the on post method, we also need to do the same code. So I'm going to operate a method called on pause. There's a method of activity lifecycle. Now instead of the on pause, just simply check for the condition if m player 
if media player object means m player is not equal to null then if it is not null then the condition will be true so we need to release the m player by calling a this method and also we need to set the m player to null means initialize it to null and also we need to write the same code i'm going to open or write the on stop method as well on stop instead of this i'm going to copy the same code to release the media player and then initialize it to null now it's time to see the code in action but before that we need to make some changes in our manifest file so open your manifest file and here you can see that this is our slash activity this is our main activity and we need to also make this activity to run in landscape mode by default so we need to copy this of code and then inside of this activity we need to paste it so now we are pretty much ready to run our application so i'm going to again click on playing activity now it's time to run the application but before running the application i need to add more code because i have not started the media player so i'm going to type m player dot prepare that is this one and again i need to type m player at dot that is start so now we are pretty much ready to run our application so i'm going to run this application on my physical device so i'm selecting my physical device So you can see that my application is up and running. So first, I'm going to test the piano case. It's working fine. Then I'm now going to click on this one record button. So I'm going to record a song. So you can see there, song five is saved. Now I'm going to click on this play button, and I'm going to click on this song five. Then you can see that when I click on song five, it actually playing, but it actually changed the drawable of play song one. So that's a bug that we need to fix. So this is a bug where we have not actually changing the drawable resources. So I need to find that bug. So that the bug is we are actually when I press this song five, then we need to change the background to play song shape. But ultimately, it changed the background of. So here I need to change it to five. This is our bug. Here I need to change to five because we have copy and pasted the code. that's why this bug is here so this is for this this is right here is a recording button 6 this is record button 6 this is record button 6 then i need to check for the record button 5 is good check here is a check then record button 4 is actually here is correct then here i need to again specify record button 4 because there is a record button 1 is there and also there is a record button 3 record button 3 Then there is I need to specify the record three. Then there is the record two, record two button. There is the record. Now everything is fine. Now again I am going to run the application on physical device. So here is our application is up and running. So I am going to click on this play button, and I am just going to click on this play song one. So you can see that play song one is playing. I am going to click on back, and I am going to record the. audio again so you can hear the audio of our application now our application is fully created and it has all the functionality left navigation button right navigation button it has a recording functionality as well as a playing song functionality as well now i'm going to play the sixth song that is you can hear this audio of the sound as well so now it's time to run the application on uh, my virtual emulator as well so i'm going to select my virtual emulator so here you can see that application is up and running so i'm going to click on this record button And I'm going to just randomly typing some note, and I'm just click on this finish button, and again I'm going to click on this play button, and song three is saved, so I'm going to click on this. So you can see that application is, but you can't hear the audio of virtual emulator, is because 
that's why i'm running this application simultaneously on my physical device as well so that's all about this lecture thanks for watching and i will see you in the next lecture thank you welcome to this lecture so in this lecture i'm going to design the splash screen of our piano app but before that you need to download this file this is a project app logo file that is in a winrar format means rrar file when you extract this file you will get this folder and inside of this folder i have created a logo for the app so we are simply going to copy this logo and i'm going to paste it into inside the android studio simply i'm going to click on this project tab and from there i'm going to select this driver tag and here i'm going to right click it and i'm going to paste it there that's our piano underscore icon do underscore logo so i'm going to rename it into simple logo and hit ok now i'm going to close all the activities files means the open file and from there i'm going to select the activity splash dot xml file so i'm going to switch it into landscape mode and from there i'm going to select a one image view and i'm going to drag it at the middle of the screen then from there i'm going to select my piano logo that is this one and hit okay now i'm going to place it into the middle of the screen and adjusting the constraint so i have done the adjustment of the image view now i'm going to select a text view just placing at the middle of the screen and i'm going to select it here there and i'm going to select make it into the middle now i'm going to switch into text mode and by selecting the text view and i'm going to name the text view as means the name of our piano app because i have not specified the name of my piano app so i'm going to name it as easy piano because i have i'm name it as a easy piano because i showed you the most easiest way of creating the piano application then i'm going to increase the size of this to 40 dp now the 40 dp is too big for the logo as well because i want to make it a little smaller so 15 dp now i'm going to make it into 30 dp 30 dp is seems more i'm going to make it 20 dp and i'm going to specify the text style to bold and the text color i'm going to specify it into hashtag #000 for the darker black then for the background color i'm going to choose the same color that is of this taskbar that is our this now for the background color i'm going to use the same color like this one so this is our layout so we'll try background color color primary dark so this will be the same look like our this color so you can use it color experiment with the color just for the demonstration purpose i'm using a this color so i have did the coding and now it's time to actually connect the file to our splash screen activity so i'm opening a splash screen activity and at the top i need to create some variable so here i'm going to initialize my image view that is image view image view and i'm going to specify it with the s that is for splash then again i'm going to type a text view and a text view and again i'm going to specify it end it with the s that is for splash then i need to initialize these views into on create method so this is our on create method at the top of i'm going to initialize here our all the views so i'm going to type image view at image view equal to and i'm going to type class into image view then i'm going to find view id and the id i'm going to, right now i don't specify the id it's a default id so i'm going to specify the id to splash and at the end of this text view i'm going to also specify the id as splash so that's it for the id and r dot id dot splash now first i need to type image view that is splash and hit a semicolon then i'm going to specify the text view as equals to text view then find view by id 
and then r dot id dot text view text view splash then hit a semicolon at the end so i have initialized the views and i have designed the application layout that is for the splash screen let's make it little top that's it so that's all about this lecture in next lecture i'm going to add the some more code for our splash screen activity that is for splash screen transition so that's all about this lecture thanks for watching and i will see you in the next lecture thank you welcome to this lecture so in this lecture i'm going to add the animation called for the splash screen so let's start this lecture and switch back to your android studio so i'm going to do what i'm going to click on this project tab and here at the i'm going to click on the rest directory and from there i'm going to press right click and i'm going to click on this new and selecting the android resource directory and from there I'm going to specify a folder called anim that is for animation then hit click on this ok button and it will create an anim folder there this I'm going to click on this right click on this anime folder and here you need to create an animation resource file name the animation resource file as transition and simply press ok and you can see that we have our transition.xml file inside of this transition.xml file simply select this set and change it to alpha and hit a tab key so you can see that it is now changed into alpha and at the end of this you need to press enter and you need to type from alpha that is a property and you need to specify 0.0, .0. then the another property is 2 alpha and here you need to specify 1.0 then for animation we need duration so i am going to use a duration so first i am going to duplicate this code by pressing ctrl d and here i am going to select this one and i am going to type duration duration and the duration is not in minutes it is in thousands so i am going to type 2000 so that's it for the coding of transition.xml file so in next video i'm going to use this transition.xml file inside of splash x screen activity to animate these two views that is image view and text view so that's all about this lecture thanks for watching and i will see in the next lecture thank you welcome to this lecture so in this lecture i'm going to code the actual splash screen code so let's start this lecture by switch back to your android studio so here i'm going to open my splash screen activity.xml file so what i'm going to do I'm going to create an object of animation class. So I'm going to type here, press the tab key and again tab key and I'm going to type animation that is animation and I'm going to type animation again is equal to and here I'm going to specify another class name that is animation utils dot and I'm going to use a method called load animation and here I'm going to specify the context. I'm going to type this and center some comma and here you need to specify the name of the file in which your animation exists means the xml file that is actually exist in our res directory under anim directory and under so this file is actually exist in res then anim then our transition.xml file so we need to give the file name here so i'm going to type capital r that is for res and i'm going to type anim and inside of anim we have transition so that's for the code now it's time to set these animations to our views so first i'm going to set it into text view text view dot start animation so i'm going to use a method called start animation that is this one and here you need to specify the object of animation class that is animation then i'm going to do the same with the image view image view dot start animation and here to specify animation so now we are done with the code of animation but for now it will just gives a little transition effect it will not be a splash connectivity until we use a thread now it's time to use the thread class so i'm going to click it here and i'm going to type thread that is thread and creating an object of a thread class that is thread and hitting a tab key equals to new by using new pattern i'm going to initialize the object of thread to a thread now here i'm going to type new again and a runnable then it will give us a code i'm going to hit a semicolon at the end 
Then inside of void run, I'm going to type a try catch block. Means I'm going to start a try catch block. That is try. And again, I'm going to catch the exception. So instead of try, I'm going to use a method called sleep. So I'm going to press Alt Enter to enter is package that is set dot sleep. Now we need to catch the exception. So I'm going to type here interrupted exception that is E and then I need to close the block. Now I'm going to print the stack tray that is E dot and I'm going to call the method call print stack trace. Then I'm going to specify at last a finally block that will execute it and instead of finally block we need to copy and paste the whole code that is started from there too. So I'm going to just go to the below of on grid. So here is my on grid ended and then from there I need to copy whole the code. Instead of this finally block, just hit Ctrl V. So what will it does? Now here it will wait for 5 seconds and then if there is any exception, it will catch it. Otherwise this finally block will be executed, which is used for the runtime permission check. So I'm going to run this code to see that in action. So I'm going to run it on my virtual emulator. So here you can see that our splash screen appears. So it's actually stuck in this splash screen because I have not, I have made a main mistake. And that mistake is I have not started the thread. So at the end of here, I need to start the thread. So here I need to start the thread. So I'm going to type thread dot start. Now it's time to run the application to see it whether it's working or not. So I'm, before that, I need to uninstall the application. So I'm going to uninstall it. Click OK. So now application is uninstalled. Now I'm going to now I'm going so again I'm going to run the application. So selecting the virtual emulator. So here you can see that our splash screen appears, and then it will ask for the permission. So I'm going to allow all the permissions. So you can see that we got all permission. Now our application is now running with the splash screen. So that's all about this lecture. Thanks for watching. And I will see in the next lecture. So welcome to this lecture. So in this lecture, I'm going to add some improvements to our piano application. So if I, I just install the application to show you some concepts, means the bug that we want to fix in this video. So first I'm going to build the application again into my virtual emulator. So I'm going to OK. And wait for the Gradle to build our application into our virtual emulator. So you can see that our splash screen appears. Now it will be asked for the permissions, so I'm going to allow all permissions. And you say we got all permission. This is a toast message. Now after that, if I close the application and again try to run the application. Now splash screen is showing. Then it will be crashed. So you can see that inside the log cat it is crashed. Can't toast on thread that not called looper. So this is because we are calling a toast means toast statement inside the non UI thread. Means we are actually the threads are actually working in the worker thread. So if we try to call the UI thread component that is toast is actually running in the UI thread means on the main thread. If I try to call this in U non UI thread that is a worker thread, then our application gets crashed and that's the reason why our application again not running. It's run on the first time when we build the application, but for the next next time, it is not running. It gets crashed. So to fix this, we want to just remove this toast statement from here. I simply delete that and again I'm just first uninstall the application. We hit OK. And again I'm trying to build the application into my virtual emulator. So you can see that now splash is appearing. So I'm going to allow all permissions. 
you can see that it's our piano is here now again i'm going to close the application just clearing from the recent task as well and again i'm going to click on this application icon so here you can see that now is this time application runs fine without any error now the problem is because of the toast statement we deleted the toast statement from this method that is if so i undo it so you can see that this is our toast statement we need to delete this statement so that our application works fine otherwise if we try if we not delete it then it's actually a main ui thread component means a main ui thread statement so if you try to run the main ui thread statement inside of the non ui thread that is known as worker thread so we will get an error so if you are aware with the activity life cycle components and some async task concepts then you will be pretty much know what i am saying so that's a quick fix for this lecture means the fix that's a bug we fix in this lecture so in this so in next lecture i'm going to add a code for adding the back button means on on back press means when we press press the back button then it will takes us to the splash screen so we don't want to go to splash screen instead we want to completely exit from the application along with the dialog box so we are going to do that in our next video so thanks for watching and i will see you in the next lecture thank you welcome to this lecture so in this lecture i'm going to handle the back press button of our application so when we press on this back button we want to completely exit from the application from the piano screen as well means means when we are on piano screen so when i press on this back button i want the result that will completely exit from the application along with without showing this splash screen so to achieve this we want to write some code now the basic concept of this is we want to exit from this second activity without going back to the first activity so here our first activity is our splash screen activity and our second activity is our main activity so i'm going to open both so the first time i'm going to close all the xml files so at the top of the splash screen activity i'm going to add a one constant so here i'm going to define a one constant that is of private static and of integer type and here i'm going to define an exit code then initialize it to 100 or whatever you want then after that then inside of the own activity result method that we have already overrided that is below you can see that this is our own activity result so from there we need to check for the condition so here i'm going to after the end of this request code checking then we want to check another condition so we will type if request code equals to exit code then we want to perform the action then again i'm going to check for the if request code is equal to equal to result okay then we want to again check for the condition if data dot get boolean extra i'm going to specify the name as exit and the value i'm going to specify default value to true then i'm going to enter semicolon then after that if this is happen then we want to finish the task by calling finish method so that's a code now another thing i want to change then here i need to make some changes instead of the proceed after permission method so i'm going to type a method instead of start activity i'm going to use a method called start activity for result so i'm going to use a method start activity for result instead of start activity for result i'm going to use a new operator and then type a intent and here we need to specify a context so the context is slash activity dot not dot this comma and i'm going to specify the main activity in which we want to go main activity dot class now after that i need to specify a bundle object that is bundle extra so i'm going to specify the exit code so that's it for the coding of our splash activity now it's time to code the main activity so instead of main activity first we need at the bottom i'm going to override a method that is on back press so i'm going to type on 
back pressed. So this is a method that we want. So inside of this on back press method, we need to define an alert dialog. So I'm going to type alert dialog. Not alert dialog, just alert dialog dot builder. And here I need to specify the context that is this. And after that, oh, I need to set the title. So with the use of dot my operator, I'm going to set the title of character sequence. So here I'm going to specify a method. Do you want to exit and a question mark? And after that, I'm going to specify another method and set a message. I'm going to type set title. Are you sure you want to exit? It's a message or whatever you want to print. I'm going to use are you sure? You want to exit. And again, I'm going to set a negative button as well. I'm going to type set negative button. Here I'm going to specify r dot string dot no. I'm going to specify comma. So this no I'm going to specify in the string.xml file. But for now I'm just typing a listener. I'm going to specify the listener as null. And again I'm going to set the positive button. Set positive button. So I'm going to specify r dot string dot yes a comma and again here i need to specify the listener so here i'm going to create a new dialog interface inside of this dialog interface i'm going to set result method i'm going to use this one method set result and here i'm going to specify the result Okay, and again I'm going to specify the second argument that is new, and I'm going to call a intent. And inside of then with the use of intent, I'm going to use a method put extra, and here I'm going to specify the key name that is exit. Make sure the key name is same, not make mistake along with the proper capitalization. Then I'm going to set the value to true. So that's it for the coding of our this thing. Now at the end we need to specify here a finish method. Calling a finish and here I need to specify dot create dot show. Now we need to create these two files in our string.xml file. So I'm going to quickly open my string.xml file and here I'm going to duplicate it. And here I'm going to specify no. Then the other one I'm going to specify yes and along with that corresponding name I'm going to specify yes and here I'm going to specify no. Just make it, it small. So now you can see that the error is gone. Now it's time to run the application to see the code in action but before that I need to remove this super callback. If I don't remove the super callback then our logic will not work properly means when we click on the back button then it will also take us to the slash activity and also show a dialog and doesn't our application close. So we need to remove this super callback and now it's time to run the application into my virtual emulator. So here you can see that our application is up and running. Now our piano screen is displayed so if I click on this back button so you can see that a dialog box will appear. Are you sure you want to exit? So I'm simply click on yes. So you can see that our application is now is simply closed. So that's all about this lecture. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next lecture. Welcome to this lecture. So in this lecture I'm going to fix some more issue in our piano application. So let's start this lecture by switch back to your Android Studio. So here you can see that inside of this text view means our activity splash.xml file. I have placed one text view for the label of our piano application. So here you can see that I have used a text size as 20 dp. But you can see that in this banner, you should use sp instead of dp. Means I need to change it from dp to sp. And similarly instead of activity playing.xml, I need to change it here from 35 dp to 35 sp. Because sp is the recommended by the Google 
when you are giving the text size of a text view so so this is the quick fix for this lecture so that's all about this lecture your application will run almost fine if you try to run the application it will run same as it is just the only difference we had made just only the screen density pixel so that's all about this lecture thanks for watching and i will see you in the next lecture thank you so that's all about this course if you want to build more application then it will help you to improve your knowledge so it's better after watching this entire course you should build your own application so that it will improve your knowledge and you will also face lot of issues so don't worry if you face any issue you can email me directly and you can just simply communicate me on social media i will definitely try to help you so thank you for watching and i will see you in the next lecture